to Update 28.2. Join us for our 7th anniversary celebrations, an all new SMG experience in the arcade, and finally, the recall system update. We've got lots of surprises in store for you to celebrate our 7th birthday. Erangel's school will be transformed into a festive 7th anniversary venue. Plus, keep an eye out for throwable cupcakes and surprise gift boxes scattered across the starting island of each map. We've been hard at work balancing the SMGs to offer a more unique experience and accommodate various gunplay strategies. The arcade is all set for you to try out these changes, so get that early feel and let us know what you think. And there's more exciting news. Based on your positive feedback, we're expanding the recall system to include Vikendi and Tago. Check out the patch notes to discover all the details of this update. Lastly, this patch also includes weapon mastery updates, world bug fixes, and performance tweaks. Be sure to dive into the patch notes for all the details. And we'll see you on the battlegrounds. Demands more than skill and luck, too. Yet, you didn't quit. Your persistence always crafted luck. PUBG's seven years thrived on your countless lucky moments. Thank you for not giving up. Here's to our lucky years. PUBG Battlegrounds, seventh anniversary.
Hello and welcome to PUBG America Series 3 Grand Finals. I'm Matchroom joined by Godspeed and Porosaurus, and this is going to be the wit and wisdom that are guiding you through today's action. Uh, Poro, are you the wit or the wisdom? Yeah, <laughs> you already know I'm the wit, baby. I guess that makes you the wisdom. Yeah, I, sure I'm not uh, the wisdom. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know if that's God me either. Uh, I don't really have much... Wisdom. I don't have much, man. You put me in a tight spot. I think I would have been the wit, maybe, but uh, you asked uh, Mike. Curl on us, bro. Yeah, if we have not. the wisdom in this situation, we're in some trouble. But we're going to go ahead and walk you guys through all of the stuff you need to know to kind of enjoy today's show. So let's go ahead and walk you through everything from points distribution to who's going to be participating inside of all of the good good as we're going to be progressing forward. So kicking everything off, if you're a long time viewer, you should be definitely familiar with the format. We've already gone past group stage last chance qualifiers, and we are in the grand final. So our top 16 teams from across pretty much North America and South America with a little bit of Europe and Australia kind of mixed in with there is very, very Apple. important. But on top of that, we also got our points distribution and how everything's going to be working. So up at the top, you get 10 points for coming in first, diminishing down into one point for seventh and eighth. Let's not forget about the fact that you get one point per kill, and that is absolutely important moving forward because we've been seeing some 19 kill games in the qualifying series, so it is going to be absolutely banger. So prize pool starts off at $12,000, diminishes down as well, but a pretty hefty chunk of change for everything that's going to be involved. But the big prize that I know a lot of our teams are already eyeing for PGC down the road, and this event is so, so important for it because it's going to be building into that. As you can see, there's the PGC points across the right side of the board and the way it's going to be working out. So, Godspeed, whenever we're looking at this, how vital are these PGC points? Uh, incredibly vital, right? Because as we can see, it's it's kind of less than some of the distributions we've had in the past. It's PS3 is 300 for first, 210, and tapers on down, and then we have the Esports World Cup, 200 there, which I believe last year was even more, and then PS4 is really the last chance. There's only realistically three events that we're seeing just on this circuit alone. That's not talking about the uh, PGSs, but it's it's vital, right? The earlier you can set your foot in the door, you can get you know over. 200 points, or even if you're placing third and fourth, the higher likelihood of you being able to stay consistent and then five of those points you need later in the year, such as PAS4. Oh yeah, and with all of our teams fighting over this, let's take a quick look at those teams because we've got all of the known commodities for North and South America comprising all of America's poro. Yeah, look at all those beautiful those faces. faces. A lot of beautiful faces that we've seen uh, many, many times before. Maybe not on uh, on these particular rosters, but uh, we've seen them before. So, uh, you know, particularly you look at uh, Team Falcons. Obviously, we're still. Uh, are we done talking about Mime yet? Can we can we just move on? Can we just consider him a, a full time Falcon now and, yes, and just please. move on from the was, whole? Uh, was he not a full time uh, Falcon? <laughs> The whole, well, just, I'm just out of the whole roster, the comparisons, all that. So, I mean, I guess it's going to happen regardless, but uh, whatever. Shoot to kill. Uh, I love the pickup of uh, of sparking. Uh, you know, we'll see if it, if it plays out here in the grand finals. Uh, and a number of these teams, right, that we expect big things from in the in the grand final. But, you know, given what we saw, I mean, even Sonics were in the LCQ, man. I don't even know what to expect from these grand finals at this point. It's going to be spicy, especially whenever we have Mercy Gaming in here, who definitely has to improve. Who even are these guys? This is this is a squad that has been very hyper impressive. What two back to back nineteen point victory, uh, nineteen kill victories for twenty nine points? That is near on unheard of. Guys. Yeah, it's just the way that that team specifically, like you look at the performances from PWD, like Seifu, right? Yeah. The, the way that they were just rolling over pretty much everyone else, uh, including some of the very stronger teams in their lobby, was was truly impressive. I mean, they looked like they were just having fun. Didn't really look like they were struggling at all. Looked like wherever they went, whatever fight they took was pretty much in their favor, and they were just having a blast. I mean, just dominating their lobbies. And I'm also going to remind everybody to keep an eye on Space Station Gaming. They're always mm -hmm. a, a big X factor in what's going to be going forward. They might not always be the most consistent, but their big games are going to be big, but we have been seeing them get far more consistent as we've been moving forward. And so moving in, now that we've kind of got the group stage, that was uh, an interesting situation moving forward. And in, in the last chance qualifiers, like you were talking about, Poro, we had Sonics in the last chance qualifiers. Do you think the fact that whatever was wrong or going on in the group stage is now kind of corrected out of that? 
I mean, I, I we'll see. I don't, I don't know what. Uh, I think, uh, you know, I think this is an issue that has come up a lot with teams that are expected uh, or expect themselves to make international competition to where they come into these regional lobbies and they try to play it like it's an international lobby, and you, you can't really do that. You, you gotta, uh, you can't have two. Uh, I hate to say it this way, but you can't have too much respect. Yep. Uh, you have to. You have to realize that you know pretty much anybody in this lobby, you can take a full five or four v four fight up against and come out ahead. So you you can't play conservatively. You have to go out there and try to get your points, and that's what we saw Mercy doing, and that's one of the reasons why we saw Mercy just dominate the LCQ the way they did. Well, if you got to ego check your opponents, the best way to do it is going to be on that leaderboard. So let's look and see how we got to this stage. Group stage action, you can see Team Falcons had a stellar performance as well as Legacy, a team that we haven't had a chance to talk about too much. Um, what stands out to you off of this one, Godspeed? Uh, I mean, if you, first of all, Team Falcons, I mean, they start off with a bang, right? I think they had a 21 point win, just immediately setting the tone for themselves. But I mean, if you want to talk about Legacy, we absolutely can. So the, you know, Gizera, LFP, RBN, VHZ, I mean, these are all very good players. Gizera being, you know, the star player on that team. I was expecting Gizera to be the best player on that team and perform the best, and he did, but what I, what I wasn't expecting is how well LFP, RBN, the whole team showed up. It wasn't just Gizera, the Gizera show, you know, him dominating, yeah. although his numbers were very impressive. I, I believe he topped the group stage lobby, but the fact that LFP was right under him, the fact that RBN, VHC, I mean, that whole team was firing in all cylinders, and they were dominant in the group stages right under Falcons. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, it's like, it's one of those things where we've seen them do that before though, right? But can they do it two weekends in a row? That's, that's the question. That's I, that's that is the I question. No, you're absolutely right. Like, uh, like I, honestly, like they're all cracked and we've seen them put on, you know, crazy performances in the past. But again, it's, it's the, it's, can they do it two weekends back to back? Can they do it when they've fallen behind, right? Yeah, so can they climb themselves back up? I mean, Falcons has always been a very, very strong squad that can't quite find a home and necessarily can't always find themselves in that first place position, but it feels like they're getting a lot more comfortable up there. The last chance qualifiers, uh. though, were way more dominant whenever you look at Finally Sonics coming alive, as well as Mercy. 55 also having a very stellar performance. Yeah, yeah, 55 was was like sneaky good that whole time. Like they just managed to find the late game lobby uh, or, or it just all the time. I mean, you, and it shows from the placement points. There are 36 placement points. Obviously, Sonics and Mercy, a uh, completely different story. Well, similar story, but you no, know, they were they were kind of taking the headlines from the whole weekend. And as you said, Mercy just kind of, or 55 just kind of snuck up behind everybody uh, and got over 100 points at the end of the day. But the thing was that, that's going to make this interesting. Godspeed is like those three teams are sponging up so many points what's the rest of the lobby gonna look like uh, do they did they really deserve to be here in the grand final or did they just kind of at the end of everything at the end of the weekend they were the ones that were lucky enough to get the most points i mean they had a good performance initially as well but that is the question especially when it makes all the other teams in the lobby now we, you know we have the sdks and we have all the other strong teams that have you know also shown really well in the group stages and so to, to be completely honest the way that mercy is playing i, I suspect they'll at least start off mid upper leaderboard today um that team looked absolutely cracked and obviously they have you know i'm sure they they have a fire lit under them coming back in lcq and just dominating that so i would love to see them bang in this lobby but this is you know again starting off a grand finals for a first event of the year this is a very strong lobby overall i mean and, well, and matt l lest we forget before the incident occurred in the group stages the first day that mercy played they they kind of dominated as well yeah yeah and they're going to be a I guess a beast to be reckoned with is we've often talked about like the three kings, the top four and everything else like that. SDK, a team that you just talked about, guys, was regularly in contention of that conversation. I won't say the fact that they've necessarily fallen off, but the lobby itself just feels like it's evolved and gotten a lot harder for them to deal with. Uh, are, are we wanting to see a resurgence from this? Do you think it's going to be SDK fighting up at the top of the leaderboard or what type of SDK do you think we're going to get? I think the addition of Sparking, I agree 100% with Poro, has been a very good addition to the team. Uh, we saw also when they started to come towards the end of their run in the bracket um, that they actually looked really good by the end of the tournament, much better than they had started. That's something we've seen from SDK in the past. Maybe they start a little slow, but I think the firepower that Sparking adds and just the experience we've had from other teams definitely will help Kurt and the rest of that team really kind of find their foundation once again, because SDK, I mean, I'm not going to say the thing we always say, you know, the strong team, you know, the roster, a lot of experience, but I, I think with sparking, this actually adds an element that they, they probably needed. 
Well, we've talked about leaderboards. We've talked about all this other stuff. Now let's deal with what you really want to know. And that is going to be trivia. Which one of our players <laughs> knows trivia the best? We've got a little game show that we did moving into today. So we'll go ahead and jump over there with being hosted by me, I believe. So we'll go ahead and oh. cut to that. So that way you guys can get an idea and see Sold. what our players really me. know about PUBG. <laughs> Welcome to the PUBG Game Show. My name is Matram, and I'm going to be your host walking you through the trivia that we're going to be going over with some of our PUBG pros from the America series. So with this, I've got Carrick, TMZ, Adam, and Sharpshot 4K that we're going to be going through. How are you guys doing today? Doing good. What's up? Fantastic. Feeling fine. Let's go. Let's just jump right into the questions. And with this one, let's start off. Which players got the most kills in PAS 2023 phase number two? And yes, I did say players. Two answers. And so with this one, we got to give a shout out to Adam, who actually got both of them. It is Age and Snakers both. And to follow up on that one, uh, actually, Sharp Shot, you made a last minute adjustment or you yeah. just either typed it in while I was saying it. I don't know which no, one no, of the two of them last happened. Minute adjustment, one of the I two got of them it. happened. Carrick, you put in DraftKing and Emmy. I love the uh, South American love that you're giving to players. Unfortunately, they did not pick that one up. So, next one. Let's go with some lore. According to PUBG lore, Aaron Gell is said to be the birthplace of the godfather of the battlegrounds. What is his name? And this is <laughs> lore-wise. <laughs> That's my answer. <laughs> I have no idea, guys. <laughs> There's no way you know this, sir. <laughs> no, I'm just guessing, but I forgot to spell his name. All right. Really good. Uh, I don't blame any of you guys for this one. Uh, it was really, really hard. It was Sergei Kalimnik is the answer. Now, let's go with one you guys are probably a bit more familiar with. What color is the cross painted on the door in the secret room of the kindy? Sharp, I got to say, I love that you just commit. It's like a oh. second after you get the answer. It's like, first thought, that's got to be it. I'm going to go with it. I don't know. Uh, we've got Adam and Sharpshot that both went with blue. Eric went with white, and the correct answer is red. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, we're down bad. All right, that's okay. That's okay because you guys should get the next one. I mean, you guys are PUBG esports players. You should be aware of which team won PGC 2022. Oh. I'm not going to ask you guys, you're locked in. You guys have all got them set up. That is Adam, Sharpshot, and Carrick all said Navi. And that is the correct answer of that really yeah. cool car push that they made on Miramar. Of course, that's free low. That's free low. <laughs> all right. Another pretty free low question for you guys. Which two car brands did PUBG collaborate with in 2022 and 2023? Mm. Remember, you get a point for each one you get right. So if you don't remember both of them, it's fine. All right, Stacking well, we up got, the points. We got everybody locked in, and across the board, Adam, Sharpshot, and Carrick all said McLaren and Aston Martin, and you were all three correct on that. <laughs> so that's going to be the end of our round one. Presently, we've got a two-way tie up at the top between Adam as well as Sharpshot. Right back behind that with three points instead of the five is going to be Carrick. So still anybody's game, big opportunities, but we're going to go ahead and go into our next game, and we'll see you in between rounds for round number two. All right, I'm gonna let you guys know if you enjoyed that, we've got two more rounds that are gonna happen between breaks and it gets a bit more wheels off as we move forward because I, I can tell you guys, this was your first time seeing that, right? And you guys are cracking, yeah. cracking up about it. Like, did you guys know the Godfather of the Battlegrounds? Because you've been giving me some crap about that online for it. I already told you it is. I know. Yeah, it's you, it's, it's you. It's in your Twitter bio, bro. <laughs> like, I don't think PUBG Esports, PUBG Esports. Oh, okay. I know. I know. Well, whatever. They, either way, it's not uh, uh, Sergey whomsoever. Sergey uh, Kalimnik. Whomsoever. Trust me, I know. You have no idea how yeah, long sure. I sat back there going, Kalimnik. <laughs> Kalimnik. All those lore videos you should have studied. Okay, mm. but let's go ahead and walk you guys through. We got maps galore that we're going to be running through today. So let's give you guys a walkthrough and where we're going to be starting off at. And that is going to be Miramar because we got to get that violence going hot and heavy. Then going over to take over Kendi and then two Erangel to finish out everything. So 
We're getting everything set to move into our first game now. Uh, Godspeed, any like thoughts that you're wanting to throw out? Any teams that you're wanting to recommend people keep an eye on? I got a question for Godspeed. Ooh, you go for may it. ask. I'll allow it. Can I ask? Yeah. You back may. so back in your day, how would you how would you have liked it if you had gotten to start your day on Miramar? On the murmur. <laughs> on murmur. I would have liked it quite a bit. Uh, obviously, obviously Miramar was uh, was our home. It's probably where we got the most amount of our points. Whether I played duos or with with the with the boys in the squad. So I love Miramar. I don't really know if starting would have made much of a difference, but um, I mean, I know we would have enjoyed it. Maybe maybe would have been a little bit of a mental boost. So yeah, mm. I would have liked it. I would have been okay with it. Would have been down. How about you, Poro? Whenever you were playing professionally, yeah. Whenever you were you playing, playing for the uh, uh, I would have preferred. I don't know. Would have. Drop and twisted. I like. I just. Uh, I just think it's funny because Aragol. You, you know, we started on Aragol for so long, and you gotta feel like it, you know you, you gotta get used to to that map rotation and kind of how it played out with two maps for so long. And now, you know, now that we've added not only two maps, but we're also switching with Miramar at the start and finishing up on Aragol. Uh, you know, I, I'm just curious as, as if anybody actually, if it affects anybody or if it's did, just kind of another day at the job. Did we start? Uh, uh, did we ever rotate Miramar and MPL? I, I don't we, even, we, I played we, and I don't even we, remember. From, well, from like uh, day one to day two. You guys are really like going to bring up the Kindy right started. now? Was it always? Really what's going to happen? I'll trust you. We're going back down um, the, the Kindy band. Not the Kindy, what was it? Uh, Sandhawks. 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 Sorry. Uh, um, I'm guys, old, also, so. I want to give you guys a shout out. If you did not know, right now you can follow this channel and you can get yourselves some free PUBG emotes. And who doesn't like free emotes? So make sure you give us a follow <laughs> on Twitch. Uh, I'm not, I don't think that it's on the other platforms just yet. So make your way over to Twitch, hop on, pick that one up. And also, let's not forget, make sure you open up the map stream so that way you can kind of follow all of the action. But it sounds like, speaking of action, it is set Bam and ready emotes. to go. So we're going to go ahead and throw it over to our in-game casters. That's going to be Cameron Davis. And let's give a big welcome to Gibson on his first oh. Grand Finals cast. You guys, take it away. There's <laughs> at all. If there's any jitters at all, Cammy, you got to get rid of them pretty quickly going into this one. Right, yeah, so we do have 16 rounds coming up, so that's a lot more than we had in groups, mm -hmm. but I, that still seems like not that long of a runway if you really need to give yourself some sort of lead in time. And uh, narratives aside, sometimes we talk about teams being like slow starters versus, you know, really quick starters and they sort of taper off at the end. No one wants to start slow. I mean, and most of the teams that we see here, here in the Grand Finals are experienced with this, so they should know that if they have a bad, you know, a really poor start, they should have the experience to be able to just push that away, try and focus up for the next couple of rounds, but it's when you see multiple poor rounds in a row, that's when you really start to get concerned for a team's mental, because if you guys aren't, if you guys at home aren't uh, used to Battle Royale esports or PUBG esports in general, one of the big things is sort of confidence and knowing when to go for a play, and having a couple of bad rounds is just one of the worst things that can happen, happen to you, so being able to mentally reset is a huge skill. Here's the real question though. These players have waited for months for this to start. And this is the very first game. If you go down early, if your team gets eliminated in the right. first 10 minutes of the first map, man, what are you gonna do with all that pent up energy? Cause it's a long wait, 20, 30 minutes before you're back in the server again. You definitely right. don't wanna be in that position. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's something that it's probably even to be fair, the fact that we're not in a LAN environment makes it probably a little easier because if you're in a LAN, you're in a studio, you really do just have to sit there. At least here, maybe they can get up, they can go get some water, they can try and like maybe even go quick, give themselves like a 10 minute walk if they do go out that early to kind of like refresh themselves. So there are tools that you can learn to mitigate those issues, but it is definitely something that is, that again, also, again, requires experience because unlike normal players like us we go out early well we just queue up for a new game can't do that here you really do have to wait you got to find some new methods whether through meditation or whatever there is out there i'm lucky that I never, i've never had to learn how to do that but there are tools out there i'm sure that teams have on how to try and reset i've played in one tournament kami and we went out early every single map and all i'm going to say is it's a long wait and that walk was needed i'm not gonna lie yeah. but Let's be real, this is a very tense couple of days ahead, particularly for 15 right. of these teams, because Sonics, they're already going to PGS. They're maybe not as much pressure on them as the other teams. 
Are there, are there any of these teams that you feel that there's more pressure on them than others because of the fact they feel that they should be at PGS? Uh, I think the team that has the most pressure behind them is, is Falcons because they just got signed by, by a new organization. They've been punching at the top of uh, North American, e North America, America's PUBG esports for years at this point. So if they fail to qualify for the first two PGSs, despite all this promise, despite the promises I'm sure that they made to their organization, like that's a lot of pressure behind them. I do want to say though, I don't necessarily buy into the narrative that Sonics don't need to try purely because they're a GPT team. I mean, just look at their struggles at the beginning of this year, leading into group stage. They found themselves in a last chance qualifier. They're, this is a necessary arena for them to prepare themselves for the global events because even if they do fail to, to have a good run here, even if they're going to PGS, they're not going to perform well at all. So I think a good performance here is a reward in itself of like knowing that they're on the right track. And from what we saw, not only from Last Chance, but also from Scrims in the interim, I do think Sonics are one of the teams. In fact, I already put, I already put it under my Twitter. Sonics is going to be in the top four no matter what. In fact, if I had to really gun to my head, choose which specific position, I'd put them in second. So you think that they're not going to take top spot? That's... That's a brave shout. You know what Sonics fans are like in chat? They'll be coming for you for the next uh, the next weekend after that. It's team... second. It's second. What do you want from me? <laughs> hey, if you're not if you're not first, you're last, right? Um, the team that I'm looking forward to see most is SSG because in reality they right. are the reigning champions of PAS. They're the team right. that's coming into this. They don't have a GPT spot. They've got to do it all again if they want right. to make their way in. But they made a roster change. And how do you feel after all you know all the practice you've seen? How are you feeling about Cowboy? I think Cowboy is a really, really good addition to this roster. I think that this roster does have uh, more potential. As much as I love Sharpshot, he's been one of my favorite players for so long, and I think Sharpshot is a really good addition to Bestia. So Sharpshot's not out of the game. He's just on a new roster now. But when it comes to Cowboy, he's such a strong young player that has entered the scene. I think that he's been delivering really good performances for SSG. And I would put SSG probably in fifth place as far as like my own expectations for this tournament, the only thing that's been what I've been raging against this roster for a while is a level of inconsistency. Where the other teams, like, you know, consistency is what you need to have in this game. You need to guarantee like minimum four or five points what you're shooting for in a round. And uh, I don't know, I just don't have that level of confidence behind behind them as a viewer. Well, there it's their job to prove us wrong. Flight path gets us started for the day, going from east to west, finishing just on the edge of El Pozzo. Getting ready for that first zone shift, but with a flight path like that on the bright side, we're not going to see any of those crazy circles down around Valle de Mar that we've been having right. quite frequently. But I'm looking forward to this, Cami. I just can't wait to get started. Yeah, one thing we should say, unfortunately, one of the members of uh, OG failed to connect. We followed rules and regulations, but unfortunately for this first round, because of the situation, OG will be carrying on as three, which frankly isn't the worst thing. It's going to limit the amount of aggressive opportunities they're going to be able to take in the early game. But as you often say, as we see phase one going so far towards the north, but as you often sort of say, the difference between four, four and three is a lot smaller than three to two. It definitely is. Well, look, a lot of these players might have pre-game jitters. We got to catch up with them all earlier today to find out how they were feeling ahead of game one. I think going to the first day in the first game, I think everyone's going to be really stressed and everyone's going to be really passive. I think it's going to be really important to uh, take a step back and observe how the lobby behaves uh, under pressure. A lot of teams play scrims differently to how they compete, and that's purely because there's no pressure and there's no repercussions or consequences of dying. So I think our team's going to really slow down, observe, and uh, capitalize on everyone else making mistakes, and hopefully we aren't making any mistakes ourselves. It's all about preparation and making sure that you and your team are wholly prepared of what you're going to do when you go into it. Um, I feel like teams that are less prepared get taken advantage of in the first game and it's kind of a free way to gain points. Um, some people like playing ranked or pubs or just training mode, but mainly it's just having an understanding and the knowledge of what other teams are doing and how you can take advantage of that. Honestly, I get this question a lot in my Twitch chat, and it's super important that you don't change your routine on a day-to-day -day basis, especially for pro esports players. Uh, people always ask me if I drink extra coffee and things like that, but I don't really think that's valuable. It's just important that you remain calm. 
So, Cammy, the main kind of feedback from all those players was staying calm and playing it slow. Do you think it's going to be as simple as listening to your own advice going into this, though? I mean, it's so much easier said than done. Going back into the very first years of eSports, as we do see a potential fight brewing between Bestia and Pichow. This is for a central position in the zone. Both these teams looted up around this area just east of Cruz de Valle. So, you know, you know what? I'm just going to let this fight break out, and instantly Wykus is going to open up with a headshot into Pippa and instantly flushed as well, not giving any opportunity for a revive. Yeah, they're currently leading the whole tournament. Now your first kill of PAS as Yakuz is able to push in with the 4X on that AK. Now, will that force the rest of Bestia to retreat? It looks like it, but Kami, first blood drawn and a position secured without taking any casualties in return. Yeah, sharp shot already at a position just down the hill, so they can group up with that and get some nice knock on the BL. Unsure if that's going to be one that they can capitalize on and try and confirm and get a full trade there. But at the very least, it does deal some extra damage to Pichow, deal some damage to a uh, chest armor, helmet armor, whatever. Ignore that in the kill feed. That was an accident. <laughs> Unfortunate <laughs> accident, but an accident nonetheless. Poor Sharp. He's just joined the team. Come on, guys. Show him some love. He got <laughs> it's, a it's called hazing. <laughs> I thought that would have been done on grips, though, right? You don't want to do it on the Friday of Grand Finals. It's not Finals. hazing if you're expecting it. This is true. You should have seen what the guys made me do on the first day. I'm not, I'm not even going to tell you what, what Paro made that me do awful. on camera. I think we yeah. broke a couple of uh, Geneva conventions there. I know. Just because I'm European. Like, come on. Right. <laughs> um, hey, hey, listen, listen. You chose to be born there. Uh, yeah, uh, it was my choice. I made yep. that conscious decision. Speaking of decisions, though, look at this. Falcons, seeing that shift the way it was, they dropped in Picado. They're taking the E pickup really early yeah. to get some good positioning. The pathway up from Picado going through that northeast road, it can be very, very difficult. Potential, not you don't really expect camps to happen, but the rotation is a little more direct. doesn't give you little opportunities because of the terrain surrounding it. And so taking an E pickup is much safer. And they're even going as safe as possible, going all the way towards the north, where they can make an estimate an educated guess that it's going to be a lot more free than the south section to the north of a power grid where we're seeing like four other teams around there so they're already spread out confidence that they can find all these positions and hold on to them legacy are following not too far up behind coming in from a different angle more to the west as they come from monte nuevo uh we'll see what they ch we're we will see where they are going to choose to go because at this point already five and a half minutes into the game if they go central it's going to be relatively taken already but we've seen some surprise drops on teams that weren't necessarily expecting it before so really it's just about keeping your eyes on the sky if you're a team that's on the ground well there's a couple of things right Cam? because not only are you trying to get positioning inside the circle you're also if you're emergency pick this early you're going to be looking for vehicles. How many times right. have we seen it in the past where teams emergency pick up in phase four, phase five, they hit the deck, they're on their feet for the rest of the game and not having the ability to rotate quickly can really hinder them. Listen, and I know e-pickups can be a safe way to get into the zone, but it's not without its own risk. Did you know, just the other week, I, myself, Cameron Davis, hit a bolty shot on someone on e pickup So it's difficult, it. but it can be done if you're a really, really good player such as myself. Unfortunately for Legacy, unfortunately for any other player, no damage was done to either Falcons or Legacy. Legacy also going to the north, SSG also up in this area. So because this first circle was so far north, we're actually seeing more teams on this north strip this northern road stretch right outside of oasis than i think you would expect to see i love it though it shows how proactive these teams are they know the north side is the side that's most likely going to be the vacant one but when everybody's thinking like that it could lead to some run-ins ssg though we spoke about them the reigning pas champions i'm a massive fan of page and pixel i think those coming in made a huge difference to to roth and the team last year the big thing about page and pixel though was You've seen it a lot in practice. Those two really play like their own little one-two punch, right? They, they've got each other's backs more often than not. That used to be the case, but recently you're starting to see more, like, it's almost like, maybe maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Whenever you see teams in a little bit of a 2-2 setup, you can never really tell how much of that is a setup based off of chemistry of players together or just one of convenience where these two players are already closer to that angle anyway. But I've also been re recently noticing that they're actually more separated more often than not. So, you know, keep your eyes on the map. Maybe that could be a trend going forward. Also, as I said, could be reading into it. Honestly, when you're a team of four, your chemistry should be pretty in sync across all four members when you you know when pixel and page first got added to the roster i could see that as being a more decisive thing a more intentional thing but nowadays i imagine especially practice with cowboy has been going pretty smoothly for the past couple of months i i'm 
I imagine they should be comfortable with any sort of division of separation. Yeah, that cowboy pickup was one of the worst kept secrets in PUBG <laughs> right. as well. I think, I think everybody knew months in advance that he was going to be the new fourth. And look, I think he's earned it. I got to watch him last year and I thought that his growth was phenomenal. Speaking of teams with phenomenal growth, though, Mercy rotating in from the southeast side. They took, you know, two weekends ago by storm. And PWD, their IGL, he led from the front. Boy, did he yeah. pick up a ton of kills. Listen, Mercy are looking like an incredibly exciting team. The only issue that I have is the relative inexperience compared to all of the other top shooters in this lobby. If Listen, if they come out, come all the way from opens, We've seen a couple of these players in like group stage before, but they've never really been in the conversation for the top spot of the grand finals of this region. But if they come in all the way through opens and hit that spot on their very first try, I have to tip my hat to them. I have to give it up to them. But until I see it, something in me just says that they're not going to land it, nail it on the first try. So I'm just going to wait and see if they can follow through and keep those damage numbers up because they are really impressive damage numbers. The way that they play around each other very, very well. I just... I. I like to be a little conservative on jumping on bandwagons of the new hotness. It's it's always the, the fun thing though, right? Hop on the new trend. This lobby is very different than the one that they got that was vast amount of points on. Right. It's also very different than the group stage lobby. I think from a strategic point, this lobby should be a lot easier to read, but obviously the mechanical ability of the players in it has increased significantly. STK, one of the teams that had a fantastic early stage. We, we you know, you and I love the addition of Sparking. Mm -hmm. But I feel that puts a ton of pressure on this team as well. Yeah, and definitely see the pressure there. The disappointment that Luke and Alo had, the, the two remnants of last year's roster, of not making it uh, to a PGC just barely, if my memory serves me correct, was a, re like a really hard pill for them to swallow. They've come in full force, of full commitment behind them. Um, and I think I, I, I'm confident that they're going to be in, in top four. This new SDK is just looking so hot, so good. Next circle shift, hard shift northwest, looking even closer to Oasis with SSG and Rats pretty close to center. These two teams have been trading blows for a while, so I'm not surprised to see Rats immediately on the tail of SSG, but good rotation from all these teams around this area. It's a pretty yeah. un... You don't see this part of the map too much, but the experience of these guys playing for so long as they have, I'm sure that they have um, some level of comfort around this area. Yeah, SSG have a fantastic position, a little bit off to the east of them. You got to say that Old Guard do too. Falcons with that shift, they're finding themselves rotating as well. I think that they're my uh, they're my pick for the team that I expect to be 100% guaranteed to qualify through. And this bit of terrain they have is a lovely bit to play in. 55 rotating in as well. Kami, it's since that early kill that we had, it's been pretty quiet so far, and that's par for the course on Miramar. Yeah. It's, it's such a big map, a lot of rotational options if you're aware of them, but Legacy are arriving close to 55. 55, I think, could be a dangerous threat here. They've had really good days. They've had some poor days, but they've had some really good days that they can come out swinging, so I don't think you can ever count them out in a fight, even up against uh, Brazil's finest of Legacy. Yes, Sonic's rotating into the south. It's getting very high traffic here. You can just see on your mini-map, you've got Future here, Bestia not too far away. Spam are in the vicinity as well. Kerak, he's got the Panzer at the ready. And could we see Sonic's falling foul of that awful, awful weapon in the early stages? Kerak's ready, Priest against the knock, and look at that, Kerak will take down Kick, and an instant flush, Sonic's coming under heavy pressure, the reload may be just saving Shrimzy, but that is not the way they would have wanted things to start, Shrimzy falls too. This is such an ex a committed bridge camp on this road, and Spam are executing it so, so well. They're getting kills on multiple teams. They got Sonics. They're dealing damage to Future. This is a really good start to their round so far. The only question would be getting out of this, but the way that they're fighting now, I have no doubt in my mind that they're going to be able to succeed. They're just dismantling all these teams. Wow, Spam doing real damage. Tig really the last player up now for Sonics, and that is not what the Sonics fans would have wanted going into this one. Good thing they're a GPT, but that ain't the way they would have wanted to start. Great for spam, three kills on the board. But the thing is, they made a lot of noise. They're still going to rotate in. Future have been keeping an eye on this whole engagement.
Yeah, and you have to feel for Sonics. I imagine they would have had a more successful run. Even losing Kickstart to the Panzerfaust, can't really expect, you can't really plan too much for a move like that from Spam. But with Future also getting stopped, they had the high ground angle onto the Sonics. So it was really multiple teams shooting down uh, on uh, that squad. So really, it was sort of just a comedy of multiple errors put Sonics in a really brutal position. We'll see what Tickleton can do to get out of this spot. Who knows, maybe pick up one or two kills here or there. But... As d down to a solo player so early, you can only expect so much. If anybody could pick up points from that sort of situation, though, it is yeah. Tig. Spam, they'll watch the rotate in the future as well as the Sandstorm will come by at roughly the exact same time. I think, me personally, I'm not a fan of the Sandstorm, but I know that the clever teams use it to their advantage when it comes to rotates. Another zone shift pops, an old guard and bestia in a pretty good spot this time around. But Cami, we've got quite a bit of Oasis in there too. Yeah, and just with that road cutting down the middle, we got the two little high grounds on the north and the south put in sort of different levels of commitment that you need. Mime does get a kill onto Fakes and they're in the kill feed future. I think they... I don't know if they would have needed the Dust Storm to get out of that situation, but it certainly helped them rotate away from Spam, as we're also seeing STK sort of take a hop, skip, and a jump just immediately inside the next zone. Semi-edge for their position, but Bestia now down to three early on. Rats are putting a lot of pressure on their position. Gats gets the opening knock. Blue zone needs being thrown as well. That'll funnel the Bestia players on the other side of the shack. Double blue zone should ensure that flushes. DraftKing takes a ton of damage, Gats. Peeks on the side, gets another knock, Sharp goes down too, and that is the end of Bestia as Rats pick up three points of their own. They've secured that shack, but they will dip into cover for now, maybe fall back, but that's great from them, clearing a bit of positioning for themselves and dealing with one of the strongest teams in the lobby. Right, I mean, the double blue zone grenade, but it looks like Falcons are in the middle, middle eh, a little bit of a scrap of their own. They've lost Sneakers. Mime is just outside of a big threat range from Mercy, and the rest of Falcons are nowhere uh, to be seen. They're further north from this spot. It looks like Mime got caught out on rotation, and with multiple teams flooding this area, it's a similar situation to Tickleton. We'll see what Mime can pull out, but I'm not holding my breath for much. It's such a brutal spot that he's found himself in. Is it prime time yet, though? Because we know when it's prime time, Mime usually shows up. But you can see this. He's got Mercy playing inside this position. He's going to peek over Page from afar. He catches out VHZ on the edge of your screen on the rotate as well as SSG look to kick off things pretty well for them on the first day. They're still holding the compound. They've been in for quite a while, and Legacy are just going to abandon their knock now, too. And it's a point on the board. It should be a point on the board for SSG barring a steal. And actually, a steal does come in to spoon for rats as they get their fourth kill on map one. SSG now doing some damage as we saw. The kill was stolen, but they're still defending this position. And they had the luxury of already being in this area come phase one, come phase two. So not a lot of macro movement necessary from them. But the challenge is, how do you get the points from this spot? It doesn't matter how long you survive if the points don't follow and kill points. Unless you can secure the win, you're really going to be trying to look for the kill points there. And on the low ground that SSG have found themselves, not the biggest opportunities just yet. Tiggleton inside the blue still. The rest of Sonics fell a lot earlier at the hands of Spam. He's got a pretty good eye on to Pichao, who we saw get active a little bit earlier on the day. But for Tig, this is what we call a salvage game. It's about right. sneaking in, picking up as many points as possible as a solo. And at some point, provided he's not spotted Kami, he will have a decision to make right on whether or not a kill is worth it or whether or not it's just stay hidden. Ooh. But this actually could be a good Ooh. shift for Tiggleton because on one hand, it does keep Spam potentially on the edge, but Spam already on the rotate. I was thinking maybe they might want to move a little bit in, take advantage of the opportunity for a central position, which would give Tiggleton more room to play around. But most of the action is going to be here on the east side. We still have 15 teams alive. This circle has gotten so much, much too small for all these teams to be playing around each other. It's AKA, it's Falcons, it's Mercy right next to each other. The fight has to break out here. There's just not enough space. It's like that old film, it's all quiet on the Eastern Front, but it ain't gonna be quiet for too long. You've got Falcons in here, SSG not too far away. Pichao putting some damage onto Mime as well, who's finally got the rest of his team closing in his position. And I actually worry a little bit for Mercy if they stay hidden, but there's the first gunfire comes out. PWD will get the knock on Dorello, flushed instantly. Falcons down to just two players left alive. They're a little bit split on either side of the action. Mime's trying to get the high ground, he's rotating around, he should spot out, sneak attack, and he does, but 
He's got to be careful because the minute yeah. he opens fire, Kami, he's going to get third party from AKA and maybe even Pichao. There would have been more space for him to go aggressive if Rello didn't go down, but now with only two players up, the threat of the third party is definitely in the back of Mime's head. Flood needs to make a move now, needs not necessarily just to be a, a distraction, but also the blue's going to be at his back. He could potentially force Mercy into Mime's zone of control to get a very quick spray down, but honestly, I think Falcons are in salvage mode of their own at this point, having lost two members. Off though, right? Because SSG, they're just to the north of Falcons as well. So if they decide to move into the north zone from that spot, they'll be in trouble. Yakuz gets the knock onto AKA, but he's going to get traded out by Nanu. As we get ourselves in tough spot, Nanu will confirm that kill. AKA with three players up, the blue at their back though. And that will be a problem. Phase four doesn't quite tickle anymore. They'll pick up Rafex, try to carry him inside the zone deep enough to get that res off. But you've still got to worry about this fight. Santa Kami. Peeking out from on top of the two-story, but that's a great blue zone need. Mm, and, you know, timing that in with the actual blue zone itself, I don't think Santastico is going to get this one off. Yeah, the first day doesn't land in time. It's just a 10-0 left with a Panzerfaust. He's able to get one knock, but at the two HP, denies to the blue with the attempt to try and confirm at least that last kill before they go out. And AKA, they're limping. Mercy are taking full advantage of this. They already took care of Mime, and that's going to be it for AKA. That is... What, five kills for Mercy on the round so far, and they still have four members up. They're still kicking. Maybe that hype train is deserved. Sonics will fall to spam now as well, as eight teams have already got kills on the board with 12 teams still up. It feels tense, it feels nerves, it feels like maybe some of the top teams weren't as warm going into this as they would have wanted to. SSG, Pixel will limp inside the circle, but he's coming under heavy fire from 55 Esports. Flood might pick the opportunity to do some real damage. And look at that cowboy with a great panzer. will take down Slabby as the, at the other side of this fight between these two sides. Hard hold here for SSG, but they're making it work. They still have a healthy roster to play with, and it's just all about crossing this road. And I believe Rats also third partying in onto this fight, but they're managing their space, they're managing their kills, they're not over committing to fights or positioning. And here's Flood as the X Factor in this. Unsure if either of these teams know about this player soaking up the blues, surviving as long as they can. A number of first aid kits, but that's going to start to dwindle. It's about picking up one or two kills before they go out at this point. Phase 5 really hurts though, and I think Red. Flood will just be in that position where if he sees a chance to get or kill, steal a kill, he'll go for it. 55 Psycho with a great knock on the page. That'll force Cowboy to go for that resident. Actually by Psycho, a little bit of time to rotate here too, Kami, but he's coming under heavy fire from afar as well. Rats do eventually fall, and Psycho loses a tire. Uh, spinning it out. Oh, and hits the, the cactus as well. So Pixel... Looked like to try and take an opportunity of that, but wasn't able to make it work. And Flood's picking up multiple kills in the kill feed, so that's a couple of points coming out from there. This is the salvage that you expect. First aid kit just barely goes off, but that's out of meds, out of HP. Has to run forward into SSG. And SSG will know that Flood is coming, but they are getting out of here because they got to get Pixel back on his feet. Cowboy will find him on the passenger seat. And now the SSG can try get all four players back on their feet. Four kills for them oh no. on the board. And there's Sparking steps up, gets himself one page, will fall. SSG lamps to the slaughter as everybody has a couple of points off the back of them. And that's a huge play from Sparking as we jump over to Future against Spam. What, what, what happened to Spam? They've all been down to one player. It's just Karak remaining greater. That is a Groza in play up against Frogman hiding out in a shack. Blue Zone Grenade doesn't make it to its intended target. And Frogman right now can't really do a lot of scouting from those windows because the high ground threat of teams like Legacy, like Luna Galaxy, make it a little difficult, but opens the door. Decides, never mind, don't want any of that smoke. Closing that once again. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. In a little bit. There you go. Frogman peeks out, gets the kill for future. Three for them. And Spam are eliminated. Eight points though, Kami. That's pretty good for them in game yeah. number one. It's uh, what you would call a good bad game, right? You want a little bit more than eight points to kick off your tournament, but hell, it's better than nothing. Hey, listen, if you don't even make it to top four and you hit eight points, that's a good game in my books. Mm -hmm. But Vox here with a knock against Sneak Attack. Mercy is starting to feel a little bit of extra pain. Already lost a player, so this could be the second if Sneak Attack can't get picked back up. I don't think the angle is going to be allowed for the confirmed there. 
And the shift, however, does continue to favor marginally the West side. But I think Legacy are still in the best position, have good natural terrain to play around. The only question is, what happens if SDK and Luna Galaxy push at the same time? But with that knock coming out from Necro, that's going to certainly slow SDK's push down. Yeah, and that's going to be information too, because a Legacy will have heard that. And you can see RBN, he's got the need at the ready. Bizzler, Richie B steps in. That'll be future down as gas cans. Get their second kill, just six teams left alive, and once they step in, they, they'll have a little bit of terrain to play with on the south. Mercy have gone with a really wide split, and look at Lucid. He is playing that off-angle player. He's on the scout, and he's keeping an eye on everything Legacy are doing on the other side. That does make this potentially a two versus four advantage for gas cans to push onto this position, but they're still going to be needed to look for that first knock. Granted, that's a lot of open space that those vehicles can get some momentum if they want to send it up this this hillside here. But, you know, you never know if OG or Legacy or hell, even SDK have the angles to allow you to do that. And look at this, Kami. 14 over 16 teams have picked up points in game number one as well. That's a pretty good start, but they're still... Plenty more points to be garnered. STK need to push up this hill a little bit further to get the ground. LFP spots out Old Guard, gets the knock onto here. Green Necro is there as well. He'll toss the smoke as they try to get the res off, but time is becoming a problem. But why Legacy focus on Old Guard? It, they need to just be very careful as well, Cami, that STK don't sneak up. I mean, the STK are throwing the grenades. None of them seem to have really connected just yet. Mercy Gaming is eliminated in the kill feed. Bizzler, like the star player of the gas cans at this point, coming out with some huge numbers. But here on the north side, SDK trying to look to find a break to break away into Legacy's hold. A counter grenade from RBN does get a knock on the current. Luke's been confirmed. It's just Alo and Sparking left standing. And Alo has to watch for OG. These angles control over it. Me means that SDK don't have a clear trajectory into Legacy's area. They don't, but they do get Kurt back on his feet. But it does feel like an exercise in futility trying to get up over these ridge lines with the ground that's being held. Yeah. You've got Necro pushing. He's going to get a crate weapon for himself. And MG, you and I both know how deadly that can be, particularly in these June fights as the blue zone needs start getting tossed as well. STK getting ready, but do not rule out Old Guard. Making it up this far without any pressure coming out from Legacy, thanks to SDK's pressure, is really good for Old Guard, but here the shots come on out. As you said, Kurt back up, three versus three, LFP taken very low. And RBN is holding the angle on the side. Sparking will probably attempt the wraparound. That's a good need as Legacy start the third part of the action as well. That could be a dinner bell rang because you can see gas cans moving up the hill using all this noise to take position inside the zone. He's there, a spot side Kraken. Not going to shoot until he's got the perfect opportunity for a knock and Kraken. Come on, Gizera. You have to hit those. Haven's going to fall though at the hands of Gizera. Two kills for Legacy, but everybody taking a beating on the north. Man, hey, listen, didn't get that first kill on the LFP. Very uncharacteristic uh, failure there by Gizera, but regardless, SDK is still following up behind it, but Kurt's gone down to Gizera. Legacy are eliminated. Four teams left alive. It's a 4v3, v3, v2. STK want to get the res off, but Sparking has to hold back the wave of Old Guard. They have three players up. They've been like this since the very start, and they still find themselves in a great opportunity. But the longer this goes on, the better an opportunity for Gas Cans to take the win. And I love the way Gas Cans are rotating around the circle too, Cami, as utility starts getting dumped on STK. Yeah, but look where the circle goes, all the way towards the bottom. SDK, OG, still having to fight to even make their way into the zone. Assuming Luna Galaxy, well, not anymore, because Bizzler's still on the hole. Gas can still only team with four up. A whole bunch of kills already. They played a slower early game. Okay, six a little lower than I expected, but they are in prime position right now to take over this entire game. If anything, because OG and SDK, there's no way those teams don't fight before they go up against the gas cans. Yeah, and you know that gas cans are going to third party to try pick up any scraps they can. Look at that open terrain between the three sides as well as everybody's just hugging this ridge line. OG, level three helmet. Let's not forget about that. Necro's helmet could have a big thing to say in this game just yet, but this is the cam yeah. before the storm, right? Storm, right, Cammy? Oh yeah, absolutely. SDK, they're sort of teasing the waters, trying to see if they can go east. They're also getting up some loot, getting some more utility, but the shots of the MG3 come out. Sign, uh, the signal, it's position. 
And SDK OG, they're actually, SDK OG, I should say, uh, are finding a position in the zone without having to fight each other. It's, but come on, it, it's it's a pressure cooker waiting to explode. All these players getting so close to each other. Phase eight is gonna be in the center, as you said, it's gonna be slightly more open terrain. But maybe the Gaskins can start to get more involved before OG and SDK take each other out. It just takes one knock, one spark right. to explode everything in this situation. STK, they've just about got inside the zone. They're putting down a big wall of smoke. Sparking has got himself an arm as well, which is a big weapon. Kill Demo spots out Kurt, who'll dip back into cover again, Cami. But that zone has shifted away from pretty much all these teams, and it's the open terrain that will be the end game. Ooh, Spray comes out, but it's Bizzler that stops that, that pushes the MG3 away. We'll see if SDK can't, you know, take advantage of that potential lapse. There's a shield in play, spiking with the AWM. Just waiting. I'm just waiting yeah. for that shot to come off, but it ain't gonna happen just yet. It's you still gotta feel like gas cans are in the best position because SDK look like they're ready to fight, but sparking spots out Voxic and misses. The first shot with that arm, but it is suppressed. Still a pretty scary noise. And Kurt now pushes the aggression, but Nalo gets one. Necro trades it back. Necro goes prone and takes a ton of damage from Kurt. But STK are bringing the fight to OG. Higuain takes a ton of damage now too. One HP, Kurt's gonna fall. Leaving it all down to Sparking and a one versus two. As gas cans flood Kami, they're sending it in in the car. This is exactly what we expected. The damage was there from SDK, but the knocks weren't, and OG were able to find their way through. But as you say, gas cans, they're trying to take this one over. I don't know if they're going to be able to stop the revive, but they're waiting for the last stragglers of these fights to come into their lines of sight. Sparking still isn't on, though. Again, that's still a major threat, as is the MG3. These crate weapons are powerful units, early game, mid game, and especially end game. He's just trying to force the fight. He might yeah. even consider denying inside the blue. I think, yeah, Sparking... He's gonna fall. STK, valiant effort in game number one for them. But the Gas Can's OG story is only really starting to heat up. Richie B playing on the edge of the ridge line. Gas Can's by taking center of zone have done themselves a lot of favors, Cammy. They've really pinned OG against the blue. Vox has a crucial job here on the off angle on the Overwatch to deal some extra damage. But if he gets knocked, that, put, that puts into a three versus three with OG with the high ground advantage on the peaks. A lot of smokes have been played out. The gas cans are just, just waiting. It's the trap waiting to be sprung. Lol, the NA fans right now cheering on gas cans. It is North America versus South America in the final two of the first map of the day. Nade tossed up, doesn't find any damage whatsoever, but get Adam is prone and hidden. Necro's only got 48 rounds left in that MG, and it chews through them. But Adam's going to be that, really, that snake in the grass. He spots him out, but he dips in the cover once more. He tosses the molly to the side, and he's going to spot out one. Richie B gets the opener in this fight. Two pushing up over the top of the ridge line. Adam does a ton more damage, but he falls now as well. And it is a 3v2. And Vox, it's still holding the angle from the other side, Cammy. Not lost control of it just yet. It is a one-for-one -one trade, but they still have the advantage here. Richie B gets that kill confirmed. Three versus two. Smoke's being tossed just to create some form of cover for Richie B. But as we spoke about Vox, with the very important job. Panther trying to retake the high ground here as well. As the members of Old Guard begin rotating down to the blue. Kill Demo's going to fall at the hands of Richie B. Richie B gets another. And Gas Cans kick off the weekend with a 19-point game. And, well, no other team on their moment in time is as explosive as Gas Cans can be, right? And that was a big game from them. Absolutely. Really big game from Bizzler specifically. Granted, Gaskets play like a group. They play like a very concentrated unit. Their fights are usually pack-oriented, so it is certainly a team effort. But man, Bizzler, he has been such an amazing player in the, the region for the past couple of years. He's only been getting better and better. He has just kept on improving, and he will continue to do so. But what a game we had for game number one. We're going to toss it over, and whenever we come back, it'll be game two. We'll see you guys pretty shortly. My lord, the Neuron <laughs> empty in-game circle is just going to continue. Uh, that was uh, 
That was that rough was to watch. One of the games. <laughs> yeah. That was one of the games. You are correct. One of the games, indeed. This blue zone grenade was actually really nasty. Rats able to get a nice little wipe there onto Bestia, and then Pichao, you know, a nice little pan. There were so many Panzers this game. Actually. So many. I'm so happy that that happened too, because they, they asked me, they're like, "Oh, what, what gun do you want to see more in the finals?" I'm like, "Panzer, duh!" Like, isn't that obvious? Not everybody I, wants to see more Panzer. I said, "AK well, like the Sonic Sonic's fan, but, you don't like him right now, right?" Well, well if you're a Kickstarter but, uh, specifically, you know, yeah, like. yeah, no, that was uh, that felt real bad, <laughs> but it was hey, it's still funny to watch. But uh, but no, I mean, I think you know this was this was just a terrible circle. Like it just it, not even just the circle, but the terrain that it fell in, but the way that it got there from the C1 pop and the shifts that it took to get there were like the worst possible shifts you could get right they were yeah, they were giving bad. you high they were they were baiting you high ground and then forcing you to move off the high ground the next shifts it was it was just terrible and then center of that circle was just completely open too so the teams that you know were left alive in the end like SDK and OG as well as i mean gas cans who played it well very patient you know they knew Huge. that the the end was uh was nigh as the other two teams, SDK and OG, were fighting. But SDK, hell of a fight as well. I mean, got a good amount of kills coming into that game. I believe it was, what, six? So, nice amount of points to start it off. I mean, we kicked it off Take talking those. about, hey, are we going to see, like, more aggressive shoot-to-kill? Are they going to be going for a bit more points and trying to climb up the leaderboard and contest the top? Presently, yes. Gas can's up there as well. Mercy coming in with eight spam back behind that one, having themselves a good game. Legacy involved in a lot of it, but a lot of our usual suspects also kind of hanging off on the right side. Falcons, uh, Sonics, Bestia, SSG, all not necessarily having the best game one, but hey, it's just game one. We still got tons of them that we can run through. Yeah, for sure. I and mean, uh, I don't know, man. I, it's it, like we said, the, the, the circles kind of made it a little bit more extra, super awesome, awkward. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, you got to give all credit in the world to gas cans for the way they handle it. And they, uh, and honestly, I was, uh, I was actually kind of, uh, I was impressed by Mercy as well. Yes. Like they, they kind of have continued to do that whole thing that they were doing during groups and during LCQ where they find an edge and they just kind of dominate everybody on that edge and keep circling around. It's, it's not often that you see a team that just kind of comes out of nowhere and can do it that well. And they're comfortable. They're so comfortable playing from that edge as well, right? I mean, they took out two teams. Essentially, they took out most of Falcons, and then they just dominated AKA. So the fact that they're able to do that on the east edge, and as you said, feel comfortable playing very, I mean, deep edge, right? They're not just playing, like, within the zone. They're, they're generally outside the zone fighting, and they always finish their plate. So the fact that they were able to do that in game one is, is pretty telling. Yeah, that was, uh, I guess, the most open but somehow still having hillside blocked like in-game circles we have seen in a long time. You need like a bird's eye view to get the best vision of that. And I would say that the Falcons, because they were kind of out of the lobby, would have a very good vision for that one. <laughs> Flying up in the sky. Uh, Boro, you're going to give us an insight on what happened with them in that last game. Yeah, like, okay. So I definitely wanted to keep an eye on Falcons this, uh, for this game. So all the things we've been talking about, um, one of the biggest ones is the fact that they've got the new Mikado loot location. So the loot location comes, they get to go hard to the northeast on this circle. They take an E-pick up to get there at the very beginning, and they have the entire north to themselves. You can kind of see how that played out. So really, really good early game for the most part. Uh, then once that circle does shift, they go, they opt for this 2-2 split with too high and too low. And now circle three pops they have to split so the low side is going to have to come up but wouldn't you know it worst timing <laughs> possible as the sandstorm is coming in and it puts the brakes on Rello and Flood from the low side long enough to where Mercy crashes into the high side and takes out Snakers. So now Mime's up there hiding by himself, trying to make something work. AKA is in the vicinity. Mercy was looking at them, but then AKA left. So now Mercy is just finding and just nickel and diming Falcons uh, all the way until the end. So Flood's the last one alive. Fortunately for Falcons, they have some hero plays out of their Australian superstar. He managed to pick up a few more points from them before for inevitably succumbing uh, to just the craziness that was going on over there. But, you know, it, it's 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 not often that, you know, you can see the impact that just one sandstorm has on, uh, on a whole team. It's just like the whole game was just ruined by that sandstorm hitting right yep. when it did. It's a hard thing to navigate, specifically inside that dip. Uh, Godspeed, that was like... 
uh, finding up, like whenever we look at Mercy's perspective on that, that's gotta be very wild to have Mime on one side and then two other members for the Falcons while the Sandstorm's coming in and they're in the low ground. How do you even defend against something like that? Well, I think initially, like Pora was saying, they were looking for AKA, right? But then that awkward split that got cut off by the Sandstorm really kind of threw a wrench in their plan. But even still, the ability to find cover in those little pockets, and like Pora said, Nickel and Dime Falcons was really impressive. Their, their edge fighting has 100% been their biggest strength so far that we've seen in the group stages as well as LCQ, and they've brought that here so far at least. So as long as they can continue this momentum forward and continue to control those edges, I think Mercy's gonna do very well in this lobby. To be fair, they're also having some phenomenal luck too. Like they're, they're, yeah. catching, they're catching really good teams in really bad situations like they're yeah. catching yes, falcons but isn't that in a, in also being just opportunistic yeah, it is lucky yeah, but you no, have to I be mean, in the right spot no the I'm position not, he's right though I, i'm not yeah. saying it as a bad thing guys i'm not like trying to discount anything that mercy's been doing because they've also been taking full 4v4 fights a, aka the aka fight where they got revenge <laughs> on that late game uh that late game 4v4 that they uh fell to aka uh in the lcq but you know it, it's just they, they are they're they're catching people at the wrong time so they just happen to be in the right place at the right time, but they're capitalizing on it. That's right? They're exactly. being aggressive. They're being uh, proactive instead of just kind of sitting there and saying like, uh, uh, "Should we should we make a play? No, let's just let's keep it safe. Let's see where the next circle goes." And they're, they're like they see they see team. They press W key. They go and shoot kill. I mean, that's the thing. Gun. It's like, you got to take destiny into your own <laughs> yeah. hands. Miramar number one is done, and we're going to be making our way over to Miramar number two in just one second. We're going to take a quick break to give the players a chance to kind of relax, kind of review everything that's going on, and we will be back for game number two's action in just one moment. Welcome to Update 28.2. Join us for our 7th anniversary celebrations, an all new SMG experience in the arcade, and finally, the recall system update. We've got lots of surprises in store for you to celebrate our 7th birthday. Erangel's school will be transformed into a festive 7th anniversary venue. Plus, keep an eye out for throwable cupcakes and surprise gift boxes scattered across the starting island of each map. We've been hard at work balancing the SMGs to offer a more unique experience and accommodate various gunplay strategies. The arcade is all set for you to try out these changes, so get that early feel and let us know what you think. And there's more exciting news. Based on your positive feedback, we're expanding the recall system to include Vikendi and Tago. Check out the patch notes to discover all the details of this update. Lastly, this patch also includes weapon mastery updates, world bug fixes, and performance tweaks. Be sure to dive into the patch notes for all the details. And we'll see you on the battlegrounds. He's kind of driving towards us. The fuck? This car's driving yellow right left. now. Twice. Yellow left, guys. We play it. Yellow. Yeah, we should do that. Did we play it? Yeah. 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 Oh, do we? Holy fuck! You're actually insane. What the I fuck? Yeah. Work, man. Can we get that? You guys should we... come up and take yellow. Yeah, I have to run with you. Oh, SSG's he's... leaving. SSG isn't leaving. Boys, let's okay. get this ridge. By the way, somebody needs to watch for Lunar Galaxy to peek out. Yes, one up. And it's one of the guys behind. Should be. Yeah, yeah. One's right. I'm going with you. Knocked. Second guy knocked. One HP inside. No, the other one's I Walker. Feel... He's the north guy. Different Play team. underneath Different them team. now. Play underneath them now. He's come, 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 come. I'm in, I'm in. He's on blue Falcon solo, by the way. Yeah, just look yeah. at him while you drive. You dog him. Pull up on us and we're full safe. We need to smoke us. Yeah, nice. Is it's 55 dead, guys. Do you have a smoke pixel? 55 dead. Yeah, I don't have smoke on green. Please don't rush. Don't rush. In red, I'm full blind, I'm full blind. Yep, full blind. Yeah, that's clear. I will fragment. Yeah, good, I'm dead. Let me out. I'm pulling Let himself. Me... I'm done. Don't throw. He's full right, 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 right. Don't throw. Okay. Wait. Play we'll play down into me. Knocked. He's not close. Oh, up okay. on green. Okay. Last on green. Blue. I'm rezzing. I'm rezzing. Last on green. Dead. All dead. Okay. Still on green. Uh, I need it past you, Adam. Above me, above me, right. Last two above me. Last two above me. 
Play into my angles. Don't push. Don't push. Play into my angles. Don't push. One's, one's we win. Okay, I'm not pushing. I'm not pushing. I'm not pushing. I'm not pushing. Back it up. Watch the left. Back it up. Back it up. Welcome back in everyone and game number one is done and dusted. Up next we got even more Miramar Kami but that was a very strange start to the tournament particularly with some of the teams we lost in the early phases. It was a very strange phase one, I'll be honest. Mm -hmm. Like even with the addition of E pickups added to the game because imagine that circle like that without E pickups totally different story but even with the e pickups it's that's not an easy circle that is particularly manageable um very straight in, in a very straightforward manner so again like i said at the top of the show it really depends on how we see these teams adjust and react and as well i think it should be noted it is miramar which tends to have an early, um, a slow early game but it's also game one of the grand finals so teams also tend to be a little conservative despite scrims having gone on for multiple weeks there's still going to be that level of okay now is the time to deliver there's a little bit of like settling in what really is this other team going to do the meta of the lobby is, needs to get established and so throughout the week we are going to see early game be a little more i don't want to say more aggressive but perhaps a little more decisive because if you remember that east side of that that zone where like the falcons got taken out with the mercy and luna galaxy that was a lot of teams in such a small area. I don't expect to see that happen too often the further along this event we get. They were casualties of the shift as well, right? That was a very Eastern shift from that point. And we actually got to listen to some of the comms off the back of that fight, Kami. Mm -hmm. And the one thing you picked up on was the massive call by Gas Cast. It was just, don't, <laughs> don't throw, throw. <laughs> don't throw. We've all been there, right? Where you get a little bit confident and you feel like you're about to make a play, but in reality, you could be ruining your team's chances. Right, especially with the time to kill in this game compared to some other BRs on the market now. If you mess up and like also the time to kill it, these players are able to deal with each other. You could have the biggest advantage in the world. If you miss, you land your first bullet, you miss your second, you could be dead instantly. We've, we've seen, it. it's uncommon, but it's possible. We've seen like 180 just instant tag down um, on events. So yeah, so good for the gas cans to just not throw that even after losing Adam in that one for one trade. The rest of the team, team didn't feel some insane pressure to like try and flood over and, and match that energy in some big way. They just held onto their position and won the game out in a very straightforward manner. Yeah, and it's another east to west flight path to get us started on this one. And we're about, you know, four or five hundred meters further south than the last time. Well, sorry, for a few kilometers south, but it's pretty much similar to what we had the first time with the pathing. Do you think we're going to have extreme shift this time to the south though, Cami? Is it too early to dare you to make a prediction on the zone? I'm not predicting circles. What are you talking about? My <laughs> prediction is that it touches the plane path. Anything, anything outside of that? I don't know. I got no, There's no precedence for any of this stuff. That's a good prediction though. Like, I guarantee you're correct. People have said that that's not the case anymore, but I have yet to experience it myself. So until I see it, I mean, I think the last game got close to phase one, not touching the, the plane path. And maybe if you zoom in enough, you can say, oh, you see here, this is not literally, but, you know, shut up, nerd. Yeah, th they reverted it. So last year for a little while, it didn't have to touch the flight path, but right. now we have to touch the flight path once more. So it is a rule once more. It is a southern shift though, Kami, with Los Leones being encompassed inside that zone. But this is one of the circles, right, where you got to discount that southern island too. You got to say that it's Pretty much, what, 75% of the circle is actual terrain that you expect to see teams in? Yeah, I mean, closer to 80, but we are going to have another video being played. We asked the teams, what did you expect from your teammates? I don't like to put so much pressure in my teammates. I don't ask them to, like, kill everyone, go kill, you need to kill. I ask them to play intelligent um give me give me clearly and right infos about what is happening in their point of view um and the most important thing is don't kill yourself please <laughs> stay alive i need you uh, i only expect them to perform well and have fun especially have fun because it's been a, it's been a good ride all along i mean i expect my teammates to uh to come out the gate confident uh, we're the defending champs of PAS. Uh, obviously, we've made a roster change, but uh, we made that with this in mind to only improve our team and come out uh, stronger than we were before. And uh, that's uh, 
no disrespect towards Sharp or anyone before that, but uh, you know, we're super confident, we're super happy, and uh, we're ready to show everybody what we're capable of. Reigning PAS champs, Roth reminding us what we said a little bit earlier, but the big thing I noticed, Cami, was RBN talking about not really expecting the team to go kill. So he's not going to follow, you know, that old copy pasta, which was, you know, H one's the best IG on the game because he caused strats like, you know, Shrimsy, go kill. Tiggleton, right. go kill. Right. But he's talking more about playing as a team and just being really clear with communication. Yeah, listen, at this state of the game, like, there are no roles in... It, it's difficult enough to talk about roles in, in FPS games, but especially in, in PUBG, there is no such thing as roles. All you have are, like, tendencies by different players, like the tendency for Luke 12 of STK to be focusing more on long range. Alo is historically known for his close range abilities, then Kurt as the IGL, also credited as the individual and the team for STK of bringing in nades into the meta. But really, it's just about communication and putting you and your teammates in positions to win gunfights. Like, Luke should be able to win close-range fights. Halo is expected to do well at long-ranged engagements. you you got to be a jack-of-all-trades. i got to agree. And when you talk, you brought up Luke in particular, right? And I think he's one of those players that he's gone under the radar as a re-addition because everybody's too busy talking about sparking but yeah. here's the real star of the show, right? Richie B, seven kills in the last game? Yeah. Listen, it's Bizzler. Change the name to Bizzler now. Uh, obviously, Richard Bizzler is the individual in question, the full name here. So if you hear us say Richie B, we're talking about Bizzler. It's just stuck in our head. Even though we see the name right in front of us, we all just we all have the name Richie B uh, stuck uh, in our head. So I, I'm going to make an effort to try and use Bizzler. But regardless, yeah, playing very, very well. But right now, shoot to kill. Actually getting approached by a couple members of Spam. Briss has already been taken down. Jabari with a grenade at the ready, and Kurt has one to respond. Yeah, these two teams dropped inside of Los Leones, and for Kurt, it's about staying alive long enough for the rest of the team to help out. Luke 12, we just spoke about him, gets the angle onto Gabiri and gets that player knocked as well. Things going pretty badly for Spam in the early stages of this one. Kerak drops off. He's going to fall, push, start pushing up now to attempt to maybe get these reses off to his fallen teammates, but Kurt surely knows. But this is all about RDS. Ooh. He has to prevent covering fire down. Oh, there's actually some shots from Sparkring to give covering fire for Kurt to push forward. Not allowed the revive. Really good spray coming out. Three down. Sentastico off on the distance. Third party trying to spoil it. But look at that prey just waiting to be gobbled up. Gobble, gobble, gobble. Kurt with three kills. Kurt loves it. You know, they say you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but one thing's for sure. He's certainly playing more aggressively now that Sparking and Luke are back on the team. Spam, it is just that salvage game for RDS. Now, thankfully for him, he is in a good position. Transitioning over, though, Roth will get a knock up onto Kill Demo from Old Guard as well. Kill Demo was doing a little bit of scouting for his side. Roth was ready, and this will be a point for SSG as well. Some covering fire at range from other members of SSG just to make sure that Kill Demo cannot get revived. Roth is going a little aggressive here. Cowboy is arriving to give some potential backup. The worry is if Roth goes a little bit too kill hungry, tries to confirm that kill a bit too aggressively, can get taken out by Necro. But I think, again, with the long range shots coming in from Pixel, Kodemo should be confirmed, and there it is. Yeah, Necro's just going to get out of there now as well. He's given up the space. He's lost his teammate, but he stayed in. And you know what? That'll be old Gar playing with three. But the last time they played with three was the last map camera, and they still picked up 10 points. So it ain't right? really a bad thing for them, is it? It's like, you know what? Thank you very much. We're better at three. I guess. I don't know. Probably not. We'll say, we'll say that. Right? <laughs> it's, it's what they're telling themselves to cope with it. Yeah, stats will tell you that playing with four is definitely better with playing than playing with three, but the joy of PUBG, and if you are new to these esports, is that, Kami, even if you're dead inside the game, you can still bring so much value to your team. You can keep an eye on the kill feed. You can kind of work out pathing rotations for other teams. Like, just because you're down and out doesn't mean your job is done. Yeah, uh, like the amount of times that you have the opportunity to call that tree or you saw them or hit those shots. I mean, it's just, it's it's in, much more impactful when you're dead than when you're actually in the lobby. <laughs> What's your favorite call out? That uh, on ping or at the tree? Which which one which one drives you up the wall more? Uh, on ping at least has a ping to follow up on. That tree over there is the one that gets, you know, okay, okay here's my thing. Here's my thing. Listen, I love toffees very much. Stop using the numbers of the, on the compass to make call outs. We're not even on the same angle anymore. Just give me the ping. Give me cardinal directions. Somewhere over there. He's somewhere over there, right? 
I, I played I just, with toffees. I have played with them. I know what it's like. It's a personal preference of mine. He has his way. I have mine. I just, for some reason, the 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 numbers on the compass don't make any sense to me. I the amount of times, and again, this is why it's my fault. The amount of times that I have to then like do a three sixty in the air to line it up. Like, wait, which way is that? Is that left? Is that right? Is anyway. Yeah, here's here's Cowboy though. We spoke about him earlier. The new addition for SSG. I had the chance of playing with some of these guys in a competitive environment a few weeks ago, and all I'm going to say is the difference in speed of play, Kami, is ridiculous. Like, right. I'll still be looting, and they'll already be off in a gunfight. Like, the, the speed that these guys loot and make decisions, my brain hasn't even picked up that we've hit the ground yet, and they're already on their way. Yeah, I mean, the, the three and a half minute rotate from loot spawn, loot spot meta. Uh, has been entrenched deep in PUBG. And it's not something that you really ever have to consider or deal with uh, when you play casually. So I think that's something that I think a lot of uh, uh, casual players like don't really have the mental connection of how fast these teams ha really have to move right now it looks like rats are moving quickly onto vox's territory vox on the way out giving that space up doesn't want to stick around for the fight but, but some great shots coming out from grant lantis to confirm that one and that's confirmed rats have been really effective in the early game of both maps so far. Chun does fall at the hands of Tiggleton, who will attempt to confirm it out. Puts a really good timer on him, but I think he's got just about enough cover for the Rats to at least attempt to get that res off. But they just about snuck into the Grand Finals. Remember, they were the eighth team in the final lobby, and I think right. Chun is actually going to get timed out, as uh, he will fall. But this is a different side to them than what we saw in the other two rounds. And if they want to be in with a chance of qualifying for PGS, which is an outside chance, a very outside chance, this is how they'll need to play. Yeah, I mean, well, not currently, because they're <laughs> potentially two players down. Gats is going to be able to get revived by Grant Lantis. And honestly, Gats is probably, you know, personal opinion, is the player on Rats that I look to the most to be able to deliver massive damage. So with him getting picked back up, I think is a good sign for Rats' uh, chances going forward despite losing Tune. But what a hard shift all the way towards the east. None of these circles are being straightforward so far in the early games of either Miramars. A lot of Los Leones in play, unsure how many teams are going to commit to it because it is all the way towards the north. And this is where you start to consider when does the unplayable shifts really come into play? What can we play around? What should we try and avoid? If there was a positive of this circle, right, though, it's got to be the fact there's no more water in it. You know, True. It, it, it at least takes one thing out of it, but it keeps a ton of Los Leones in the circle. But the real thing for me, Kami, is how much terrain there is on the east as well for teams to rotate into. And look at the amount of teams that are already on the move. Yeah, that's the problem, though, because to get to the east, you can't wrap too much towards the south because the water's not in the zone, but it is blocking off a, a, a potential wrapping trajectory towards the north. You want to go all the way around Los Leones, and there were some rocks and some mountains north of that, so it means that potentially a number of these teams, if they don't have any e-pickups, e have to just sending it, have to just send it through. We see Lunar Galaxy do that right now. Peachow does pick up a kill on Deuce Barking. There are so many teams in this one area because of this shift, funnels all of these rotations into very clear angles. I'm actually really happy to see STK falling back from that fight. They do not need to get involved with Falcons inside of Phase 2 of this game. Neither of these teams, global partner teams, neither of these teams can really deal with losing too many players in the early stages. You have lost Sparking. However, you've still got three up. You've still got a pretty prime position in the center of the circle. 55, though, they'll be looking for somewhere to call home as they do use that emergency pickup. See, this is the team that can go to the east side, which would be a really good uh, grab for them. The only other difference that we should note is that the east has a lot of open space, not necessarily the amount of compounds that you'd want to really hold out with, or even the terrain that you'd want to hold on. One of them dropped early already. Staggering your drop can be a strategy to make sure that you can adjust based off of what the lower player reacts or finds on their drop, get some information there. Shots coming out from a couple of different teams. No one's gotten hit just yet, but as you know, you can always get hit on the E pickup, such as one time I got hit that person with a bolt action. Kraken can't make a, make a bolt land, though. I, I'm going to give you a challenge. I want you to bring that up as many times because the shot deserves it. <laughs> Not, you know, I've seen it. That was a hell of a shot that you landed. I was like, I was just scrolling, and I saw, how did I manage that then, I think was what he titled it. And I was like, okay, Kami's got game. We'll take it. Yeah, unfortunately, I also kept in the shots that I missed before that. But it doesn't matter. It's not about me. It's about these guys. And 55, okay, 
taking the bunker here, taking the cave, is... I understand why they're going for it. The problem is, it basically, you give up any and all agency of establishing control if this position remains in the, the game going forward. And it's so close to the center, there's a high chance that it will. Sonics, on the other hand, they're really trying to establish control of this northeast side. They're one of the two teams that wrapped all the way toward, from the northeast. Bestia was the other one. And the positioning, the spread, the crossfire that Sonics has set up right now, they look primed and ready to keep Bestia out of this trajectory, of this angle, forcing Bestia potentially further down towards the south. Yeah, but you're forgetting one thing, Cammy. They've got the gold Morado. Like that's that's worth something in itself. Right. right. Legacy, they're moving in as well. You spoke about the control Sonics have up to the northeast. Circle shift will pop and it goes back towards Los Leones once more. And right. if Sonics can deal with Bestia, they have such prime territory because if it does keep going to Los Leones, they've got that nice rotate in. Uh Legacy are still on, on the plane, and I think they might be aiming for Sonics. No, it's actually going to be a hot drop directly on to future Shap at the ready. Pulls out in the vehicle, looking to rotate away from this. Not wanting to commit to the fight, just going to be giving all this space over. But is the time ready? It's actually a totally different teammate out in the open. Shap is up along the hill, but there's still a fight brewing. Oh, terrazoka has been a little bit hung out to dry, and he's just got to stay alive for as long as possible. And this is where the mind games begin, right? Because if Terrazoka can stay alive for as long as possible, and if he finds himself getting a knock or two, all of a sudden, the rest of Future might find themselves coming back down that hill to give him some support. This is really on to Terrazoka with how much damage he can do. And Seifu, well, he's going to do no more damage as he plummets to the sky. And there's Terrazoka getting his first oh! knock, but he's going to get traded back. And I think, uh, I think Future will be happy to have gotten at least that one point. Yeah, confirming the kill versus keeping the bullets in the magazine for the continual push is a 50-50 coin flip that you just have to make a decision. But at least got the kill point what sucks is going for the kill point and not even being able to manage that but future a little bit of a one-for-one -one trade they kept the high ground which is why shap immediately left that position they gave it up the timing was a little bit off in order to keep all four members alive terrazoka wasn't in a position to hop into the uber ride that had arrived for him but they're in, still in a good position with the high ground i'm wondering what's going to happen with los leones because i'm looking at the map so far no one that was out of the city uh, at phase two is going in it now so this is only going to increase the amount of individuals that are on the south half of this phase three i think ssg will just tuck themselves in on the as into the edge see what's safe and kind of move their way in from there but i think the reason is kami it's always easier to get into a city than it is to get out of it because yep. you've seen so many teams get picked apart whenever the zone eventually does leave but ssg they'll be pretty happy with the space that they do have here there are a couple of these warehouse positions available for SSG, which is, it looks like that's what they're scouting out for. This, we sometimes call it the industrial area of Los Leones. City planners don't read into that too much. It's just a phrase that has stuck. Um, <laughs> but it looks like they're actually eyeing up Peach Chow with a little bit of a split of their own, a little bit of a 2-2-1. Two, two, and that, if SSG wrapped from the north, depending on how much their party action Falcons and OG want to put on it, it could be a 4-2. That is, of course, if... <laughs> they can even get across that open space that Wycos is trying to hold down. So immediately those shots do push Roth and the rest of SSG away, at least temporarily. We have 15 seconds before Phase 4, so it's understandable why a fight wouldn't want to be committed to just yet. Yeah, especially when SSG don't really need to commit onto that either. Just see where the zone's going to go. We'll find out a little bit more damage done on us. Kai Shen from Old Guard tagging him this time, but the zone shift does eventually happen, and that's another violent shift towards the East County. Right. Yeah, this is great for future, great for legacy, if anything, and also absolutely fantastic for the Sonics. The one thing of those three teams that I'm a little curious about, shall we say, is future. They might actually get overwhelmed, but the one thing helping them out is that all those teams likely going to be pushing, basically bumping shoulders with each other because you can't rotate through Los Leones to get into this zone. It's going to be a lot of fighting on the southwest side. And here are Gas Can's winner of game number one. They've lost Vox to Rats a little bit earlier. They'll hear the members of AKA on the move and they'll start to step a little bit further forward. Here, should, this should be an easy one for Richie B. He's got to get his no, over. Oh no! He doesn't go down though. Down to 9 HP, Richie B. Bizzler will pick up a knock of his own. AKA, well, it's gone from bad to worse for them. LIP, the last player standing. And if, let's not forget about Nanu as well. Sorry, I read that wrong. He's still inside the building, but that's really good from Gas Cans. Sorry, I'm still just shocked that Bizzler has uh, shins and knees of steel being able to get hit by a vehicle and staying alive. Penta does go down. So the, pr uh, the pressure from Lip sort of forced 
action to happen, but a flash to keep the flush from occurring. Nanu with a farm ass, though. That thing is a dangerous, dangerous gun to contend with. LIP back up to 93 health as well. Can begin to start helping out his teammates. Penta will get knocked, but Ritzy B spots out LIP. Let's transition over, though, to Rats as they're in a gunfight with OG, and Rats will get their fourth kill. The Spoon will get back on his feet, and they're up to four now as well. I think that's, you know what, did they get four or five kills in the first map, four in the second? They're not really getting into the end game, but they're getting plenty of points, and another fight is kicking off, Kami. There's just gunfights everywhere. Because you can't rotate out of the spot, that's the big problem. Manu is bringing around the side, he gets a bit of a spray down, gets both! Framos has a high rate of fire, which means you can lose control of it very quick, but Nanu had that one on lock. Pichao will look to do damage now on to STK. Kurt has already been knocked up on top of the container, but Alo's got a good angle on the Yakuza and gets that knock, confirming it out as well. STK up to four kills, which is two players standing. And the question is, can they deal with Pichao and not enough time to get the res off the court. Falcons rotate past as well. Snakers will take a ton of damage on the way in as AKA will fall. And Falcons actually realizing the scenario, know they can pull up on this and get some eagle eyes down onto this gunfight. Falcons are known for their mid-game, what should it, how do I say this? F it, send it, and they're able to feed it, feed the needle through into the middle of the zone. Now they have a really strong position. Flood has gotten knocked, but they still hold defensible position against everyone else running from the blue. So it has to go out in the open. Great counter shots to drop Grant. Well, Grant's going to fall, and Alo is moving up on the side of the hill here as well. Rats need to get that res off quickly because you've still got Nateno not too far away as well. So they'll go for that res. But as you can see, this is a long ways away from that circle where Sonics have so much control up towards the north. STK wiping out Pichao. And now Rats will turn their attention to the two members down on the bottom of this hill. Rats need to remove STK before they can even yeah. focus on moving forward. And look where Falcons are as well. Yeah, and SDK, they were able to confirm those kills. They have six points, and Alo, oh, man, this is going to be sick if it lands. We'll see, but SDK know that they're not in a super strong position. The Panzer misses, and now here comes some grenades flying out. I don't really uh, envy the position that STK are in right now. They've got six points on the board, but you've got to push up this hill, and Falcons are waiting to pick up the pieces. SSG have been torn asunder on their rotate in from the north now too. Page is completely locked out. So I feel like they're not gonna pick up too many points in this one as well. And by STK clearing out SSG, they've secured prime real estate. But this fight between STK and Rats will still continue. Rats is starting to run away from this one. They don't have that much time to play around with. In fact, the blue is starting to close. So they realize, you know what? We've locked STK out outside of the safe zone. Let's just make our own way in. Relo now with the push, swinging up over the hillside, over the high ground, find the angle onto Sam. Rello, dipping back into cover. Remember, Falcons did not get a lot of points in the first game at all. 11 teams left. The Spoon peeks over, spots out Alo. The Spoon gets his one, and he'll confirm it out. Just one member of STK still alive, and it's Luke 12, and he's on the other side of this ridge, and he can hear the footsteps, but it's about picking the right time to strike. He picks his time, he gets the Spoon. Gats will push this way as well, but Falcons will attempt to steal away the kill, and I think that it's actually going to be Tingleton from Sonics who picks that one up on the board. And Luke 12, he's going to funnel his way right towards the waiting arms of Falcons. Now Gats, the last one alive of Rats. They've gotten chewed apart as they run away from the zone. Still six kills for them, but kickstart with the angle. Gats is looking for a knock. That's two points. No, only would have been one point. Never mind. We're not in placements just yet. Uh, nine teams alive now. Gats has been eliminated. Rats are out. Still fifth place on the overall leaderboard. So Not far. a bad place to right be now. after two games, but STK, look, he's going to wrap further south, which is exactly where Legacy are currently rotating into the circle from. Falcons know that STK is somewhere in this position as well. But we're seeing another situation where the zone shift is just forcing so many fights on the edge. I mean, you saw what happened to the one team that tried to rotate through Los Leones. They got chewed apart by the Sonics. So I don't, I understand why these teams are going this direction, but it really means that you've got to be on your toes, got to be on your feet. Luke with a knock, trying to confirm this kill before going down out of meds. The one opportunity left. Luke does go down to fakes in, but can Falcons wipe Luna Galaxy and give that final kill point to STK? Oh, they're going to try anyway. That could make it a two-point kill. Eight teams left alive. Vinny 
Picking up over the ridge line, Looney Galaxy with a three, but Snakers does fall. Future third partying this fight as well. On the edge, and I can see 55 on the minimap creeping this way as well. Blood gets his one, but he's traded back by Haven. Kraken and Fakeson are still alive. Mime is up as well, but Falcons are getting torn apart here too. Both of these sides really doing themselves a ton of damage. Kama Utility being thrown as they hunt down Mime inside the smoke. Luna Galaxy know they've got to clean this up quickly. Yeah, I mean, look, Future are looking, 55 are on the prowl, shots coming out from Future, forces fakes in away, and actually forces Kraken through the smoke. This could potentially catch Mime off guard, but I think Mime is actually going for the revive. Yes, Blood is picked back up. Blood will make a difference, that is for sure. Raylo is down and out, those Kraken gets killed. Flood does a ton of damage, but he falls again, but his Mimes Molly will find Kraken. And he thinks about going for that res once more. Deals with Kraken, just to make sure the information hasn't been passed through. Spray from range from Fakeson. And that's a bit more damage to the back switch is over, but Mime gets another one and dips back into the smoke. Mime going big for Falcons on the edge. Doesn't have time to even use bandages to give him an advantage in this fight. Haven is pushing forward. Haven is also very low on HP, and Mime is just waiting. Spots it! Gets the final kill. Elimination, the annihilation of Luna Galaxy, but Falcons are limping. But Future, distracted by 55, this could be a gap that Mime could capitalize on. You never know. One knock at all. Mime might be able to step on up and get himself that, that two-point kill that you always speak about. Future, they're on the edge of the zone here as well. 55, you've got Bestia. A little bit Mortars. further south, and it has to be Sonics, right? This has to be Tiggleton. Is it anyone else than Tiggleton? Is it strikes pretty close to Bestia, but it looks like Mime's going to move his way towards RDS, and RDS will hear these footsteps on the yeah. other side of that rock. Yeah, Mime doesn't have the luxury of being able to take his time. The blue is already pushing in, going into unknown territory. Seems to suspect someone around this area, but yeah, RDS can just sit inside the zone, inside the safe zone, wait for Mime to go into his line of sight. Don't and yep, that was Sonics. It. Those are the, the mortars from the Sonics. In fact, I'm looking at the map. It's Tiggleton, of course. Who else? Yeah, Trigonometry, not really landing, but it's still applying pressure. It's close. Like, that yeah. is not too far away at all. I think maybe, if anything, Bestia are just a little too close. I think Tiggleton would, have, would rather those longer range fights, but 55 beginning to aggress now on to future. Slabby spots out Shap, he's got the 3x, he's got the spray scope, and this could be a sitting duck inside the Murado, but Slabby misses the shots, Cammy. Yeah, that, that's an opportunity missed there. And now they're gonna, that's only the position given away as well for Future to potentially capitalize on, doesn't seem to be the case. They're all just waiting for the next zone, they're all just waiting for phase 7, it is gonna be slightly towards the west, so it puts perhaps less pressure on the west side, but they are still going to be all fighting over this little sliver of space available that's not in Legacy or Sonic's territory. And remember, Legacy, E pick up onto this position. A good blue zone need should force Glock a little further back. Draft King wants to wrap around, but the blue zone's preventing his progress just a little here too. Lopez does some damage, but Sharp Shot's got great covering fire. As down goes Lopez, Bestia pushing up. Maybe Future might be tempted to move south onto this one as well, but this is bad news bears for 55 Esports. Glock's going to fall. Sharp Shot's Blue Zone Nade doing enough damage to make that fall. Bestia have no kills on the board just yet. And here comes Shap. He gets a knock on the Sabi. It is rough for 55 out here as they fall in seventh. They held their ground for a little bit, but the real question is, our future, can they continue to put the pressure onto the remaining members of Bestia? Bestia are going for the revives. I think the timing is going to favor them, as well as the help from the smoke. Pippa immediately steps up to deal some covering fire to allow the teammates to either finish their revives or finish their HP. Mime and RDS fighting each other out. Mime is actually swinging out of the blue to try and get a new angle. What a huge play. Immediately countered, immediately taken out. But still, that's two points because of the placement along with the kill. And RDS was only able to get one. So still, great play there from Mime. And that is what the experience that Mime brings. Knowing that he had to take that fight. Realizing that it would be his last act of map two. Future and Press Bestia F. still fighting. <laughs> Future Shap will get taken down, and well, that's pretty quickly. Sharp Shot deals with them all. Bestia up to five kills in the blink of an eye. Three way, four v four v three, and Legacy just haven't had to move in all this yeah. time. It's it's been easy for them.
yeah, they stole this from Future and they've just been chilling. I'm curious what their kill points look like. It's probably on the lower end of things. But at the moment for Bestia, I don't know if they have that many smokes left. They've already used quite a few of them in the previous fight. At this point, it's sort of just, you know, who's Sophie's choice? Who are we going to get the kills to? Legacy or Sonics? Well, the first one will be attempted to be gathered here by Legacy as LFP is able to find the knock. And you got to be pretty careful too, because Sonics are the type of team that if they think you're fully focused on another fight, they will take advantage of it. And I think Bestia, yeah, they're content to just sit inside the blue. They're not going to get too many more DraftKings falls as well. Yeah, they're it's, it's tough for them. Look, it's all they could do. They got their five points. They got at least third place secured at the end. Yeah. That zone shift, it's just going to delay the last fight as well, Cammy, because both buildings still inside the circle. It's really, if anyone can get a knock, but then between Sonics and Legacy, but then there's the question of, can, how does the other team capitalize upon it? It's still having to hard push a, a building. We know where this game is going to end. It's going to be in the middle of the road. And the one thing that Legacy have going for them is that with the angle of LFP, they potentially have a crossfire setup, whereas all four members of Sonics are in one singular building. And I think Legacy are also a little closer towards the center than Sonics are. Ooh, Sharks are going down to Kickstart. That's a really good grab. Because, again, Bestia are trying to deny these points. They're going to go for the revive to make sure the points go to the blue and not to their opposing teams. But still, I think right Kickstart call. might be looking to find another angle, but just can't give that angle to Legacy while doing so. Yeah, it's the right call. Like, it's exactly what you got to do in this scenario. Two seconds now, the blue zone will begin closing. But, Cammy, the big thing that we didn't even mention... There we go, Shrimsy does Ooh. get an ox, so Sonics will get at least one kill off the back of this. But because Sonics and Legacy have taken these compounds, they should have plenty of utility as well. They should have smokes, they should have mollies and nades. They, they should have enough there to at least get yeah. closer to the center of the circle. Yeah, I imagine Legacy have more than the Sonics do because Sonics, you know, it took them a while. They were in a couple of different fights leading up to this point. But it's still, yeah, it shouldn't be a drought on either end of things. We're already seeing smokes come out. I think Legacy are trying to be proactive on this. They understand that they actually have the disadvantage despite their positioning. All four members of Sonic still being up is a huge advantage. Not to mention the vehicles. I completely forgot to, to consider the vehicles. Legacy have none of those because they e-pick up into this position. I always like to say it, mobility is one ability, particularly in the late game, and Sonics have everything they possibly need. Shrimsy, moving on the edge of the circle. If anything, you could argue that the high ground is doing Legacy more harm than good now because Sonics actually have hard cover that they can use to peek from on the edge of this angle. But there is the beginning of that utility dump, Kami, and Sonics are, you just know they're talking about what the next move is. RBN with a nice little sneaky angle, potentially trying to catch Sonics off guard. At this point, it's, I mean, again, talk about pressure cooker. It's all about playing to the end game and for the whole thing to explode. Sonics running across the road. RBN doesn't have an angle to catch that, giving the fight directly to Legacy's front door. This is a ballsy move from Sonics, and I love it. They're bringing the fight to Legacy. Playing and the aggression, yeah, exactly. You've got the numbers. Why not do it? Clearing out the building, clearing out as much of that god compound as possible, Kami. And the blue zone is going to do them with a world of favors because that'll force Legacy this way. Good grenades coming out, but even better mollies to limit the access of those high ground angles of Gizera. Trimsy taken very low, and that's a sick grenade from RBN. Suddenly the tables have turned. Two versus three now. Tig with his back to the blue. He's going to step up. Tig's going to get taken down. And Sonic's ball. Legacy get the win. Five kills. 15 points. But I am going to bring you back, Kami, to what they said during that video at the start. He, RBN, is not telling his team to go crazy for kills. He wants good communication, right. good team play. And they used that perfectly to get the win at the end. They did really good utility usage. It was I, that final fight. I still believe would is on a knife's edge. You mm -hmm. never know what's really how it's gonna fall. If you play that one through, I think it's gonna be 50-50. But that's it from us here in uh, Miramar on game number two. We go to Tego next, but before that, we are going to be going uh, to the desk as they break down that previous game. Legacy just dropping nades right on top of Sonic's. Gotta be curious right now if Sonics are trying to figure out how nades taste, man. That was, <laughs> that was a disgusting nade coming out from Legacy, obviously completely shifting that whole fight in their favor as we see Seifu say goodbye. And the Bizzler, I mean, I think a BRDM was needed there in order to lock <laughs> him because he ate that buggy Boro, but he was still, he was still rocking, man. 
He did. Like, I mean, you gotta, you gotta have guts to sit there with with five HP and just continue to spray down with the bullet hose. Right he got a knock. <laughs> Yeah, he did. He did. And, you know, another hero play here from Mime oh, yeah. as uh, Falcons, you know, kind of ended up in a, in a little bit of a, a wonky situation there at the end. But he still managed to collect a bunch of points before going out of that, uh, unfortunately, time grenade. And look, you got to do what there. you got to do. Best you just, yeah. There wasn't yeah, enough smoke away. grenades in that lobby to get them across. No, <laughs> they were definitely going down, but that massive nade is what completely shifted this fight. And I will say the cross timing on Sonic's part was was immaculate. It was perfect. They got all their members yeah. across, but that nade just ruined their game. And so Legacy will have you know a modest five point uh, or five kill game, but that turns into a first place fifteen points. That e pick up in the beginning was was amazing. It's crucial. It's huge. Yeah, I love the mindset of pushing across and you know trying to get aggressive with Legacy and their positioning. As you were mentioning, Bestia in third place off of that. Just what else are you gonna do? Big shout out to I think it was Shrimsy that got that side flank to at least pick up a kill <laughs> out of it. Uh, Falcons and Luna Galaxy. Let's give them a shout out for managing to climb up in the leaderboard right now. Shoot to kill who had themselves a pretty decent round before this one, also in our top eight. So let's go ahead and take a look at the overall standings. See how we're sitting after two games. And that is going to be Legacy in first place at 22, right on their heels, Gas Cans 21, then drop down and shoot to kill, 17. Sonics, Falcons, the Spam, Luna Galaxy, and Old Guard. You gotta do what you gotta do what you gotta do, Legacy. If you if you're in a good position uh to get points, you get a little circle favor, you gotta make the most of it. And through two games, they've gotten a little bit of circle luck, but they have made the most of it. Uh 22 points for first place. We'll see if that luck continues though, Godspeed, because uh nine kill points, a little on the low side for a team that uh that good. Maybe yeah. not bad. It's not that bad, I guess. It's I'm, just I'm, I'm it's pretty. just two games, right? But ultimately the finding consistency is good for them as well the, the fact that they were able to have a, a an okay game one you know they came in and won game two off of that e but again they did lose one early but the fact that they held that compound yes they didn't get a lot of kills there weren't very many weren't many game. available yeah. to them as they were sitting in the compound but yeah closing it out against sonics a full four that was uh, really good on legacy spark so Poro, you've got an insight that we're going to be looking into with Mercy. I know Mercy, we were talking a lot going into this oh. one. Ooh. I haven't had the best two Miramar games to start, though. I mean, it started off fairly okay, right? I mean, uh, the, 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 the way you said we that were automatically kind of, defeats it. <laughs> it was all right. Well, okay. They, they, you know, I, I don't know what we we're expecting for Mercy at this point. Like, is it is it if they have less than ten kills in a game, we're just like, oh man, they fail. Yes. Like, no, I mean, like it's it was a, it was a slow game. Just that that was how it played out, right? They drop in Puerto, the circle goes uh, hard southeast, and they just play from the south side. There's nobody anywhere near them for a while. They end up over in the par uh, in the resort. Now this is where it started getting a little bit wonky on that C4 shift, it pulls away from them. They send three on uh, on foot to make their way into the circle, but they send Seifu by himself to go do a little scouting. The scouting, he may, maybe it worked. He got to see a lot of bullets coming at him and uh, ended up too. dying there to fix it. But uh, so, so from that point on, Mercy down to three, they're holding on to the south side. They, they get a little bit of fortune here with the hard Eastern shift. Uh, again, nobody going anywhere near him, but once it goes away from him, 55 eventually had to pull over there. They, they took a little bit of a long time making a decision about how to get into that next zone once that C5 came in. And as a result, they end up getting taken advantage of here by 55. Came down to PWD. Uh, they go out, I think, in 10th place with zero kills altogether. But uh, you know what? It, it, again, Mercy, it's the first two games. Any team, really, it's the first two games. We're not expecting uh, to light the world on fire, especially not in a grand final lobby. We still got a lot of games left to play. Mm -hmm. And even to bounce off that, I mean, just something to talk about the circle. That circle was really rough to play. It kind yeah. of centered up on that plateau just south of Leon's, which is notoriously difficult to play on foot, especially if there's already teams <laughs> up there on Leon's, especially if there's already teams up there, right? And then we had Falcons actually holding the next ridge against teams like STK, AKA. So it became quite precarious to traverse that terrain. Yeah, that Western, that Western side of the circle yeah. was, it was rough bonkers that's where the fun was that's where the, that's where like i like to watch because man if you guys were watching the map stream it was absolutely crazy over there very mean circle very hard to deal with but you know what's not hard to deal with it's very very simple that? you just press follow if you follow on twitch right now you get free emotes Ooh. free just by clicking a button Spam. why not do it tell your friends if they like 
emotes have them come by pick up free emotes man easy peasy we want to just make sure that everybody gets a chance and gets a reminder that that's going to be going on but we want to go ahead and remind you guys that we are now done with Miramar and we are going to be making our way over into Tago, the Kindy, and then going to finish out the day on Erangel. We're going to take a quick break to get everything set up for the next match. We'll see you in just a sec. Winning a chicken dinner is tough. It demands more than skill, and luck too. Yet, you didn't quit. Your persistence always crafted luck. PUBG seven years thrived on your countless lucky moments. Thank you for not giving up. Here's to our lucky years. PUBG Battlegrounds, seventh anniversary. My favorite skin song I got the level 3 helmet made by Yusuf. He won the skin contest. And then the Tiger Car 98 Kill Feed skin. Eh, mi skin favorita del M4 con croma de Halloween. Y mi casco 3 que no sé qué es, pero parece un mono y está muy bueno. Even there. Nice, good three. shit. Flashing. Car driving away. Pull a car and pull a car, pull a car, pull a car. Yeah, uh, Wait, can one of you lead right now and you drive it? It's everything from his spot. I think you dedicate to watch this cross, Lilo. Okay. Mercy, Mercy and E pick. Mercy E pick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just died. Okay, no, no, no. Wait, no, three LOS. He jumped off. Down. Jumped off. Don't shoot him. He didn't see us. Push up, push up, push up. Double spray. Cars. Double spray. I'm double spray. He's getting in his car. He's getting in his car. He's waiting for a teammate to get in his car with you. Get LOS. Yeah, wait, 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 wait. He's waiting, he's waiting. Buggy? Are you driving in so You gotta kill Buggy. You gotta kill Buggy. I'm not second Buggy. Don't get knocked. Nice, nice. nice. You active, get these juices. We got another one ran into long. Right, right, right. All right, we, we gotta win buggy. this fight. Buggy's gone. That Buggy's gone. Yeah, the first one. We okay. gotta win this fight and get these points. Where's the other one? Multiple? Okay. You need to clear? Wait till they, wait till in they the come to the door. Wait till they come to the door. can't move. Just give comes. I'm not peeking. I'm not peeking the main door. One more. Nice. Well, nice. Good shit, boys. No one is watching Falcons as well. They are driving. Running up for Falcon. Falcons by nice. Another one. Falcons are go. cutting in south. Cutting southwest. Pull my pull orange. Good. Molly. Another one got another knocked. Another one driving out. Last one in car. Last one in car. No, two, two, guys two, two guys in car. Not going. Nice, Halo. Good by shit, Halo. Worry about rats. They're going to overpeak you now. Yep. I'm betting. I think they're down one. Oops. They're down one. Nice spoon. Two up. Maybe one. Welcome back in the PAS everyone, it is time for a change of scenery. The two Miramars are down, Kami, and mm -hmm. things are about to change up quite a bit. Right, uh, not only are we going away from, what, Miramar is the largest map, and going into, I don't know measurement-wise if Tego is the smallest map, but it really feels like the smallest, because just the way that that map plays out, you need to be ready for a fight the second you start moving the, the ability to scout on this map is very difficult the terrain is difficult to avoid third parties so <laughs> i hope these teams are you know they, they got their 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 land legs uh, below them now because once you're in tega you got to be ready to, to scrap you don't have the luxury that miramar gives you of having a full sometimes two zones without having to run into an opposing team it feels like it's a couple of different maps pushed into one but you know, I'm, I'm going to do a very toffee style line. It takes two to Tago, but it takes 64. It takes two to Tango. It takes 64 to Tago, Kami, as we move it. in. 
I bottled, I fumbled the bag. I'm away home, guys. Thank you for watching. Cammy's taking it from here. <laughs> whoa, 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 wait a second. Wait, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Yeah, you're solo. You're, you'll be fine. You're a pro. Oh, God, no. <laughs> oh, not like, not like this. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, though, but Cammy. Flight Path is probably the most player-friendly one we've had right. tonight so far. I think they would like it maybe a little bit more diagonal, but it's pretty good because nearly everybody's primary drop spots are grabbable. Yeah, no, this is this is a fairly fair Flight Path. is as fair as you can r really want to hope for and really want to expect. I'm still looking around this middle section to see if anyone drops on each other. There was going to be some testing of that, at least in the scrims leading up to this point, but it seems that everything has been established now. I am seeing Vinny go off a little bit on their lonesome away from uh, Luna Galaxy, potentially, to, probably, not potentially, definitely to grab vehicles away from Sonics. But again, it's all about waiting for Phase 1. Yeah, that Phase 1 shift. I had the joys of talking to Sonics about it, and they were talking about this particular style of shift, and they basically told me, Cammy, that whether or not there's a team on the road north of Terminal determines their next step. Because they right. know that Luna Galaxy are there, they said that they will probably rotate further up on that eastern coast and take that other bridge because where Luna Galaxy are locks off those two bridges directly north of them. What's tricky, speaking of bridges, what is tricky about this specific northern circle is that the you know what let's get to, let's get to that in a second because we do have another video where we ask the teams actually about this a very similar conversation what's the hardest part of tago uh the, the hardest part about tago is the late games the, the the grass and the bushes are very thick and high and it's very easy to hide in so trying to clear out space can get tedious in the end game for sure for me i personally think it's a foliage and all the bushes and trees it's a super dense map it's hard to see things but uh, it's also an advantage. Uh, you can play through bushes and trees and uh, be a rat whenever you want to. You know, I think the hardest thing about playing on Tego, crossing that North Island if you're not already on it, you know? If you gotta cross that North Island and try and get you a good spot there, it's gonna mess you up bad. Mess you right. up bad? Oh. Yeah, no, that's that's exactly that's exactly what I was going to talk about is crossing the bridges. And with this specific circle on the north side, it's just enough of the south of the bridges to be in play that teams like Spam, like Rats, don't actually need to move that far away from the coast to be in what we call a priority position. So I think there's a pretty high likelihood of a bridge camp coming into play. And like Luna, they're moving very fast to get in front of that threat. It's that rat race to try to get into the map as quick as possible because you do not want to get camped out on your way in. But, you know, one of the things that we always talk about is how skins equals wins. Do on... we? Yeah, skins equals I mean, yes, wins. We do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we do. Yeah, skins equals wins. And the best way that you can uh, help it out with skins is to support our global partner teams. The first volume of those skins will begin going on sale on April 9th and April 18th on console. Kami, which of those teams do you think you would uh, you would like to check up on most? Which of those skins do you think you'd be gra grabbing if you were grabbing any? All of them. What do you mean? All the skins, exactly. Yeah. That's the right answer. I was testing you. I was testing you. Please. You got to wake up earlier in the day to get one over on me, which you do, being in, in Europe, but, you know, even earlier than that. Well, it is, it is technically early right now. It's 1.20 a.m. where I'm at in the world. For our pure produ production team, it's a little bit earlier. Again, Sonics, we spoke about them moving out of Terminal. They've scouted out. They've noticed that that North Road team have already moved, which should give them a bit of an easier access into the circle. But 1,900 damage from them so far. Seven kills on the board. Map two, they came second, but it was certainly a better second map than the first one for them. All right, I'm just, again, I'm worried about this cross. They saw Luna Galaxy go ahead of them, which is why I think they're taking this bridge compared to going further east on it. But shots immediately coming out uh, from fakes in. But... I don't think Luna Ga Galaxy are full committing to this one. Their sort of dance with spam puts them in a tricky position. If Unless they get instant knocks on Sonics on this bridge camp, they would be potentially inviting a crash from the Sonics onto their position, and who knows how spam would respond to that. And here is a pull-up. Bexon seems uh, like he's ready to abandon this position, and again, this is the right decision to make. So often in, you know, in other stages of this tournament, maybe in scrims, you'll see Fex and stay and go for the fight. But when you get to the real section of the tournament, which is the grand finals, you fall back. You don't risk a single player. There's no room for ego in the grand finals if you want to qualify. And you know what? Neither team picked up any points. Neither team did any damage. I think it's no harm, no foul. 
It's all about really trying to find that space and really tease things out and sort of inch your way forward. The rate that these teams have already gotten into the zone, these ones that were already essentially in the safe zone or just outside of it, gives them the luxury and the opportunity to sort of make it slow and methodical. It's the teams that are further out of this, like gas cans and future, that are going to have to make the ambitious sense here. But Falcons now, we just saw them previously sort of thread between Mercy and Rats. They're in a really central position at this point. But again, talking about what the teams have said about this map, the foliage cover, you never actually can be 100% confident on where the threat is going to pop up. And I'm looking at AKA's position. They've got the drops. This is the thing about those Tago drops. Everybody should be really well kitted out after this. There should be multiple level 2 helmets and vests. You can see LIP's got himself the Groza in his hands once more. It's probably my favorite AR to use inside the game. Kami, what's, what's yours? What's your favorite crate weapon? And you're not allowed to say P90 because that's cheating. P90 is cheating. P90 is uh, broken. It's overpowered. It's an instant game winner. No, my the crate weapon is MG3, obviously. I mean, LMG is always going to have a, a soft spot in my heart, no matter how good or bad they might be. Other than that, the Groza, really just any of the 7.6s, honestly. The Fromas, I actually just leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not good enough for it. I'm not good enough for it. I'm going to start shooting and half a second later I'm pointing at the sky. Yeah, well, I think the worst part of it is the fact that half a second later your whole clip is empty and you got right? to reload again, which is uh, more of a problem for people of our very high skill level, but not quite pro. Remember that, because as casters, we're, we're naturally very talented. We're great at the game. We look good, but we leave the playing for the pros because they're just that little bit better. Yeah, we can't have everything, you know. <laughs> we could have been pro, 100%. Ask anyone on the desk. We absolutely could have been pro. Even guys. I'd have, be, have been a pro player 100% if it wasn't for that dodgy aim. Oh. <laughs> I sprained my wrist and then, when I was 12 years old and it just hasn't felt the same since. Yeah, yeah. It's just not the same. But I had, I had the mouse. My, I changed my mouse and I've just never had that relationship with one ever since. But you know what? I do got to say this. The skill level at the highest level is incredible, Cammy. We spoke about it a little bit earlier when we talked about dead players having an impact in the game. But the amount of information that these guys are processing over the course of one game, Cammy, like, it would boggle your mind at how much they're, they're pro as I said, processing during every single map. Right. The, the speed of not just processing the movement that they need to go, but also in the fights. Look at clips of any of these pro players streaming. They're just flicking from one player to the next. It's absolutely insane. I mean, but, you know, oh, any no. competition, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's like esports, which is something in between, it's going to be freaks of nature that come out on top here. But 55 oh. esports, Lopez trying to rotate away from this. Looks like they actually spot out rats. And oh, rats spot them as well. Grant Lantis with a nice knock going for the instant confirm there. The sad thing about that is... There's two things. Rats lived up to their name. And even sadder was the fact that Lopez, he realized that there was people there at the last second. He was like, no, this looks this looks mm. too good to be true. I smell and he cheese. Was, I'm out. Yeah. <laughs> and he was picked up. Oh, I, I feel bad for him. But these are the things that are going to happen on a map like this. Kami inside a go dark. We've already seen 55 with a bit of a split on the edge. I actually like the split that they have in this position in the zone. And SSG are playing King of the Hill right now as well. Even getting some players on these high ground rocks, a la Miramar-esque. So they should have some good angles to uh, make sure that they can catch anyone rotating up next to them. There's a little bit of clearance here of the foliage right in front of them. But I don't know if, I don't think anyone's going to be pushing them. Again, all these teams around the central area are just slowly making their way forward. I wonder if, listen, we got 35 seconds left. If this, if we get a northern hard shift on phase two, it's going to be very similar to that first Miramar map where suddenly the north half of it is so wide open. Gascan's also rotating in. They're on the west side just outside of a fishing camp and they're so worried about potential bridge camps they're going to be eating the blue and going in all the way on the far west bridge blue number one is very low damage very low impact so this is definitely the smart choice to make when you're coming in as late as the gas cans are oh it definitely is and they're, they're going under the assumption that the teams that dropped a little earlier would have already made their way into the circle from this side too so it's the right decision to make the zone shift's not the worst for them either as they should right. be able to continue rotating up the west, Kami. But SSG are the team that I'll look for moving early here because they've got full control of the north and they've got the, their pick of where they want to go with this phase. Yeah, it's just a choice on do you do you try and hold sort of like natural terrain and try and go for some of these like smaller compounds scattered around the north side. Falcons trying to 
Looks like they're sending some shots out on the minimap. It could just be in preparation for a potential crash coming in from Luna Galaxy or Sonics, who are both coming in from the southeast side. But OG, Bestia, Future, there's a lot of teams all rotating in on the south end. I mean, there's room to wrap around, but we could still see some early game action, how close some of these teams have been able to get to each other. Little death race going on between Sonics and Luna Galaxy, and Sonics will just pull up. They'll play the open field, and I love this field because... These tarps that you see are bulletproof, which means that they've got so much cover, even though they're in the open. But Luna Galaxy, they're getting really close to Old Guard, and they're going to pull up Kami. And this fight, I, do they know Old Guard are right behind them? No, they do. <laughs> no, they do now. Have to suddenly turn around. Vinny spots it. Suddenly pulls out a grenade. They can't really extradite themselves from this fight. They just have to full commit and hope that they can get the knocks. Then a tossing utility here. Gwyn is moving closer to that car as it gives him a little bit more cover than the trees. But he needs the rest of Old Guard to support him in this fight. You can see Old Guard kind of falling a little bit further back to get in a position that might suit them better inside this fight. But we were expecting fireworks and then nothing really happened except for Kai Shen going closer to Sonics. Oh, another drive-by comes through. SDK with a nice little compound. This is actually not even in phase one. This is south of the river, trying to catch a rotate. See if they can't grab a kill or two. In the meantime, Legacy are able to avoid it for now, but it has separated a couple of their forces from each other. Oh, this is dangerous. This is looking really scary for them all of a sudden. Oh, Kurt will be disappointed that he didn't get a knock on the Legacy, but does force them further into the blue. Sparking won't make the same mistake, though, as LFP will fall and I know that all the Brazilian fans in chat love that. He is a huge following. And that's you know that's gotta feel good for SDK, right? Their fan base doubled or tripled whenever Sparking right. came in. It was great for them. Yeah, they're international now. <laughs> we call Kurt Mr. Worldwide. Do we? No, I said should we? No, oh, should we? we? Well, yeah. I mean Adam's the bald one on gas cans. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you, you convinced Kurt to shave his head. Oh, by all means, you have my co-sign on that. So that's what we're judging it on. Not, not how many countries they've been in, just whether they're bald or not. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, so Sparky would be Mr. Worldwide then because he's played in so many different countries. Brazil, North America, back to Brazil, back to North, back to North America, even subbing in in Europe. You know what? It's okay. I'll take your logic. I'll agree with it. <laughs> Adam, we're sparking. There we go. Phase two. We're about 15 seconds away by the time I finish talking from it popping Kami. And this is a big one, I think, for a lot of these teams on the south. Because if this moves far to the north, we'll have yeah. another scenario with tons of teams trying to force their way in. Yeah, there's so much space on the north side. And I think it's just because rotations through that Mount SSG mountain has been a little difficult, a little tricky, but it is going to go towards the east. SSG, Falcons, AKA also looking good. And there are a lot of teams on the south that are in the safe zone, but with this shift, there's a little bit of pressure to try and get a better position towards the middle, as well as you gotta wait for future. 55, Mercy, and maybe even Peach how to also come in from that trajectory. Those teams don't have the luxury of being able to wrap up the east or the west side. It's actually been such a quiet game when you think about it. 14 minutes in, two players down. It should get a little bit more active on the south. OG still living right next door to Luna Galaxy as we start to get that barrage Ooh. of nades. And Necro will hit Pater with a final one as Haven will fall. That's advantage OG as they begin pushing up now towards Kraken. Kill Demo. Saw something didn't like. Takes so much damage for Kraken. But what a perfect bit of utility to have. That med kit will get him back up to 100. But the rest of Luna Galaxy have pulled up. Yeah, I think that was a missed opportunity to go and try and really go for the death kill of Luna Galaxy. They did stall things out to get some HP, but with the pressure uh, from the south of Future and 55, OG might not have the luxury of being able to commit to this fight without third-party threat. Yeah, Luna Galaxy, they need to buy a little bit of time to get this res off, and I think they might have just done it as Fixin will dip around the corner. Sharp Shot's been knocked on the other side of the circle here as well, and a fight with Bestia as the Gas Cans Vox will pull up pretty close by as well. Draft King is moving further forward towards Sharp. He needs Silzen to be that covering fire, but Gas Cans are trying to flood this one out with another big utility dump. They're not committing though, because they gotta get into the zone. 
Unless they have a plan to go for the instant one and done finish on the entirety of Bestia, I think Gascans might be looking to find a way out of this fight, maybe into the zone. Either that or Adam's going for a wide flank here, keeping the pressure on Bestia. It looks like Sharpshot is not going to get picked back up, bleeding out way too fast. And yeah, it looks like both teams are just running away from this one. Yeah, and I think uh, with the blue zone coming in, the fight being potentially there, they'll move on. But Legacy are going to pull right in your... Felzen, don't you dare. <laughs> it, it, I saw it. I saw it. He didn't pull it off. But still, these players will go side by side into the circle. That would have been a clip. If he pulled that off, that was a clip. But they're running right into future. It's Pago, you gotta be ready to fight! You gotta be ready to fight, Future are spraying things down. Lunagatsky are eliminated in the kill feed. A lot of damage actually coming out from Falcons on that one, but Gizera is rolling on up, trying to go for the drive-by, lands the headshot, that is Shap 2K down. Gizera has that in the back pocket, he picks up the kill on the Shap, and now Sam Crow, he's thinking about throwing an aid this way, but Gizera will cover the fight the other side. Spray from Sam Crow, but as you see, none of those bullets are hitting their target. As things stand, Gizera will smoke off VHC as he t attempts to get the res off, and Psycho from 55 will find the angle on the Sam Crow. Future being eliminated in 14th place. Next circle has still gone towards the east, still given priority to the Falcons, and everyone else is going to have to just fight over scraps. They're all hanging out on the edge, a hair's breadth away from each other. 14 teams alive. I think we're going to lose at least one whole team on this next blue zone close, if not more than that. Yeah, I think one team is maybe even a... Oh, well, it's a bit of a conservative guess, I'll, I'll admit. Yeah, Sonics have just been given a gift. Uh, not only does the drop land but near them, it lands in the field that's got tons of cover for them to pick up these goodies. So if you're a Sonics fan, oh yeah, just give H1 a P90 as well. Why not? Sonics, I they're loving this. And that'll really help them because we all know that they're, it, it, they like to play on the edge and looking at the map and knowing what we know, there's going to be a lot of fights on the southern edge pretty soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. No one's making any wide wrapping rotations, potentially Peach out now, but they're going to be running directly into Gaskins. This could stall out their rotate. Depends on if Gaskins want to drive by or not. I think they're going to be avoiding each other. But seeing Peach out go towards the north, Gaskins might be wondering why are they heading that direction. And with the damage on to Bizzler... Oh, it makes this approach even more precarious now. Getting flashbacks to the last map where SSG got held out by Sonics. SSG might do the same to Pichao on the northern edge of the circle. Gascans have just sent a full send right through the middle of Bestia. And they've only started taking damage now. Penta does fall. DraftKing picking up that knock. Nanu will get one on the Glock a little bit further away. But Vox gets himself a bit of cover to toss that smoke grenade. But... For gas cans, this ain't looking good, Chief. It ain't looking good. You got Falcons on one side, Bestia on the other. And Bestia know that Richie B's alone. Yeah, but here Sonics with that hit, with all those great weapons, multiple P90s, because they didn't have any other advantage in this fight, I guess. Multiple members of Mercy are taken down. Seifu's gonna try and go for a revive on PWD, and those smokes are coming out into play. Rats getting involved in the fight as well, collapsing on the opposite side of Mercy. Oh. Drive by spray down comes through, but oh, that, that's the Sonics. That's the Sonics, not exactly what Gats was hoping to see. Rats are eliminated. Blue zones there as well. That'll be a problem. H1 holding down Mercy with the P90. This is what you would call an unwinnable position. And that is Mercy eliminated. DraftKing and some teammates will pull up. That's the end of Vox as well for gas cans. That one was definitely a, uh, a very you know, conservative estimate as we've lost multiple teams on the edge. And Old right. Guard might be about to fall as well as Sonics start to push P. I did, once I said one team, I did kind of regret being a coward and not going for more than that. But Sonics are still in the middle of multiple fights, still trying to take all these kills. Trimsy can't, oh, just barely goes for the confirm, but still immediately goes out to Kaishin. It's all done to h in the blink of an eye. They had such a good position, but the timing of the blue zone is really punishing them now. h didn't get that first aid kit off. Oh, no. What happened? Oh, he that is unfortunate. He had like 95% of that pulled off and he just he just stopped and dipped into cover. Psycho is still in the blue, but here come AKA is Nanu. Here old guard rotating and thinking this is the perfect time to strike them. But Psycho, the snake in the Kami, I want Psycho to get at least one or two kills. I, I love it when someone sneaks in, but he's got one player behind him. Yeah, these arrows on the prowl from the north, but Nanu focused on the rotate from OG. Kaishin getting away from this one. 
But that's still four kills for AKA so far. Three on LIP. And Psycho getting pushed now. And I don't know. Yep, they know he's there. It's actually LIP using the arm from really close distance, picking up that kill. Confirm eight teams left alive. Make it seven as Snakers will find Kai Shen. And as it stands now, we have got Falcons, STK, Bestia, Spam, AKA, SSG, and Pichao looking to win this fight. But as you see in the minimap, Falcons have such a good 2-2 split right now. Right. It's looking really good for Falcons. Not only that, they also already have seven kills. So if they can confirm even top four, you know, also, if they can, the chicken dinner for the win, that is a huge points grab for them. But Peach out here, avoiding a lot of fights, just trying to find good positioning here. And Ontego, with the chaos that you see, can't blame them. But Waikas opens up, gets a knock on a DraftKing. Yeah, we'll attempt to confirm that one out. AKA rotating past as well. Pichau just picking and choosing their battles for now. You can see SSG not too far away. They'll be very conscious of any ability to pick up a third party. And that's what they do. Page stealing that point away as he grabs Draft King and AKA get just this little ridge line. And this is, I think, is this where we saw, this is where we saw gas cans fall earlier, right? Pretty much the same spot. Right. More or less. Granted, we don't have Bestia overlooking this angle like they did before, nor do they have the rage of trying to go for revenge like they did on gas cans. That's a great blue zone no need towards BL. Look at the damage he's taking, and that's a better need from Louise as down goes BL. AKA doing a ton of damage, but there's Falcons now. Flood pushing out, and this is the third party problem that you have on a map like Tego on a hill like this, as all these teams scramble to get everybody back on their feet. Third party problem, new show coming to Netflix later this year. I'm, I'd watch it. <laughs> that name would grab me straight away, right? Yeah. Anyway, AKA now. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> AKA, they, listen, they've, they've been holding point. They've been really controlling this area. Pichao took a couple of licks because people did have that Panzer kill as the last one up for Bestia. Uh, at least the Panzer knock, able to get a couple of kills. There's only two members of Pichao left standing, but they are finding position, establishment in the zone. Alo, SDK, still trying to wake up, still trying to get alive. Two kills for them, but they have all four up. Iraq down, spam now with two players left alive as STK pick up a kill. Two teams inside the top four still alive and well, but it is way too early to begin talking about that top four. This is just map three of 18. STK need to push their way into the circle. Spam do too. And Falcons are still holding this really greedy 2-2 oh. split. And Mime's out in the open and he oh. just about gets in cover. What HP? Shoot to kill Saul, though, all those hits that were landed and were, uh, you know, they're not happy with that inability to get a knock. The shift continues to favor Falcons in this push, but SDK could rep towards the east, but they will be going directly into spam. It'll be a four versus two, but do they know of spam's position? They have to, right? They got a, they got a kill confirmed onto one a little earlier, but the way they're moving would tell you that maybe they're not just so sure. And they could really get caught out here as they run towards SSG in the north. Yakuz will get that knock on to Nanu now. Oh. To, oh my god, what a need that was. He gets himself a double dip off the back of that one. And AKA with just one player up and he's looking to get that res off. Can only revive one member. Suddenly AKA are down to even forces with Pichow. And they still need to make their way into the zone. Brissa goes out to the blue. Was that a point deny? Very early for that. Very he, early if that's the case. Did he take some damage and then the blue knocked him? I think maybe that oh, was possible. what happened. That's possible, yeah. yeah. We didn't we didn't get an ISC, uh, get a proper line of sight. More utility getting dumped from Pichao down towards where AKA are playing. But you know that old adage between a rock and a hard place? You've got Pichao on your north, and as yeah. you move towards the circle, Falcons, you can see that Rello is just keeping an eye on everything that's going Whoa. on. And now you have SSG as well. It's like, hmm... You guys can't fight this this late into the game without us seeing it. SSG playing in from high ground all the way on the north side. They only have two kills, but again, similar to Falcons. They could clean up a lot of this from this position. It's about not getting greedy, but still looking for how far you can really push the envelope and get those points because SSG and currently in 14th place, they desperately need them. Yeah, RDS might just be able to go prone in this little dip just in front of him and stay alive for a little bit longer for spam. Any you know, any respite he can find at all is good for now. It's just 
can he get any more placement points off the back Whoa. of this one? Wait, wait, wait look pixel. what pixel is. Yeah, what, how did oh, he get like there? Like I said, really pushing the envelope on trying to get these kills. It's why it's why Roth likes Pixel so much, though. This is the type of player he wants. That's a pretty good need. We'll find 35 damage. The blue zone will find a bit more. And yeah, Pixel, that is beautiful from the European as he picks up those kills. And look at now STK are pushing up to the rest of SSG. Yeah, I think Pixel now, especially with, with um, Pichao removed, is in such a cru critical, crucial position. But SDK, wrapping on the north side, will have an advantage if this isn't in the line of sight of Pixel's angle. So they could have a good shot on winning this one if they force their way through, force Roth away from the high ground. But counter grenades coming out, SDK seem to have expected it, as well as, of course, the blue about to push in on them. So they're flexing a little further down the south. They aren't able to grab that kill. And now the question is, do they commit to this position that's not even in the zone? I love a penny for SSG's thoughts right now because they Pixel's got a great position in the center of the circle as well. They might want to just regroup and reconsolidate STK with that utility dumper moving back to the zone. And RDS looks like he might just have an eye on these players. A little bit of conversation. Yeah, RDS is having a great time, but the blue zone will move him once more. If he's been tracking, if, if Spam has been tracking the kill feed, tracking as effectively as you would expect a pro team, top level team to be able to do, he should know that SDK, Falcons, SSG are all very, very healthy. So looking for the opportunity to get more than a quick one and done will be very, very tricky. Oh, Pixel's got the angle on to AKA. Nice bit of damage dealt out. IP, come oh, on, one more shot, still? Pixel. Oh. oh, is he still up? Or yes, does spring the trap. And he gets his kill. If he goes down now, at least he got that extra two points because he goes down in fifth instead of sixth. AKA, they have two players up. It's a 4v3v3v2. 3 v 3 v SSG with a bit of a pseudo 2 1 1 split going on right now. SSG are looking really hot. This positioning. Really good angles, really good spread. If they can. Paige's angle could really deal the final blow to AKA. Yep. Lips gone down, and that's gonna be it. Paige has had enough of this. Just gets rid of AKA. Three teams remain SSG, the only team with all four up. They have the best positioning, they have the high ground, they have the crossfires, the angles, the spreads, but you cannot count out either SDK or Falcons. It's that old adage, right? Just because it's a 4v3v3, when you have four, but you've still got two teams up, you're still outnumbered. It's still four versus six yeah. in essence. And when you look at how SSG are playing, They've sent Paige pretty far south, so he's essentially going down to wrap on Falcons moving into this compound, right? Yeah. Really just looking to make sure the Falcons don't rush up the west side, because if Falcons go west, SDK come in from the east, that could be it for SSG. So much about winning games is about understanding the terrain and understanding where the fights and the threats are going to be coming from and making sure that you are not overexposed and trying to take too many fights at the same time. The circle generally centers up as phase eight always does. And again, with Paige not seeing Falcons rush the west side, we're still waiting for them to make their move. I honestly don't know which would be the best option for the Falcons. They got their kills in the mid game. Can they try and confirm at least second place, if not the full on first? Uh, did you just see they switched over the shield as well? Uh, it mm -hmm. was like, you take the shield, not me. Let's not rule that out as we get later into the game. That could have an impact as you create cover out of nothing. But for Falcons, this is a very tricky position to get out of, but a knock changes everything. Always. If Falcons get the initial knock on the SSG, all of a sudden the onus is on them. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I was just waiting. There's no cover in the middle. It's basically wide open central zone. Also, SSG have control of it. So for your Falcons and STK, it's about just coming in with the blue and hoping that you spot your opponent before they spot you. And then, of course, landing the shots. But at this level... Getting the spot, getting the recognition is half the battle. These guys are lucky. It's never as windy in their lobbies as it is in ours. Like, it, there's always mad gusts of wind when I go to shoot. Sparking. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll spot out Falcons as they move in. The loot drop is there. Oh, no. Flood steps into the blue, but he's got the jammer pack, and Rello's got the cover. This is actually not the worst position in the world, and Flood's doing a ton of damage to Sparking. Ooh! That grenade barely misses. I'm surprised Sparking is still kicking. Got the first aid off just in time for the blue as well. It's phase eight. That thing don't mess around anymore. Still a 4v3v3 though, and Rello gets that first knock on to Sparking, and that might make the decision as to where Falcons go. Killing spree now as they get a couple more on the board, and there's Rock. He third parties. Down goes Halo. 
Oh, Roth salivated for that. Wrapped up, took, ag took aggressive maneuvers based off of the situation. And SDK, one member up. But can SSG still hold on to this? They're still in driver's seat for the win, but Flood getting more kills. That's Pixel down. And all of a sudden, the door's open, but it's been shot once more as Roth gets the knock, but there's Paige as well. All of a sudden, Roth's the last alive. It's a 1v1v2 of standing players. I don't think Roth is anywhere close enough to get any reses back on his feet, so SSG's chances of winning this falls on the hands of Luke 12. Oh. He gets the knock. It is a 1v1v1 for the win now. And honestly, Roth just needs to stay alive, but he steps in the open. He falls at the hands of Flood, and it is the two Aussies going at it for the win in this one. Stun comes out, but it's coming out from Luke as well, and Flood makes his way to the next tree up. Unsure if Luke was able to spot that, but now Flood has advantage of positioning with the bloom, but that's a molly. That's going to force Flood away at least a little bit. Thousand damage for Flood, though. He's got Luke 12 in his sights. They were teammates pretty recently for an event, but now they want to lock each other out, but I think Flood's got the benefit of the blue zone. It should force Luke out in just a moment's time. Flood is waiting. Flood is ready. Flood peaks once. Flood peaks twice. And there you go. Falcons take a 25-point game. Huge from them. And honestly, Cammy, did you see Falcons wanting that when they had the push out of that compound? No, absolutely not. They had the low ground. They had the smallest area under their control. But the knocks coming out for Flood were absolutely huge. Well, it was Rello, then Flood, and then Snakers got, I think, one on the tail end there, and then Flood able to finish things out. And listen, it was a really good attempt by both SSG and SGK. Even in that final fight, I think that Luke even called the angle that Flood was going to peek from at the very end there. But again, with the pressure from the blue, Flood had all the control. He did, and they got the win, and that's the Falcons we expected to see. But we've got much smarter minds than us to talk about that last matchup. Let's bring up the replays and bring back in the desk. Much smarter minds? Ooh, much. I don't know about yeah, that one. Know. We'll wait until we get pro know. talking. Uh, I'm, I'm definitely <laughs> not in that category. That was that was a game. <laughs> that was a I game. I argue with Dude. that. Oh, oh yeah. What a, what a crazy end game, too. And, well, the fact that we get... I love, I love it when we get the Northern Isle on Tego, first of all. Like, that's always Agreed. fun. But Agreed. the fact that it just immediately, like, went up to the to the hills, to the north side. It didn't it didn't toy around with it. It didn't play around with it. Like, pretty much everybody knew where it was going the whole time. Uh, it, it, it leads for some really, really entertaining gameplay, as we saw just now. Yeah, and the, the terrain up there is so fun to fight in as well. There's so many pockets, ridges, cover, there's rocks, trees. So it, it it lends these teams to quite a lot of interesting plays. But the amount of bloodshed, Poro, that happened just leading up to this point, teams rotating off that southern island, trying to cross those bridges, not cross the bridge. We saw a few e-pickups, Paige with a disgusting spray. And then Luke 12 as well, keeping SDK alive. But what in the world happened to SSG here? They had it wrapped up. Oh, man. Flood is a monster, like though. Holy he's, crap. He's a beast. It's disgusting. Like, Flood, he's, he's so good. Uh, but, yeah, man, I, I don't... The SSG, it felt like they had that thing wrapped. Like, the whole game, they were holding on to the north side. And, uh, and then towards the end, I mean, they had such a great split covering the high ground. They had everybody... You thought they had it? Uh, like... Yeah. yeah, I mean they had they had STK funneled right into uh, Falcons to where the, those two were gonna have to fight, and then some. I, I I don't know if I'm gonna have to go back and watch, but I don't know if maybe they just didn't have utility, if they didn't have smokes down, if they got too confident. I mean, we saw Paige kind of pushing in and and trying to make sure that he secured a kill and and just get taken out, but. Man, it, it felt like you snapped your fingers and they were down to raw. I yep. mean, it was just Falcon's aim. I mean, 15 kills off that, 25 points altogether. Space Station Gaming only walking away with 7 and 12. I mean, good for them. They were needing some points on that. It's going to push them over into the left side of the leaderboard, now presently in sixth. But Falcon's going to get a bit of a lead now over shoot to kill about 10 points or so, so not the biggest. Legacy Gas Can's going to be right back behind that with Spam, Old Guard, and AKA rounding us out. But... I don't, Falcons, dude, they, they should have lost that, Godspeed. It was just it, like, it, uh, it, it just felt like did. it. Well, they were also stuck behind a lot of the smokes that they had thrown, which was a, a wise decision, right? Hide themselves from both angles from SSG as well as STK. But the fact that Flood was able to fight out of that, I think there was another knock maybe from one of the other members of Falcons. That was just, that was all Flood at the end. I mean, the shots that he was hitting, the angles that he had, and then the quick peeks on the leans, uh, it was just super clean.
Well, I mean, there's a lot to talk about with Falcons, but let's look at the other side of that because, Poro, you're going to walk us through SSG and how they got to that position based off walk of us through. Play. Let's let's do it. Let's walk us through. So, okay, right off the bat, I got to say, huge fan of this SSG. By the three minute mark in the game, look at that, 255, not even three minutes. They've already looted up. They see the circle go north. They're E pick upping and they take it right to army base, completely free. And from this point on, th the entire game, they know that they are the northernmost team. They know that they don't have to worry about anything coming up behind them. They keep eyes on it just to make sure nobody makes any rotations. The circle gives them a little bit of favor, a little bit of love, but eventually they do have to pull away from that real high ground and kind of settle on where they're at now a little bit uh, and as the circles continue to progress they they still nor the most team they hassle spam a little bit from range just to make sure that they don't uh, kind of wrap around on them here you see spam all four up they're going to lose one here to pixel and that's going to be the first kill that ssg gets but that's the first team that ssg sees essentially in this entire game at 22 minutes so now you see four up they've got complete control over that north side they've got the high ground they've got a compound everything they could possibly ever want and, uh, you know, they can to a rise above all this other nonsense. And now you get towards the late game, towards seven and eight. They start stretching out. They start sending Pixel. They start sending Page. Once again, I, I love the fact that Roth has really kind of grown accustomed to relying on getting carried by Europeans. It seems like it's working out really well for him. <laughs> love to see it. Uh, but, you know, Pixel and Page, they were doing a fantastic job of getting out here and just doing what they do best. And that's just being me mechanical monsters. Now, towards the end you can see on the minimap they have the entire circle they have the mid they have everything they have the ridge line they have a couple of kills to start off with they have a few smokes to hide around but then all of a sudden look at that roth is just by himself what happened i, mean, I don't it, even know godspeed i don't came, even know at this point it all came apart it looked like what luke 12 was there godspeed and that's where it, uh, it was but it, it was it was flood and i think it was snakers there in the in the kill feed that actually took care of most of ssg i think it was actually really just flood flood ended up finding an angle all three of those members were fairly close together and i mean through the smoke i, I guess SSG just didn't see the angles again we'd have to watch it from their point of view but that was yeah that was a dismantling i mean from a team that had full <laughs> control to one member in in the blink of an eye and a uh, very, I, mean, I, I, I know too we, right this is a team that yeah, is not um, known for like i guess thinking they've got it and suddenly relaxing for him. Yeah, we, look, we know Roth very well, and Roth is like, you know, it, it, that's one of the reasons why bringing Paige and Pixel on is so good for yeah. them, because Roth tends to like to be hyper aggressive, uh, but I think Pixel and Paige have a little bit more of a measured a, a approach to how they take their aggression, right? So uh, at this at this point in the late game, I think they all decided that they wanted to be hyper aggressive and take advantage of the knocks while they could, but maybe they just, uh, got lost track of where everybody was given how many smokes were, were laid down. So they try to push out and be aggressive, but just instantly they take three knocks and it was a matter of seconds. And so everything just kind of fell apart too so fast. I mean, it's just not a team that normally gets lost in the sauce and adrenaline. So I would, I'm definitely gonna go back and review that the most I can, but we are now done with Tego. We're gonna make our way over to Vikendi. Then we've got two more Aaron Gulls. We're gonna take a quick break. Should just be a few minutes and we will see you guys in just a moment.
right, for round two, we're going to be testing our PUBG Pro's map knowledge of Erangel. The way it works is we're going to show you a picture. You put a pin on your map, and whoever's closest gets three points. Second closest gets two. Furthest away gets one. Easy peasy. Everybody ready to go? Let's jump into the first entry. Why does Derek looks hint? like he knows? No, man. I don't know. <laughs> 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 what the? Oh, my God. What? Ooh, what? The what? There's no oh, way. Wait, no, what? We're sharing a brain cell. <laughs> Sharp? We're sharing a brain cell, bro. No. 17 meters. Get wrecked, Sharp Shot. 17 <laughs> meters. That's funny. Holy. All right. We've got another one of these that we're going to go ahead and show you guys. So let's get ready and load up the next image. Number two. Click on the map and show us where you think it is. Carrick, what, what, he is so into this. He's like, you can see all of the gears turning. He's like, Mike, I, I think I'm so bad at that and go. I was here I, the other day. Okay, so for our round two location, Adam's just barely edging out based off positioning right now. We still got one more to go through though, so let's take a quick look on the next image. Let's see how close you guys can get. Oh, that's an evil smile, Adam. I think you know. <laughs> I, I know. <laughs> I think I know. So let's go ahead and look at where we're going to be going to. And I got to say, Carrick, you knew exactly where this was, Sharp. You missed it by 10 meters. Carrick, you only missed it by one. <laughs> one meter, baby. One meter. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, it's okay, Adam. You were... That's you were... You were here in our hearts, 3,000 meters away. <laughs> <laughs> you got a hot so drop, Adam. Yeah. So with this, uh, Adam managed to be the best at two. Derek managed to pick up the closest with one. And Sharp, you were just second place all the way through this. Just barely every single time. What? It was like 12 meters, uh, 14 meters, 12 meters, and 9 meters separating you. So that's going to go ahead and finish out our round two. We're going to be going into round three in just one second. Next break. See you guys then. I knocked him. Nice. Try to flash dive again. I, I got it. 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 Don't die for it. Nice. We'll okay. play. Okay. Yeah, they didn't care. My bad. Yellow. This guy could have pulled off. Tag. Going to East Wagon. Two in the Two. Yep. Nice. One. I guess other guy All might right. have pulled off Let, Let's reverse okay. our line here, guys. Okay. I saw a pony and a guy standing in red. Bird. I knocked nice the rock shops. guy. There's still a red guy. Can we okay. pull up the rock guy. guy? Yeah, you can just see swap into the red guy. You guys, I'm not like I see now, two. So. There's a guy on yeah, the corner. Okay, like on the tree. Mercy and Sonics, maybe? Mercy's on green. Sonic's down one. Okay. They're not in zone. Sonic lost one there. Sonic's lost one there. Not in zone. One of them is already in the below. Last year one. Knocked, you said? Who is it? Yes. yes. It's them. I am. Can I play now. higher to orange? Can I play to orange? Uh, yes, quite exactly. Open to everything south hey, park. can anyone do waypoint? Is that a threat? Who waypoint? Uh, people can be people can green right I'm boosting real quick. I'm getting roof real quick. So that Hitting now. Hitting again. Welcome back in everyone and we are at the halfway point of the first night of the weekend. Kami, three maps down and up next we've got Vikendi, which in my opinion is my favourite new addition to the game. Yeah, no, I think it's a really fun map. Uh, it has a lot of different unique features to it compared to the, the other ones. Some wildlife, also a lot of panzers, which we've seen a bit. We've seen, listen, listen, 
Bestia specifically, I think they've been using the trunks of the UAZs to hold nothing but Panzerfaust, because we had that one that I think it was Silzen tried to do on a drive-by, which would have been sick. Pippa had one while getting crashed by Pichow, uh, and there's even more of them to go on Vikendi. And hey, look what? at that plane path. I love it. It's taking us from south to north. We'll call that a five o'clock up to around 11, right through, almost through the center of the map. But again, when you get flight paths like this, it's great for all the teams because for the most part, everyone's primary drop spots are in order. But Cami, you've been watching a lot over the last few weeks. Are we expecting any potential points of contestion inside of these Vikendi drops? I mean, there's been hot drops this entire week on all the scrims, but I think it's mostly just to get things figured out before they hit live. I think it was, who was it? Was a flood at the top of the show in the interview section that said that teams don't play scrims the way that they play live, mm -hmm. which is very fair. So I don't expect to see a lot of action early on. However, on Vikendi, it's not uncommon to see teams drop for vehicles against each other and not have that situation particularly sorted out. There are a lot of teams towards the south future ssg and legacy dropping very very early and then of course luna galaxy might be fighting stk for vehicles but we haven't really seen any early game action on miramar or tago i don't expect to see any today here that might change going in the future teams get might get more aggressive as their position on the leaderboard gets more established but phase one still on an off angle northeast sonics looking good for with their drop spot of, of leveni yeah, I'll expect and they can them to even. Do... Yeah, I was gonna say I expect them to do what they do when they normally drop somewhere center in the zone. They'll get looted up nice and quickly and get on the move. But did you see right. Mercy split? Yeah, uh, really wide positioning. In fact, Seifu is taking some shots at a rotating 55. But we do have yet another video ready as we ask the question: What do these players like about Vikendi? Posso ver que pelo fato de ser um mapa novo, então como o Erangel e mirar mais esse mapa são mais antigos, todo mundo conhece muito o terreno. E por fato de Vikendi ser novo, ainda tem muita coisa a ser descoberta competitivamente. Por isso que eu gosto bastante de Vikendi. Vikendi has an abundance of unique terrain and mountains similar to Miramar, just without the predictable zones. Um, seems like every other game we have a, a zone ending somewhere new, which is super fun. Um, aside from getting mauled by a polar bear occasionally every now and then. Uh, Vikendi is overall just a breath of fresh air and a lot of fun to play competitively. A lot of people just don't know how to play the map and we're just like chasing them down, you know, and killing everyone, trying to like get a little chaotic in Vikendi because not a lot of people understanding the map, you know, try to get a lot of kill. So we heard from a bunch of players there, but the player I want to bring up is Rello and the Falcons in general. Last year, they were very good on Vikendi because they openly said they studied this, or Trevor at least studied this map more so than any others into the pool. Do you feel like the rest yeah. of the teams have caught up now or do you think there's still some, uh, some ground to gain? I think they've caught up a little bit. I don't think they've caught up as much as you would expect at this point because one of the big trademarks of this map is that it is not uncommon to see two or even three teams fight over one, one individual compound in the early game, which could be a, a decisive aggressive move but it also could be because these teams don't have any backup plans established just yet but falcons they're on the move right quick coming all the way in from closer towards the west side e pick up into the zone is a really good strategy for them yeah i actually love dropping inside lumber as well and you know they're doing it very early there's a couple of different strategies when it comes to phase one e pickups cami some teams like to go in really early like falcons are doing other like to, others like to line it up so that basically their plane would reach the edge of the phase one circle as it pops to phase two right. at that time. And it really just kind of depends on what the circle's like, right? If you get one like this where a little bit of the zone isn't really enterable, you'll see teams moving be a little earlier. It also has to do with reading the tendencies of the teams around you and just making a guess on like what you think is going to happen and what position, what situation you want to put yourself into. But we have started to see fewer and fewer teams. At least I have. I haven't recognized it as much. I I've seen fewer teams try and nail be in the middle of the air while the zone shifts. I think teams are realizing, you know what, wherever it shifts, we can play off of that. Let's just get into the zone as quickly as possible. Yes, Falcons making their way inside the circle. They had that huge win in the last game, which puts them top of the leaderboard ahead of STK and Legacy. If I had have asked you what the leaderboard would look like going into this one, would you have been 
confident in saying you'd see Legacy in your top three with the, the kill totals and points that they have right now? I mean, I don't know about kill totals and, and points, but yeah, I put Falcons, SDK, and Legacy as the, the top three teams here. Throw Sonic somewhere at the top as well. So this is pretty close to my estimation. Now, will it remain this at the end of this tournament? I don't know. But Falcons, SDK, and Legacy specifically were the three teams that I just had a lot of confidence behind on being able to perform at this level. And the I even tweeted it. You can go back and check the receipts. <laughs> I tweeted it before the first game even started. You've got receipts is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, you've got receipts. We had a little glance there at Seifu and Mercy, and they kind of were the Cinderella story of those last chance qualifiers. We'll pick... You know, we'll pick up on that point in a second. I want to see if uh, Falcons manage to get all boots on the on the ground, and I think they just will. But back on the point about Mercy, right. they've not really got things kick-started so far tonight. And they're a team that play on explosiveness, right? They build momentum, yeah. and they kind of play off the back of it. But they have been slowed down a lot tonight. They have. Um, and one thing that's concerning is how few scrim practices they've actually taken a part of this week. Which I think is, you know, you can they, you can do whatever preparation you want. Bear? Yeah, Luna Galaxy, they're like trying to trap this. They're not they're not trying to kill the polar bear. They're trying to trap it and bring it to a zoo. Oh, I thought they were going to try to you know get it on site, <laughs> tame it, tame that thing and ride it into battle. <laughs> <laughs> Man, imagine if they added that. So listen, we're going to introduce an item off the ground called meat. You have enough meat, you give it to the polar bear. Polar bear become your friend. You give it even more meat, and on and on and on. And suddenly, this is a survival game. I had this conversation with another caster yesterday from another title. And he was telling me bears are not friendshiped. Are bears friendshiped? Of course they are. <laughs> he said no. I want chat to let us know. Are bears friendshiped? Yes. Oh, you, how can you look at a bear and not want to cuddle with it? I just don't understand. <laughs> yes. I, the I, little ears. And even when, even when, listen, listen, I haven't seen a bear in real life. So like, I understand my privileged city board position. Mm -hmm. I'm not someone out there like trying to make my way over to California or wherever bears live. Not, not. I mean, anyway, whatever. Oregon Trail, not really a bear territory too much, though. But still, out like trying to make my own land or anything, having to deal with bears on a regular basis. I don't have that. Like, I understand that. But like, come on, look at them. Come on. The well, I live in Ireland, so I, I never have to worry about running into one. We're pretty, we're pretty safe here. The, the most scary thing we have to deal with are the cows. <laughs> so we're we're all gonna. Don't see PUBG adding them to the game anytime soon. Maybe, maybe. Brendan Green's. The, Brendan Green did make the game originally. He's Irish, so he probably knew that pretty well. Mm. But uh, getting back into the game, Gas Cans yes, please, started let's. off explosively with that big win in game number one. Momentum has slowed down just a little bit, but I feel it's it's not really been through any fault of their own the zone's right. been the zones have been brutal tonight with how they've been bouncing around right uh and honestly it's only been two miramars as far as tago is concerned it's not exactly like sanok where i consider it sort of a, a wash in terms of um performance it's close though so how tago plays out is so unique and so different i just i kind of put it in like i i organize it separately in my head on how well a team is doing and i think vikendi specifically is another map that gas cans routinely performs very very well on so i could easily see them put themselves right back into the conversation of consistently good teams by the end of the day okay, getting uh getting a good look at the spread of a lot of these teams we're getting that inverse donut effect that we get where a lot of teams push very close to center, and it means that the late rotators, SSG and Future, they've got a nice buffer of space inside the circle that they can play in. From that point on, you're really chasing to see where the zone pops from here on in. But I think that when you are rotating late in, it's not the worst position to be in. And I think for SSG, a team that likes to play and control around the edge of the map, they will be pretty happy. Yeah. I mean, again, it's just about looking for that opportunity, looking for the fight to take. And with, uh, I think it was also Rello that said this, is that the terrain on Vikendi, very, very similar to the way that Miramar plays out, which gives you opportunities to use the terrain, the little dips. It's really good terrain for fighting if you can isolate engagements away from third parties. And there is something to be said about the roofs of those little gondola lines that we saw Falcons arrive on. That's a big third party threat from that hyper high ground. But regardless, as long as you play around the information that you have, and especially if you come from the edge and just sort of take things beat by beat you should be good to go yeah falcons are just chilling right now they're just going to play this position for as long as they possibly can they don't have any vehicles there as you said they do have that 
that gondola that they can use to move if they need to a little bit later on inside the game. The circle shift does occur and it goes a little bit more favoring the north side. And I love how quickly, in particular, STK right. have moved. They saw what that zone shift and they went. Yeah, same with AKA, same with Rats. These teams understand that they have their priority on getting a good position. They can get there faster than anyone else. Sonics are also on their move, but it's really just the Southern two, Tickleton and h -win grouping up with the other two members of a more of a central spot. But why? Because pop some teams, pop some shots at teams driving by, don't land any. If anything, just forces SSG away, but they weren't going to crash this position to begin with. SSG rotate on by, Pichao not really able to land any telling shots whatsoever. Finally one landed, but it's Bestia that will find a tickle of damage on the Pixel, who's going to... Uh-oh, yeah, he needs an emergency pickup. It's a good thing his friend is there to pick him up on the way past. And uh, yeah, it's Roth. Roth's probably saying, Pixel, what have you done? He's giving him a dressing down right now. He's like, he's like yeah. Pixel, come on. Come Ooh, on, Pixel. Ooh, the spray comes out. The, uh, the damage on the page is not super scary just yet, but uh, SSG are just feeding it through so many different teams, and they're only about halfway to the center of the zone. Honestly, they're just going to pull up on this compound to take it. At this point, just grab what you can get. Yeah, and I think it's it's actually not a bad position to play in case the zone does eventually shift further to the south. Keep the vehicle safe, keep the tire safe, live to rotate another day. 11 and a half minutes gone, so we don't have to wait overly long for that next zone shift to occur. But I think for Bestia, they're probably ruining a missed opportunity to pick up points and you kind of feel like they need it. Sitting in ninth place on 15 points, you know, it's, it's very early on, you're not a million miles away. But remember, when you look at the names on this team, they expect to be up at the top fighting for the victory as well. Right. Bestia is a team that... I think they have a really high ceiling, especially with the addition of uh, Sharpshot. Granted, it's kind of a new roster. It's not exactly Fumba. It's Fumba plus Pippa plus Sharpshot, which are both exciting players to add. But so far, we've seen high highs, but also some really low lows. They are very Feast Famine, probably the most Feast Famine team that we have in uh, the Grand Finals so far. So if they can get themselves to maybe three of those high kill wins that they're able to get that they've gotten historically before they can be in the conversation but at the same time the amount of times they've gone out with zero points historically and also even just so far today had poor rounds is something that makes it difficult for me to really have a lot of confidence behind their assured ability to be fighting for a top position it surprises me because they've made two roster changes and they still have three players who have won a PAS event in the last 12 months. Sharp, of course, <laughs> winning it with right. SSG. The other's winning it with Fumba. One of the things that you need to win events is consistency. So you'd think that a team with three players who have won events in the last year would have it. And I think it's really important for the viewers to remember that Sharpshot is fluent in Spanish. So this team do communicate in Spanish and uh, it, that, that would be no issue for Sharpshot or the rest of the team, that addition. Legacy now sort of popping themselves, bumping themselves inside the zone. They have the small little ridge to play around with. Getting close to Mercy territory, Sneak Attack might be spotting this one out, but the fight's going to be on hold for at least a couple of moments. We'll see where the circle goes. It's going to be a medium shift towards the east. This is suddenly really, really good for gas cans. Still looking quite good for Falcons as well as AKA Rats. It's all the other teams around them that need to make a choice. SDK could also loop in from the north and find a good position there, but it's getting to the time that the fights are going to have to start breaking out. Yeah, we're full complement. 64 players alive after 14 minutes on Vikendi. Usually we're not that blessed, but it means it'll be excitement from here on out. PWD, he's turned the wrong way. He's facing the members of Legacy. And the M249 makes quick work of PWD. The IGL of Mercy falling. And PWD was the explosive player over the course of the last chance qualifiers. That's a huge loss for them, but they've still got three up. Peach out now. Still facing off against a couple of different teams where they need to make their way into the zone. It's about finding that first opening position, about finding that first opening knock. If not, they might just have to thread it in and just cross their fingers and hope that you do have access to the east that should be lighter on population, should be lighter on transition, but spam are there waiting. Spam are loving these camps, and they're knowing how to not commit so fully into them, but Jaberi is in a good position, as well as Karak, to try and find these first opening knocks, and I don't think Pichow are ready for it. They have no clue. He lets the first car go. These are that's rule number one. You let the first player go past, 
He left the second, but oh, they no. spot him out. Oh no! He's seen, but he does manage to get the knock onto one. BL will trade that one back, but the rest of Spam will collapse on the back of that knock. They know that Pichao are really weak. The blue zone should do for Santa inside the circle, but Kerak takes a bit of damage here too, and... Well, it actually looks like Spam are going to fall back. The door has been shut on the opportunity to get all those kills onto Pichao. Yeah, I mean, I think they were hoping for a more head empty send by Pichao. Pichao were actually circled around, able to recognize that it was a camp, turn on it, and at least trade one for one. And Spam just want to get to the zone at this point. They're wasting time if they try and camp further. But SSG is a really nice spray down by Pixel onto members of future Terrazoka going down. Frogman has also been knocked, confirmed by OG, so not going to be a steal there. But future are limping into the zone. Yeah, and Sam Crow might not make it just yet. Oh, no. <laughs> That thing is about to blow Sam <laughs> Kraken. The vehicle does blow. Sam Crow will fall as well. And that point should be picked up by Luna Galaxy. And Shap has no clue. He has no idea that the Falcons are just above him. But the question is, do the Falcons know that it is a solo player? What do you mm. think they've been talking about for the last 15 minutes, by the way? I don't know. Boys, maybe? <laughs> Twirling their hair. Laughing at each other, throwing pillows. You know. Yeah. Spoy stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, Zone little is going to... sleepover stuff, you know. Everyone does yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Just make sure that they wake up in time for the next zone shift if it forces them to move from this position. SSG, they move nice and early. They joined the circle with the shift. They're pushing up towards this ridge line as well. And oh, no. Chap's got a Panzer and SSG have oh, three God. players. Oh, right, no. Right, they've got... Like they got out at least Okami. Like, that could have been way worse. Uh, they might that have tracked be. this rotate. They might have tracked this push. But there's always going to be the threat of Panzers on these positions because they always spawn here. One spot, it sends it out. Shap gets the first. Can he get any more? Oh, Shap finds one SSG here pushing very quickly. My Falcons do step up now. Laker gets the kill. And Fal Falcons are doing exactly what we expected. They have woke up. And it leaves Paige as the last player alive, and he probably cannot believe his luck no. that all of Falcons were waiting on top of this ridge line. And there you go, VHC from Legacy picks up the kill. And Falcons, well, they can go back to just chilling. They can go back prone again yeah. to see what's going on, because they have no need to do anything else. Yeah, the next shift favored them, continuing to go back towards the, the southwest here. They're not in the dead center, but they're pretty close to it. They can just hang out and soak up those placement points, wait for everyone else to fight around them, and they, then they will come up at the very end of the game and clean up all the kill points. Is their game plan. Who knows if they're able to execute it or not. It is not written in stone just yet, but they have such a lead. They are having a blast at this point. 41 points compared to SDK in second place with 28. Let's point out something that we didn't even mention, though. They had no vehicles when they dropped. Now they have two. Hedgewin's got himself. Kaishin in his line of sight gets that knock onto OG. Higuain is going to attempt to get that res, but Sonics love to turn up the heat, to turn up the aggression. But I have seen rats pushing this way as well. Nades being tossed over. The res isn't going to occur. Kaishin will fall at the hands of a nade from Kick. And Sonics have already closed the gap as they look to wrap around. But, man, look at how aggressive rats are being. Yeah. Luna Galaxy as well, leaving the bear cave. They were holding that position, making it a safe spot, hard to get third party there. But they're looking for a way to exit out and start to reestablish the control from that position. But they don't overcommit. Same thing with Sonics. They don't overcommit. They turn around. They face off against rats now. This gives the opportunity for OG to sort of reestablish themselves, stabilize themselves. And now towards the east, 55. Suddenly spam arrived and the spray comes out. But Psycho is only able to get one. Three team dance on the edge of the circle. Now Kerax there. We can see the gas cans pushing over the ridge line as well. Glock, one good nade could do it for Kerak. He's trying to get the res. Will it be good enough? The nade does pop. He does get himself a bunch of kills. 55 a fall. And I believe Spam have followed them out the exit. Gas cans clear up a ton of space for themselves on the northeast side of the circle. And gas cans look towards STK as well. Trying to put some shots out, trying to put the damage there. And now OG pushing onto Luna Galaxy. Falcons have been third partying this the whole time. Fakeson's gone down to Mime. It's all down to Haven, trying to survive in the smoke. And Necro now the last one up because Falcons are still third partying everyone. Why not Falcons? Old Guard eliminated Luna Galaxy in a ton of trouble here as well. They fall in 11th. 10 teams left alive and Mime and Rello 
pick up those two kills. Shrimzy will get a knock as Sonics turn their attention towards Falcons, but that should be a pretty easy res for them. Bestia have to find themselves a path into the circle. And Sharp's going to do it on a bike, and we all know how risky this can be on terrain like that. Well, right. maybe for us. Maybe for Ooh. us. Makes it to the rock. Good cover. They know that Falcons are up here. They have to know. There's no way they can't. And Sonics are helping out. They're helping out Bestia's push. But Snakers is still able to get that knock on to Pippa. We'll see if the revive can come into play. But, I mean, especially on this these south teams. Legacy driving in. Bestia, Pichow, Falcons are going to be a big threat. But this is starting to be a lot of players. What? Sharp shot with two knocks. Sharp shot is one of the best DMR and bolty players I've seen in America's. And he makes it work. Two players are going to fall. Falcons need to get these reses off. And honestly, how rude of Sonics to third party onto Falcons there. But Sharp shot living up to his name. Falcons will reconsolidate. Eight kills for them already on the King of the Hill. But Bestia and Legacy has got to kick off. Snakers gets the knock onto Sharp. That need could be trouble for Legacy as it falls. Pipa trying to lock in Falcons on top of, you know, the big shed. But I don't know, like, this is just oh. nuts what's happening on the south. Oh, man. Rello almost got knocked as well. But Bestia also need to worry about Legacy. But they can't get there because of Falcons. BL is eliminated. Falcons have 10 kills from this position. It is still in the zone. Underhand needs from Silzen towards where Legacy are standing. Caught with a need in his hand, but doesn't pay for the LMP. Uses the Panzer to get float above. Snakers falls at the hands of Pipa. As Falcons take two knocks once more. Pipa, last player standing for Bestia. Will just get himself up to the rock. Get that first aid off. But for Falcons, the big problem for them is that they have taken a beating when it comes yeah. to helmets and vests, and they don't have many left to utilize. And Legacy... Ooh! Did, that, did he do damage from below? Or did he send I... that up straight into the sky? I need a replay of that at some point, because that is nuts. Confirmed that, but oh, yeah, Falcons are right. They've gotten a lot of kills, but they have taken a lot more damage than I think they would have expected. I don't know, it's still, they've got a ton of kills, 10 on the board already. They've extended that lead, 48 points now. But still, the team's in the chasing pack, one of them directly below. Sonics in the fight with Rats on the edge of the circle. Kicks getting the res off onto Shrimzy, while Tiggleton will hold them back. Tune takes some damage. He is a panzer that he might look to use at close range, but Kick tosses the nade towards Gats. They're trying to isolate, right? This is one thing Sonics do do well in gunfight, is isolate the weakest link, the weakest member of the opposite team. At least finding the one who is out solo, potentially pushed out. But Rats aren't giving them that opportunity. Tune is going to be retreating away. Panzer was used, didn't find anything with it. And the 3v3 stare off, it's really just biding time because they're going to need to run into AKA. Still waiting for that first move. Let's turn our attention back towards Falcons as they continue peeking over that ridge line. Ammo seemingly not necessarily a problem for them just yet as well. That's something that could have been a concern the longer they stayed here. And Rats moving towards AKA. They've backed off the fight with Sonics. They, surely they know that AKA are in this position. And those footsteps in the snow make a lot of noise. There's the pick. They see the vehicle. They should know there's a team waiting. There's another Panzer at the ready. Pre-fart! No, oh. June! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I mean, got for... the knock on the Rafex, I guess. I but hope the they self never knock change as well because of the range. Oh, and well, I hope, I hope they never change. Sonics will push into AKA now, reading the kill feed, knowing that AKA have sustained a knock, and they are going to move in to close the ground. Snakers gets a knock onto Richie B. That's five kills for him now as they continue adding to their tally. But let's get back to Sonics pushing AKA. They're able to take the space that Rats opened up for them as AKA were busy with the revives. And now Smokes are also deployed. The Zera cannot watch this angle. Cannot stop Tiggleton from getting up next to the buildings. But Sonics also know that STK are prowling around this area, at least off in the distance, potentially with a line of sight. And of course, this Falcon's still on the high ground. Still potentially overlooking everything if we're not too distracted about Legacy. Oh, Snakers takes even more. I look, you know the way you can see how much damage players do? I'd love a little screen on how much damage Falcons have taken right. playing up on this position as well. Like, what's their med kit situation looking like right now? Seifu will get knocked by the gas cans, and Vine's got a great angle onto STK. They've got to be careful they don't get knocked as a drop will land 
This drop could be bait. This could be incredibly dangerous for AK oh. if they try to get it. Oh, okay, gas cans are gone. Nice needs. Sorry, it took me a while to recognize what that was, but still, Sonic's pushing AK, you're right, that crate could be bait, especially now that SDK don't have to worry about the gas cans to so third party this fight. A lot of damage, a lot of fire coming out. Sonic still need to take this one slow, still need to stall things out and heal things up, but a great Molotov to open it up by confirming Rathex, who was already knocked. Yeah, angle peak from LIP on the other side. Tiggleton moving this way now. Kickstart trying to weed out these players. Nanu is on the other side of the stats here. He's so close by that Molly. Should force them a little bit closer. There's oh. the peak, and he yeah, kickstart spots the boy. Kick gets the kill. Mime getting a knock onto LFP up in the north as well, but let's keep an eye on Sonics. It's just Tiggleton and kickstart left standing, but kick has forced his way inside. They've cleared the first warehouse. They should be able to get the res off on the Shrimzy, and for Sonics, they need to get three people back up yeah. as quick as possible because the zone shifted away again. Yeah, and Lizera isn't able to make a move because of the threat of both SDK and Falcons third party. And this Falcons, who already have 13 kills, by the way, are still alive. Legacy are now eliminated. 15 kills for Falcons. Oh, wow. I thought that Mad Bulls had a pretty good day earlier. Well, Falcons are looking to match their tally. Mercy with two up, 15 points for them so far over the course of the evening. And they're just going to go prone and wait. But Falcons now eventually need to come down from their tower. Let's see if Louise can do anything about the three members of Sonics, though. Zero's just been waiting. Waiting to try and line things up. 2x at the ready. The superior scope. 40 bullets in the weapon, in the firearm. And the hope is SDK could even get a knock, get some extra damage, and Lee Zera is there to finish things up. But Sonics know that there's another member of AKA waiting for them. They know that they did not get the full confirm on that team just yet. The smoke wall is coming out, not only to defend from Lee Zera, but also, again, Falcons, who have left Snakers up on the high ground. Everyone else has dropped down below because they don't need to use this anymore. Everyone, All the threats immediately below them have been dealt with. Yeah, and all those bodies will hopefully have the meds that they need after taking all that damage on the top. You can see Snakers certainly could do with picking up some meds on his way down. Sonic's now smoking their way across, taking some damage, I believe, from STK as they move towards Louise. And oh, Mime and Rello are getting very close to Mercy. I love the fact that Snakers is still playing Overwatch for the rest of this push because if Mercy step up, Snakers should be able to shoot the first head up. All three members of Sonics were able to cross. This is the worst case scenario for Lizera. As Falcons getting close to Mercy. They took some shots towards the SDK, but it seems that they are aware of Mercy's position. Grenade oh, no. at the ready. Yeah, they smell oh, it no. out. Yeah, this is uh, this is GG's for Mercy. Splits the two of them perfectly and gets them out of the lobby. Louise falls as well. And we lose two teams in the bang of a grenade. Falcons and SQ and SDK 3v3v3. Three, 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 three. The question is, who is in the better position to fight now as everybody has taken a beating when it comes to utility? That fresh level 2 helmet that Kick has could have an impact on this game as well as STK have most control in the circle and they find Shrimzy. We'll see though, again, we've seen teams that looked like they had the most control potentially get overwhelmed. What happened to SSG? It almost happened uh, to Gas Cans earlier on today. And 17 kills for Falcons. They're going to win this game no matter what in terms of points and that's really all that matters. And they need to. Remember, they've got the backing of a big org that want them to qualify for an international event. Two of these three teams are not global partner teams, and they want to get as many points off the back of this one as possible. Most kills that STK can get in this one is an additional five to their tally, but you know as well as I that that's not how these fights usually work. It's right. usually the last team that gets involved is the team that wins. And they could potentially steal some kills. But sometimes in the chaos, you just finish the opposing team and the, the bleed outs go the opposite way. But regardless, it's about, at this point, it's about guaranteeing and confirming the win, the full chicken dinner. Tickleton goes down, only one member of Sonic's remaining, and they might just deny at this point. There's no way they can get out of this barn. What was Tig doing? Why did Tig step into the blue? Did he see, did he try to get the crate? Did Tig go for the crate and get, and pay the, the, I would say lead price for it, but the blue zone price as we've got ourselves a 3v3 for the win. STK with full zone center control, but Kami, even though it's phase eight, you kind of get the feeling it could still be a little while before this game ends. They're staring each other down. 
Oh, Snakers with the first knock there. It's going to be huge. Mine might be pushing forward. They have grenades at the ready. Smokes are already coming out, so I think Falcons, they, they don't want to make this one last too long. They want to get this one over and done with. Rello, frag grenade goes out. Yeah, the knock makes that decision for them. If you get a knock and a 3v2, you got to push Kurtz back on his feet, but... Yeah, Falcons have taken a lot of ground. They're sprinting towards the gap. One player wrapping around the side. Mime will find sparking. And Mime dips back into cover. 15 HP. Rello will be the next one to peak. Mime. Can he confirm that kill? Kurt's going for a wrap of his own up towards the high ground. And Mime's got a med kit. That is big cami as another needs tossed towards Kurt. Yeah, good damage on the Kurt. Doesn't get the knock, but here Mime is back to full HP and gonna be pushing this one. Halo does a little bit of damage back the other way. Mine steps up, Kurt gets the kill. It's a two versus two. Snakers gets the off angle, 2v1. It's all down to Halo. Inside the smoke, Snakers has got to be very careful. He doesn't get caught out. Snakers gets the angle and Falcons go back to back and they got themselves a 15 kill win in the last map. They have just gotten 21 from an emergency pickup to land on top of a big warehouse and look at the amount of kills they got from there. That was, sheesh. What's the record? I think we're still, I think 22 kills is still the record in like mm -hmm. a top level competitive uh, game, uh, but still 21, 20, 21. It's, I got, I got nothing else. <laughs> Let's just go back to the studio. I got, that's, yeah, that's it. Ugh. I love everything about this game from the Falcons <laughs> off the get go where they decided to go where they hold up on top of this guys just just take it I don't even know what to talk about man it's so I, much fun. I was rooting for Falcons the moment I saw the play that they had made and then yeah. just the, the surprise attack on the SSG and the teams below them I mean the absolute chaos that they caused was so much fun Mike it was just it's the greatest the thing most. I've ever seen it's it's might be the greatest, thing, the, I've ever the greatest seen. thing I've ever seen just, just because I know Rella like we, we know Rella we know how these guys think we know how like seriously they take things and whatever and then you have Rella like there is no freaking way that they thought whenever they took the top of that thing that this was going to be the end result. <laughs> like, they got up there and they were lying prone for the entire first circle. They're probably just like, okay, we can scout out a little bit. And whenever the circle shifts away from us, we'll just be able to parachute down. It'll be easy, whatever. But dude, I, I need the comms the game, for this. It handed itself to them. I, I need was the comms for this because you know exactly there's like, there's going to be one of them that was playing it super sweaty. And the other ones were like like elementary school kids just trying not to giggle the whole time. Like, shh, don't move. They're going to hear us. <laughs> you know, well, I just uh, I, look at this. Falcons fly up the leaderboard. 31 points. Sonic's in second with 11. Shoot to kill with 10. And then diminishing down from that. I mean, God's be bro, bro. I mean, the f yeah, so they, they initially got that first kind of surprise fight on SSG and the other team that were underneath them, but the fact that they were able to be proactive after that, get down there, and they took the fight. They got so many team wipes, including Mercy, obviously, SDK at the end. I mean, they were super proactive, even after losing Flood up there, so that was just incredibly impressive. And speaking of SDK, I mean, so far today, one of the big criticisms we've had over the you know the past year is just making it to the end game with at least three or four people up, you know, making it a oh. circle six, seven, eight, and they've been really consistent on that today actually if there is a score you needed after meme dropping on top nice. of the lift that nice. is exactly going to be it for him very nice very yeah. nice and very nice and there you go you talk about shoot to kill we wanted to see what they came in with and they've uh, definitely made their mark in these first three games mm -hmm. in second place overall legacy another team that's been doing quietly pretty well this entire time and uh yeah you see how the rest of the leaderboard shapes out with three more games left to go Dude, this is just, uh, okay. We often talk about like the verticality inside of the map and how you have to like deal with it at different sections. Is this something like, I don't think that anybody would be thinking about that Godspeed, right? You know, it's a thing that can be done, but you're not thinking about it while you're moving to it, right? You're gonna glance up there and be like, oh yeah, there's nobody up there. Right, and so Falcons got there early, first of all, and then second of all, it's like, okay, even if you notice that a team like is above you, let's say it's not even the Falcons, a team that's very good at shooting, it's hard to displace because even if you get a knock, poor, we were all talking about it during that game, even if you get I knocked, mean, you, you can't really get a flush. Sure, maybe you get a nice little nade up there that gets a flush or, or does some blood. damage, unless <laughs> it's blood, but there, there's no realistic way to actually get a team out from 
on top of that position. And so basically, you just have to deal with it. And the terrain surrounding that area is not conducive at all to deal with it. So Falcons well, just a, had a field day. There's a lot of teams that had to deal with it. And Poro, you're going to be walking us through the story of one of them with legacy. Oh, walk <laughs> us through. Get us in there. Yeah, so, uh, so I chose legacy going into this game. Obviously, uh, you know, would love to talk about Falcons. Uh, I don't think there would be much to talk about until the very, very end, though. But uh, look, legacy hard hard south drop all the way down to Cranick. they have to make the rotation up to the north they really are they, they do a really good job of just kind of slow playing it being very very patient they had mercy right in front of them they spotted them out early they never took a fight until they got this knock on the pwd -D 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 and make sure that's the first point that they get but uh, like we were saying like they they they're just very very patient they don't try to take more than they think they can get pretty easily, right? Or, or with a, a fairly low risk. So like they're they're perfectly content trying to get to the late game. And so the circle keeps shifting away from them, away, away, away. Finally, they're forced to push up to here. Fortunately for them, as they're pushing, two knocks come through on the Falcons. So I think Legacy was aware of this. They lose VHC in the pull up uh, and then they end up, I don't even know, how, how does that happen? Fine. Okay. That's, that's how Flood goes down, is through a shrapnel that goes through the bottom of a thing, apparently. But uh, yeah, Legacy, they, they allow the uh, the Falcon's nest to hold down uh, the, the fort for them for a while. Uh, but eventually, you know, eventually these are great shooters on Falcons, right? They're going to find the angles. They're going to find a way to get rid of you. And uh, yep, Falcons ends up going down, or Legacy ends up going down to our feathered overlords. And uh, Legacy ends up coming down after that, looting up to the absolute gills and pushing the rest of the lobby for 21 kills. I, I mean, what do you do? The, like, what do you do if you're Legacy or any team underneath? Violence. Is that the name? <laughs> is it going to be just now Falcon's Nest? Is the, If you make Falcon, that play, yeah. is that what we have to call it from this point? I'm down. <laughs> well, look, you know, this isn't... Even though it's 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 funny and it's it's surprising that it actually worked out as well as it did... This isn't that surprising because they've that team has always liked yep. taking super high grounds. You talk about the, the radio towers on Aragle, you can always find snakers up there or flood or any of these guys. They love getting those high, high place, the uh, high spots that you know everybody likes has to check in pub games, but nobody ever thinks to check there in comp because they're like, nobody be stupid enough to well, play that. Well, these guys are. <laughs> well, think about Impala, work. right? Above Impala, before I think vaulting was even introduced, we used to see uh, Rello get all the way up there overlooking church and everything else, right? We've seen big kill games from, I mean, that's back when they were Oath from that team pretty much since their inception. They always love getting high ground and they now with the advent of e pickups, I mean, the, the, <laughs> the sky is literally the limit the so well, i've got to ask limit. everybody in chat were you spamming emotes during that time were you trying to get everything set up because right now <laughs> if you follow the channel you could have had the free emotes that we offer you guys to spam the entirety of the time that the falcon's nest was going on but we're going to go ahead and start getting everything prepped up to move into our next round as we are making our way over to aaron Gill to finish out the last two so make sure you stay tuned Winning a chicken dinner is tough. It demands more than skill and luck, too. Yet, you didn't quit. Your persistence always crafted luck. PUBG seven years thrived on your countless lucky moments. Thank you for not giving up. Here's to our lucky years. PUBG Battlegrounds, 7th Anniversary. Hello everyone, Seifus here with a quick tip for all new PUBG players. You can change your zeroing distance. It's help you for the long range fights. You can go with settings, key points, combat, go down. Here, 
you press alt plus scroll up and here you press alt plus scroll down you apply and you go game here you can say you can hold the alt and scroll up you change your zeroing distance and you can hold the alt and go scroll down you can change the distance also like here you can put it like 600 and choose here you can uh, hit the enemy and it will help you a lot all right veterans uh, this is a quick thing you can use it uh, if someone need to crash you you can put the bike behind the door or the mountain bike uh, so this door will be blocked and no one can open it if someone crashing you look you press ff so the door can't open so here you can slow them and you can set up for the fight you and your teammate hello everyone Today I will show you how you can cross West Bridge or set up West Bridge with your friends, with your team. Uh, first one, you can take this position. You can take it from both sides, from left, from right. And you will have good angle to shooting cars. And in the same moment you will have good angle to scout what is going on outside of the bridge. I have a lot of info. Uh, probably your teammates hiding in this moment. Because enemy trying to scout the bridge. But no one will scout you. It's unpredictable. So you have a lot of info. You can... Tell your teammates that someone trying to cross the bridge and you'll call them. Second one, you are going under the bridge. From the boxes, you can jump on this construction. So you have good angle to cross your enemies on the left side of the bridge. You can give at least one or two knocks and your team will help you. This station is unpredictable and no one will check you here. Use it. Enjoy your battle royale and see you in the finals. Uh, ahead of the PAS3 Grand Finals, I want to take some time and show you some crash defense setups uh, for church here. First thing you're going to do is you're going to vault up on this cabinet, like so. And then you're going to try and run and vault uh, onto yellow and grab the ledge. So, like that. Then. You can get up here and you can walk around and uh, you can have a setup with your teammates. And that's why this angle is pretty good to play from. So let's say you have some enemies in the distance that are looking to crash you on zone pop or are just looking to take a fight to church with you. Um, this is the setup that you're going to do. Uh, it involves a gas can and playing uh, with angles to your advantage. So, I'm going to try and bait the enemies in. Obviously, go into the church, find a gas can, and then I'm going to be pouring the gas can in the stairs. And we, I'm going to be playing up in the tower. So, I have some pretty good angles here. I can spray them when they're coming in, but also, say one's about to come up the stairs, you can just set the stairs on fire, and it's over. Oh, <laughs> Tem ele. Eu tô morto. Tem um outro, tem um outro deitado ali nas ruas, cara. Tá de boa. É de boa, me escuta aqui, me escuta aqui. Eu preciso que alguém Mira, me calma. Mira, tem um pinho, ele dá, dá pra nocar ele. Mano, escuta, escuta, foca aqui. Foca aqui, né, Gazzi? Foca aqui, né, Gazzi? Mira aqui, Campadio, eu tenho que sair daqui pra ele não passar no time.
Welcome back in everyone to PAS Gibson Cast, joined by Cami D here, and I want to start off this section by thanking Mercy for ruining all of our upcoming ranked games. I have enough paranoia when it comes to crashing compounds and pushing the bridge. It's just going to get worse after watching that. Yeah, those are some... Listen, listen, pushing, at least in comp, you don't see um, the churches get pushed all too often. Mm -hmm. But I do, I've heard about just being able to run across those, those beams before, mm -hmm. but I always forget about it. It's, it's going to happen. I guarantee the yeah. next time you and I load up now, we're going to walk yeah. in. Or, or we're going to try to do it and feel miserably and get crashed while we're trying to get up on top right, of the Right, right, right. It's like, hold on, let me get in position first. Please, wait. So impatient. Five minutes later, we're still trying to get up, but we'll jump into our fifth game of the night, Erangel, for the home stretch in this one. Flight path from 12, taking us down to approximately five once more. And a flight path like this is player-friendly once more, Cami, but it yeah. feels so good to finish the night with some Erangel. Right. This plane is a little bit towards the east. Gatka, Quarry, and, you know, Pram, which aren't, like, super priority positions to begin with. They're a bit further away from the plane than I think you would hope for. And, I mean, Kameshki barely exists on this map. But, yeah, it's mostly fair. It's pretty fair. No one should be too upset about this one. No one should be too irritated at the start. AKA, it looks like they're going to Zarki right at the beginning of the plane path. So... Good opportunity to go take that position if it's at the very beginning because you're not screwed on timing as much as if it were at the end of the plane. Yeah, and essentially almost everywhere on the map is can be grabbed by that phase one circle whenever it does pop in about 10 seconds time. We're seeing the rats maybe contest with spam for a spawned in vehicle as they make their way towards east and west ghost. I think the spoon has just secured that for his side and the zone does shift and wow. Oh, man. Remember when I you said know, that we haven't been getting like neutral starting zones oh go oh, oh god i that actually shocked me <laughs> we heard the shots before oh my god <laughs> sorry give me ptsd too when i'm looking at the map and i get hit in a game oh god this is why you cami you're not supposed to wear your vr goggles when we cast because that just felt like you were getting shot right it you're did supposed to... <laughs> i thought i died for a second there oh but look there's your first kill of the day as chun picks up that one but cami this is for all intents and purposes, the worst circle that we have had all night long. It's brutal. It, it's so it, bad. You know the way we talk about the amount of... You know what? We'll talk about it later because we we spoke to the teams earlier about their favorite maps as well. So let's see what the teams had to say about that. I really like Rangel. Like, uh, show me someone who don't like this map. Uh, it's, it's where the game started. So like on any PUBG map, you usually want to have some good loot. You want to find four cars just to start out as a basic thing. Then on Erangel specifically, you know, you probably want to know what you're doing on like Millie circles because they're pretty hard to play. And you really want to know like what are the good terrain spots or scout spots to play as well. Got the right vibes for PUBG, you know, a little bit of compounds here, a little bit of terrain here. Not too much spots to play, you know, because too much spots to play, it's kind of kind of gets a bit crazy, but gives you good opportunities. You know, you scouting. Oh, you take a good spot in the zone. All right. You're in that spot. You got. You can't just keep. Can't just keep scrapping along. You got to be methodical about how you're playing. You got to take what you can get, and play from it. Right. Two <laughs> things. The irony of the spoon talking about how good the terrain on the map was as he just stuck right. his coop onto it is one. But what Not I worry was, about it. <laughs> what I was going to say before I saw that was unsung heroes is something we have a lot of on PUBG, and coaches are one of them. Nice right. to see Wooly getting some airtime on the main broadcast. Yeah, like everyone knows Gunner from Sonics. A lot of people know Trevor and uh, assistant assistant coach? Analyst? Know me for Falcons. Wooly, a bit of a silent force there for SDK, but he's been with them for a while and is undoubtedly at least a part of the reason why they were able to make this 180 in their performances this year compared to how last year ended. Part of that big uh, coach roulette that we had at the start of last year, right? Which saw Gunner leaving STK, going to Sonics, and then Wooly making right. his way over to STK. Let's let's look at some of the stats, though, for Spam. 1777 damage is what they have, but only 19 points to show for it after four maps. It's not necessarily the worst thing in the world, Kami, as we're only on day one, but mm -hmm. another team with plenty of experience. Yeah, I mean, 13 kills... 
It's not the greatest so far, but they're currently sitting in eighth place. And something should be noted about the fact that Falcons in first by such a huge margin. So when, whenever you see any individual team, sometimes it's two teams that are just soaking up so many points on their own. That means the value of each individual point on the teams below them does increase because it, it, I can't really explain that without going to like math, but percentage thing. Anyway, it should make sense to you, right? And so that also means it's harder to find these points. So Spam currently sitting in eighth place. They should have a good series of games if they want to maintain their position, but I'm not too worried about their spot just yet. One team that's not worried about their spot is Falcons, who've got the funny number amount of points as things stand. 69 for them on top spot after two massive performances. And this is a map and a zone that suits a team like Falcons as well. They could get even more points on the boat on the zone. But we're seeing some teams rotate in, Cami, that haven't yeah. even looted up properly just because of what the circle's given them. Yeah, I mean, Adam's still missing a helmet, but this is a team coming all the way from Severny. I imagine they were unable to find an E-pickup, which surely they would have been able uh, to use in a zone like this, because this is awful for Severny. But they just made a call to send it super early, trying to maybe get the rest of their loot from Milt to Power. But other teams are already here. So many teams are already in position. Gas cans read if this was the play. If seem to have been a little off, but they're able to stabilize. They're able to 180 from that, but they might just be crashing into the opposite member. No, okay, no, they're they're, re they're going around. Where are they going? I don't even know if they know where they're going at this point. Oh, it's, it's, it's genuinely just anywhere. Just keep throwing as much stuff at the wall and eventually some of it will stick. They'll find some position that's not being held just yet. You know, we know if you're watching, if you have the map feed open, you guys at home, you guys will know what's been taken and what's not been taken. But gas cans are just going from team to team at the minute as we see the first drop landing on the screen as well. Oh man, it's been a while since we've seen any teams take these crates next to the road south of uh, Lippo. Ooh, Lopez trying to get a little nasty with the bolty. You know, you know, bolting. bolts are actually really under undervalued uh, weapons. One time I had a bolt and there was an epic. <laughs> <laughs> There we go. We're, get, we're getting it, isn't it? More, the, more, the more the merrier. But speaking of bolts, right? I feel like their value in the late game has just been diminished massively lately with the addition of the Dragonov. We'll talk about that more because Sam right. Crow is going to hide from Falcons as they wrote. Sam Crow has just gone unnoticed and Falcons have pushed up the prison. So that gives us the time to talk about what I was just mentioning. Undervalued and kind uh, of... Parking brake, please. <laughs> Ah, oh no, Sam even gets the full confirm there! Oh, Flood is not happy about that. I mean, he's, he can't be mad at Rello. Like, Rello's a, a sweetheart, and the IGL is so good luck screaming at that, but if it was Snakers or mine, Flood might have been throwing some more harsh words their direction about just completely ignoring Sam. He's gonna blame him, though. <laughs> he's gonna blame him a little bit. And he's gonna watch, watch back the VOD and he'll be like, okay, it's fine, I can see what happened there. But he's got the angle, speaking about diminishing the value of bolties, this is the weapon that I feel has done that in the late game. You've got that higher rate of fire with the level 2 knocks on the helmets within 105 meters. But yeah, it's something, team composition, right? You will see a lot of teams that will have a dedicated bolty operator in the early game, and the rest of the team will have minis, because you know one good shot with a bolty, Kami, and that can open up a crash. Yeah, it it's very circumstantial, though. A bigger mm -hmm. reason why you see Bolties and why you have an individual, as you say, as a dedicated Bolty is because... We've talked about the loot timing that these teams have. You don't have the luxury of being able to make sure you have the full kit that you perfectly want. And sometimes you just can't guarantee that you'll find four DMRs. Someone will have no option but to go with the bolt. So at that point, it's useful to have a member on your team who can be proficient with it, even if they would still prefer to have a DMR. Yeah, and I, I just, I'm the sort of person that I just think a, a bolt shot always hits different. You know, a clip that involves a bolty, like, you know, yeah. shooting someone out of the sky, oh, yeah. like, it, it hits it hits so much different. Though the zone shift, aka, found themselves a long way out, they went towards Darky in the early stages of this game. They clearly must not have found that E-pickup. But, Cammy, that gives us the chance to actually talk about the circle once more. It's not even the water, the amount of water in it. It's, look it's how not... limited, look how, look how limited your access points right. are as well. I mean, that goes hand in hand with water. There, there's no yep. water that doesn't also limit points of access. But you're right, this circle is basically 40% playable because there's a small little edge of Salznovka, but that's obviously not going to be where the game ends. So no one's going to go there. It, yeah, it's just, it's really brutal. And then going over the hump of uh, Lumber, 
is also difficult. So for these final teams that are arriving, whether it's SSG, could be OG, could be AKA, just getting a position in the zone, waiting for phase two, and then making a play off of that is going to be all that they can hope for. Yeah, gas cans, they have grabbed themselves. The, there's, there's the spoon's car from earlier. I forgot about it until we saw it once more. Trapped forever lost in this position as Old Guard begin their rotate into the zone now. And they're sitting on 20 points, seventh place. And when you look at that leaderboard on the left, oh, Kami, oh, what? what the oh, hell? Oh, no. Um, I, this is quite possibly... That's the worst case scenario. That is actually the worst case scenario we could have had because this is not going to go to Novo. It's not going to go to the bridge. So you're looking right now where Mercy and Legacy and the Edge of Malta and going, that is where hey, the circle goes from now on. What you want early fights? You're going to get early fights. SSG and Peachow driving right next to each other because it's the only option. There are going to be crashes. The North crashes from the, the Northeast. Uh, this, I, I don't know how you play around this. You just got to take a fight and hope that you win and then see what next is available. But Mercy, it looks like they're trying to be proactive with it. They're at least trying to hold off the west side. Wykas gets a knock on the Cowboy and Mercy looking to steal. Can't quite do it. Peach out, confirm it. Lucid will attempt to get Paige now. He does hit him a few times. He's got the line, but just not enough of a line of sight to get as many shots in as he needed. SSG crashing Sonics now as Tiggleton will find the knock onto Paige, which means Roth will have to move off into the distance with Cowboy and, uh, well, Pixel, sorry. They're going to take a ton of damage as they make it into the garage. Pixel should be able to hopefully crawl inside. A timer will be put on him, and he will not get back. I mean, Nateno is able to pick up that one, but uh, this is just a crapshoot, Kami. Like, this is... It's you the third what? of Phase 2 that's playable. Uh -huh. We're losing just... players, we're losing teams left and right. I don't know if anyone had a plan for the shift like this, looking at phase number one. I cannot blame them for that as well. A great grenade for Hyagwin. Falcons back away from that. But everyone's fighting over these set positions, these set compounds. Oh, teams are just chasing kills now. They know they have to take crashes, they have to take fights. Kai Shen, the last player for OG standing. Maybe Falcons can do something with two players left alive as Kai Shen will toss the nade towards where the rest of Falcons are playing. But a lot of these teams, they're going to say, you know what, let's just crash because we've got nowhere to play yeah. anyway. So let's see if we can make something happen and get some kill points on the board. This, if you're teams. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, there's a couple of teams playing on the coast. Luna Galaxy in the future, trying to light each other up. Haven trapped in a bit of a tricky situation. Getting that vehicle to have enough speed to get out of there is, is not the easiest. Kaisha with the, another knock. Kaisha has been holding this position down. No kills yet to speak of. It's been other teams that have been taking apart Falcons, but still defending the position is step one. He's got one kill. Snakers is going to fall. Like that's that's a certainty at this point. Mine right. will have to do this one all by himself. But if teams get win that these are this is one compound with only two solo players, well, you know for sure they'll push it. Gas cans will send a pass. Look who had the blue zone need ready in case the crash came from that direction. But they will move towards spam and Gaberry will be waiting. He's all by his lonesome and he's bailed as well. He's going to fall oh, back. Yeah. I think it's incredibly risky right. holding any sort of split <laughs> when you have a circle like this. I was gonna say the audacity of spam to try and hold any sort of split in this zone, but Jabari was ready to bail the second there was even a sign of the heat rolling around that corner. What about Mercy though? They're they're chilling. Looking at the coast two future, they're they're in the blue on the coastline, and SDK have Alo here holding them out. Like SDK have a wild split in the circle as well, and Alo just might capture someone as Bestia begin pushing their way towards Purmime. Yeah, best yet, no, 100% that it's going to be only individual players in this compound. They've been reading the kill feed, they've been hearing the shots, they know what's up. Smoke's on the way, they have the advantage. Kickstart actually kicks Kaishin out, but Mime with a micro Uzi at the ready. Ready to change the weapon meta right in front of our eyes. Oh, that's a molly, that's not good. 35 bullets, though. Like, that thing sprays those bullets pretty quickly, and that could be But it also reloads real fast, too. This is true, this is true. This is true. Look, 12's got a spot in the circle for STK if they decide they want to play it. There you go, Mime. He gets one. And he's going to toss the stung raid. Can he get that reload off? Even oh, yeah, that's, yeah. Sharp shot wasn't going to fall for it. He pushed. He got the kill. Another team down. Falcons fall 15th. And you know what? That is not a bad thing for the lobby. No, that's more points available. 
And look at AKA, they were the last team to arrive. Remember, they came all the way from Zarki. When they saw Phase 2, they said, you know what? You know what's gonna be available? A boat, I'm sure. And so they're making their way right under Mercy, who are holding this peninsula. And it's quite possible that even though this vehicle does, of course, make sound, Mercy might not even know it's coming until it's too late. But then again, PWD does have a P90 at the ready. I'm just waiting to see if PWD like reacts to the, the noise and it looks like he just has. He's heard them pushing up and as you said, that P90 is ready and waiting as they make landfall. Sne oh, look, Sneak Attack is a full send here, but Sneak, they're on top of that ridge line. You gotta be careful, my friend, as Rafex will take him down. There's one for PWD, nearly two as he does. There's a ton of damage onto Louise, but all of a sudden the jig is up, and in this position, PWD is going to be a player of all time. LIP will fall down to low HP. There's another one for PWD. There's another one for PWD, almost. He's one man army, and this isn't fair. Poor AKA. It looks close for a second, because AKA at least have the cover to dick it, uh, dip and dodge behind, where PWD is standing out in the open, but again, with the crossfire setup for Mercy and the P90 in play, it's all coming out on top. Yeah, PWD will push. Nanu is alive inside the smoke, but they know exactly where he is. They'll smoke off their teammate. Nanu will make a ton of noise, and PWD with the P90 confirms out his second. The smoke should allow for the res now to Seifu, but Mercy secure their coast for now. The zone did uh, get res getting ready to shift once more. I see a ton of open terrain in the circle as well if it does move towards Mercy. Got already down to 12 teams. See, this is what scrims have mostly been like this week. So teams might be a little more familiar with this than I than, than you might expect. But still, where can you even go? Where can you even play? Phase 3 did shift towards the north because it needed to stay on land. Phase 4 is going to continue to go that way. So I think it's going to be a slow mid-game for a little bit just because of fewer teams have to play about it. Legacy, they were confident their position would still be in it, but it goes a little bit towards the east as well. So Rat's still playable. Um, Bestia are okay, but it's Spam that I'm thinking is like next at the top in terms of priority. I think I've got to agree with you. They've got a... It's, it's more so the fact that where are they going to get pushed from? Like, this is the thing. They're not right. going to get pushed inside this position. Spam Ooh. aren't either. Oh, Gizera and Lopez are going to combine. And Well, Luna Galaxy, that... Uh, that did not go the way you would have wanted. You've got two players left alive. Haven and Vinny will rotate alongside the coastline, but I, I just feel sorry for them. Like, where is playable? Where do you go to... I think you just play on the edge and kind of wait to see what happens with the next shift. That's all that you really can do. The problem is getting from the coast into a, any position of cover is so flat, so wide open. 55 are going to have the lines aside. Peach Chow with an E pickup still ready to be used, still ready to be in play. They've already lost two members, but up they go. I love this though. Why not send an e-pickup into the sky? You can get an idea of what is going on everywhere around you. I think that little mini island would be somewhere that think about going, but as you can see, Luna Galaxy are there. Yeah, they're going exactly where I thought. They're going straight for that mini island. Haven is going to go for the re- Oh. <gasps> it's blocked <laughs> off! <laughs> oh what? no, let's trap them inside. They can't move. Listen, that's free placement points. Oh, oh no, but that, no, no, yeah. no. Never it's mind, kills. not with the fire. It's it's free kills is what it is, not free placement points. <laughs> you know what that was? That was a fire pit. Right. But listen, Peach Out now couldn't get back inside, so they just got shot to pieces. It was a good idea. <laughs> so unlucky with what happened right in front of them when they were falling down. They got two kills. It wasn't the worst thing in the world, STK. Fair, fair. Smoking their way across the road now as they land in this. Oh, Vox will hit a big shot with a dragon off, and that gets sparking down and not out. Kurt's got to be careful as he will go prone. Alo and Luke 12 will push a little bit further forward, but gas cans are ready to defend their turf, to defend their territory. Alo, you got a really nice stun grenade thrown through that little window. Alo throws a defensive nade on the other side, but gas cans are ready for this fight. Adam, Ooh, he's inside. He's, I thought around the side, but yeah, he's inside. He's inside. <laughs> Hard to tell sometimes from these angles, but smokes are coming out, limiting the angles of the wide north flank. But that's a great frag grenade. Yeah, Luke is barely alive. Just about, but that is big for STK, keeping Luke on his feet. The other members of STK are alive now as well. Adam. 
He's doing a stall, that's a pretty good blue need. The blue zone, that should force them out of the Panthers line of sight. And Panthers need is perfect. Two members of STK gone in the blink of an eye. And Curtain Sparking will just stay inside their tower. But Tammy, the zone has made them and forced them to leave. And Rats now are looking to clear their edge as they do even more damage to STK. This is actually a really good circle for gas cans, especially once they got these knocks. They're gonna have to go push through rats. The spoon is here, flexed away from the rest of his team to try and pick up kills here and there while they can. This is an even better position for rats, shall we say, because they can just hang out in this small power and just take the kills, but a little bit of extra damage the spoon wasn't hoping for, so perhaps retreating away from that one. But gas cans just full focus on this tower. I don't think SDK had the utility that they were hoping for or really preferred to have to take Gas Can's position. No, I think you're right. Bestia pushing in, in this position, and while Spam will do a little bit of damage to them, Stills and Draft King are still alive, and Draft King is peeking around the edge. The Nade does a ton of damage onto him as already. Yes, will be forced to hold back Draft King, but Draft King might just use this opportunity to get his teammates back. Never mind. Draft King wants to. Uh, Keep an eye on the windows as the peak will come on the other side. Silzen, a little bit too far away just yet. Draft King will fall at the hands of Richie B as gas cans will come and crash this position now instead. Adding kills to their tally. Six now for gas cans with one member of spam alive in the circle and best year eliminated. I love this way of the gas cans. It's away from the zone, but they're going for kills because of how open the middle of this zone is. They just want to get the kill points. And also it has the added benefit of depending on how healthy they are when they leave, it's going to be fewer teams to contest with to get inside. This is such a great play for the gas cans. They like to play conservative in the early game, but they know how to explode when they need to. Yeah, RDS is eliminated. Gas cans up to eight kills as they close the gap to STK, who do still have two players alive. Sonics, they've pushed onto that little mini, you know, land island, I suppose you want to call it, that little plateau that we saw a couple of teams die on earlier, but... I feel like with the vehicles, with the trees, they could actually make something work with this as we get later into the game. And Cam, is there anything else that you're seeing around the circle that, that's worth mentioning as we move towards phase five? Uh, all I see is just this, this Northwest. It's getting pushed in by the zone. Ooh, oh, Sparky landed the headshot on Bizzler. I don't know if they can rush based off of that, but it's certainly gonna slow gas cans down. But nope, they're going for it. They gotta take this fight. Yeah, this blue zone's getting involved as well. Phase 5, you can see that Sparking's taking 5 damage every second he's here. Gas cans are actually picking up their teammate and moving inside the circle. Vox will get knocked by Gats and let's see if STK can still can steal. Sparking will pick up Vox. Richie B will fall. Or he's still down inside that little dip, but this ain't going good for gas cans now. Sparking will go down. Kurt will fall as well. STK get one extra point from the placements on the back of that. But I feel like gas cans might be following them out the door yeah. pretty quickly. Good kill points, but suddenly positioning is no longer viable. That's why they went for those kills when they could, because they knew that rats would be tearing them apart when they tried to make it into the zone. The next shift continues to go towards the southeast. And now Sonics, they're going to be holding out a, a little bit of a, a defensive line from the teams from the west, as well as potentially the north. And this is where the lack of cover might start to come into play. They're already using a bunch of smokes, but those are going to be limited. Oh, great shots from PWD. Mercy with four kills, but it's kind of the first chance we've really had to see them in what you would call a late game tonight so far. They have uh, 20 points on the board. They'll be looking to add to it as 55 will play inside the tower. M Mercy, I, I've just noticed. Do you see how horrible this bit of terrain they have to play with is no, no, This is rough. Listen, they were sitting safe from phase two they were already on the Stay south food? side of the peninsula so i shed no tears they did not have to worry about surviving at all up until this point i mean i'm disappointed you should have said they were sitting safe through there for a while as h1 Bad. will get crashed by rats two members will fall gats will pull one back but sonic's making really quick work what's left of the rats shrimsy dancing through the smoke will step out but doesn't want to move too far outside the smoke for fear of a third party as they dance around, Grant Lantis is outside the circle now too. And that'll be Kickstart getting the knock onto Gats. And that'll be confirmed out. Sonics should get the res off onto Tig. But they hold back. They lose one. But Sonics pick up a few more points. And watch Adam. Watch Grant Lantis. And watch Legacy. Who could be looking to capitalize on this. Legacy are pushing forward. They're at least taking the opposite end of the ridge line. Grant Lentis goes down to the M249 of Kickstart. But now Legacy's position. I think they're gearing up to try and go for a major push here. 
smokes being thrown just to provide you with some cover and there's a lot of caution they know that it's sonics that are up on this ridge line and they don't necessarily want to play the trade game even though they know they have the numbers over sonics because if you do that you invite another third party from 55 who you also know are nearby adam just snaking his way trying is that rocking that rock might just be in cami and if he can get there i don't think, I it, think is. it is no i don't i don't think it is mm, no i think you're right but he does see all the sonics and uh if only he had an m249 right i'm a fan though i do like snake plays i do like snake plays and adam listen it's all about Legacy and Sonics fighting and Adam having an opportunity to follow up behind the damage that they do to each other. Because they're not looking behind at all. They're looking at each other. The utility is going to start to flow out. Going to start to go flying. No knocks just yet. There it is. That's the first. Adam might just step up yet. Yeah, more utility. Here comes the full sweep from Legacy. No clue about Adam in the distance. He sees Kickstart, who's oblivious to the fact that he's in this position. He'll go for the kill on the Shrimzy. He transfers over. He gets another knock. Tiggleton's the last one standing. He will fail Adam. But Tiggleton now in a one versus one with Gizera on the edge. RB ends a little bit further back. But Gizera will continue to fall towards his teammate. And that might buy Tiggleton enough time to go for the res on the kick. The thunder from down under does just about enough. No, he wants the utility. He is locked in on this fight with the two members of Legacy. He gets himself one. Gizera. Last man standing now for Leg Legacy. It's two of the best players in the Americas, and Tiggleton wins it. Sonic, when move up to 14 kills. When can we talk about Tiggleton being the GOAT of PUBG? Honestly, at this point, he has been at the top of his game for so many years. What an amazing defense there. Doesn't get the revive, but it doesn't matter because the points are there, putting themselves at the top of the leaderboard, still trailing Falcons with their 71 points. But oh my god. How good is Tiggleton? He's always been that good. He has always been there. And I think he's an example for all aspiring young PUBG players with his work ethic as well. But going into this late game, 4v3, v3, v1. Tiggleton, where does he go from here? He's getting held by 55. The zone has gone against him. And, well, Mercy may have just been gifted a pretty good position in the circle. <laughs> That wasn't where I parked, that was parked, was it? That's what Tiggleton's asking himself. <laughs> oh god, Future Here. now with the sand, directly into Mercy territory, but Mercy are getting all the knocks there. Quickly, quick as that. More cover, more vehicles, it gives them even more to work with as they deal with that one. 4v3v1, 55 might just be the next to attempt to make the exact same crossing. Tig gets just about something inside the zone and he's locked in with his fight with 55. This, this is set up. Even though they've got three players, this should be a mercy win, Kami. The problem for Tiggleton right now is trying to make anything out of this difficult because no smokes. You're going to have to go and find these knocks real fast, real quick. Almost gets the first there. But it looks like Psycho is rushing towards uh, his position. Mercy is overwatching this entire thing. But yeah, as you say, this, is, this, this surely has got to be a, a mercy win. Gotta be Tig spraying through the smoke. He's got plenty of ammo to work with. And the longer he keeps 55 locked in, the more of a chance this is for Mercy. Tiggleton peeking up, doing a ton of damage, but the blue zone will send for him. 4v3. PWD gets the knock to level the numbers. And that one should get a really good timer put onto the back. But PWD spots out Lopez, who has the dragon off. So PWD's level 3 helmet will do him a ton of favors if he does eat. One of those seven, six, two rounds. The fact that Mercy have eight kills, I think, is more than I would have expected here. Granted, part of four of them were AKA, who came in from an unconventional angle, shall we say. But still, Mercy, this was going to be a really good game for them. Granted, assuming they are able to convert. Now that Tiggleton is out of the picture, suddenly 55 have a lot, have a lot more room to play with. You see Psycho running all the way towards the north. I thought Tiggleton would have dealt more damage to 55, or at least set themselves into a position for Mercy to deal the damage. But at this point, it's not so cut and dry of Mercy having a huge advantage in this final fight. Yeah, that level 3 gear just saved PWD's life as well. That was a huge wrap from Psycho. But because PWD got that crate a little while earlier, the damage was not dealt enough to get that knock. Glock will find sneak attack though, and maybe that's something that 55 can begin to work with. The blue zone is at their backs. 
And Glock wants the move, but two tires are gone on that Dacia, and that is a problem. PWD peaks once more while Lucid gets the res off on the sneak. The resets are happening, the reloads are happening, the revives are coming through. Lopez pushes forward now as well. Across the road has the tree as extra cover. Gonna try and shepherd the rest of the squad, and PWD is trying to do the same. But the grenade yeah. comes out, it goes just a little short, but the trajectory looked good. Yeah, it's a, l a little bit way too much short the steam for the second one that has been thrown as Lucid gets the knock on the Psycho. The man, better, that's better. better day. That's what you were looking for, Lopez. Two versus two. Glock and Lopez working together. Mercy are pushing for the res and they're going to pay. A sneak attack will fall. It is all down to Lucid. He's prone. He's got his back to the wall. And surely he cannot win. Lopez one taps it. And just like that, 55 take the win. And oh, they sent for the res, and that might have been the wrong call. But that's a big game for 55. Take nothing away from them. Yeah, listen, four kills is a very, very low kill count. But when you when we saw what phase two was, I think they don't mind. Hey, it's 14 points. 14 yeah. more than they had before that map started. It's exactly it's getting very close to the end of the first day. We're going to give it back to the studio to talk you through our first Aaron Gill. 55 out here with no mercy to be had on a very uh, crazy. Uh, yeah, the circle um, left a lot to be desired, especially as far as playable space is concerned. And some of these teams, I mean, Mercy got on this uh, angle quite early there on the south side. This was probably one of the most unfortunate <laughs> things I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, right on top of them. This is the difference. Molotov. God's like, you, oh, you know, there, there needed to be more space and stuff like that. Meanwhile, there's just us laughing maniacally in the background. Yeah, and then, oh, I mean, so gas funny. cans, though, I mean, mm. great job. Mm. Nice shot from Sparking, but gas cans did the best with what they were given, right? Pushing on that north side of that edge, pretty much clearing out all the teams, and then massive play from El Tigatono. You say uh, Ogleton? Thank you very much. Oh. <laughs> uh, is what I'm going to be talking about now. Ogleton, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, come on, Legacy. You can't just give the man three one v ones like this you gotta you gotta oh, put you can. a little bit better when you're pushing a guy like that as uh as we see then mercy i mean it, it was not they did not have great space to fight at the end yeah. here it was really unfortunate uh but uh, 55 doing a really really good job of clutching up uh, there at the end four kills will do something but uh look at that it's not even good enough to get them in Second place, Matt. Yeah, Mercy, man. They had a run of kills from that very terrible position. Sonic's racking out with 14. He's going to go ahead and put them at the first and overall leaderboard at 19 overall. Gas Can's going to be back behind that with Legacy. A lot of usual contenders showing up over here now. As it feels like Legacy is doing a good job of making it into the top, I'd say like five to six on a pretty regular basis, going for very points per game heavy kind of approach, right? Yeah, you could. I mean, you yeah. could say that. I, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I think what it comes down the to. Nicest way of saying no. <laughs> it's okay. I you think disagree with me, guys. No, no, no. It's it's not so much that. I think the big point that we made at the top of the show about Mercy is: are they going to be able to kind of carry that momentum in the in the kill heavy gameplay on the edge that we saw in the group stages as well as LCQ in this lobby? And so far, it's been a little bit of a struggle. They have not been able to get that footing yet, but. I mean, this could be the start of that momentum gaining, especially because, again, we talked about how good Mercy has been on the edge and overall in these lobbies. So this one, definitely a little tougher for them to get that footing, but um, who knows? Maybe next game they can kind of follow up with uh, some more success. I mean, our top four are feeling pretty familiar at this point with a couple of yep. outliers back behind that. I think that we had some eyes on Mercy Gaming and potentially Space Station Gaming doing a touch better is it just for us. the circle nature god speed or what's going on with them do you think uh i think a big part i mean that 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 game i think was it tego whichever game ssg basically had the advantage and flood got the three knocks that that was kind of a, a big fumble i think for ssg again having to go back and watch that mike i think you'd agree but overall <laughs> They've had good rotations. Another game that they kind of got cut out was when Falcons were up in their nest, right, on Vikendi. So it's been kind of a weird day for SSG. Uh, overall, I think their macro has been solid. But, um, yeah, just getting that micro and the team fighting together is what they probably need to work on as far as going into day two, especially in this lobby. Weird circles disrupting teams' plans, but I'm very much enjoying them. 
We now get to focus on, on a very specific team we haven't got a chance to really follow through as I believe you had yeah. your eyes on Bestia, right, Porn? Yeah, so Bestia it was a team that I had my eyes on coming into today. I thought that they had a, a really decent showing in the group stages. And, uh, you know, with the addition of Sharp Shot, I think that's that makes them super interesting to watch, right? So uh, they decide early on after that farm drop to take the uh, emergency pickup and they end up getting a really nice spot here in the trenches very early on. They do fortunately get lucky enough to where they don't have to move off of that wild, wild circle two split, but eventually they do have to make a push. So they realize, I think they got a read on this compound that there was that fight between OG and Falcon. I don't know if they realized how many people were left in there, but uh, they do make the full four man push and they take care of Mime and they secure this, uh, themselves a, a pretty good foothold there. And once again, get a little bit of luck, but then that hard shift away just made it so, so difficult. They had to make a decision about to do something. They end up deciding to go and try to crash on a spam. It did not work out. Carrick was ready to go. And uh, they do end up taking out most of spam in the end here, but then gas cans, just in the perfect place, perfect time. They saw exactly what was going on. Silzen tries to see if he can maybe sneak something away with a grenade, but Adam was all <laughs> over it. And uh, yep, that is that is a sad boy right there. As, as, uh, as Bestia goes out a little early. Just disappointment, Gatsby. Just sheer disappointment. You can like see oh. it on the mast face. Just so you drop your lunch at school and you just like look at it and you're like, yep, <laughs> yeah, that was my good day ruins, but here we are. Yep, mm -hmm. that was my that was my chocolate milk. None That's that. my chalky <laughs> milk, my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Why? Okay, <laughs> well, we're gonna go ahead and start making our way into our last game, but let's not forget the fact that it is going to be on Aaron Gell, and we still have our trivia that we have to finish out. So we are gonna give oh you guys a finale of what's going on with the trivia. Welcome to Update 28.2. Join us for our 7th anniversary celebrations, an all new SMG experience in the arcade, and finally, the recall system update. We've got lots of surprises in store for you to celebrate our 7th birthday. Erangel's school will be transformed into a festive 7th anniversary venue. Plus, keep an eye out for throwable cupcakes and surprise gift boxes scattered across the starting island of each map. We've been hard at work balancing the SMGs to offer a more unique experience and accommodate various gunplay strategies. The arcade is all set for you to try out these changes, so get that early feel and let us know what you think. And there's more exciting news. Based on your positive feedback, we're expanding the recall system to include Vikendi and Tago. Check out the patch notes to discover all the details of this update. Lastly, this patch also includes weapon mastery updates, world bug fixes, and performance tweaks. Be sure to dive into the patch notes for all the details. And we'll see you on the battlegrounds. And welcome back to the PUBG Quiz. My name is Matchroom, and I've got myself here with Carrick, Adam, and Sharpshot. Our present score is moving into round three. Our potentially last round, unless we need to do a tiebreaker, is Carrick is at eight points, Sharp is at 11, and Adam is at 12. Well, our last round is just one question. And the way it's going to work is, you're going to have five hints. The earlier you can answer this question, it's the fact that you're going to get more points. If you answer after the first hint, you get five, Four for the second, three, two, and one diminishing down. And I will give you a hint that the entirety of the purpose is to guess who dis. I'm going to be giving you hints on a player that you have interacted with in the past. Everybody ready? Let's do it. Yes, sir. Yeah. First hint on who dis is he was born in the year 2000. Remember, you only get one opportunity to lock in. So if you lock Who's in locking right in now, right now, I locked in, baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's got goals. <laughs> Who's locking in right now? 
All right. You guys want me to move on to the second hint? Hint number two. He finished eighth in PGC 2023. We have also had Carrick lock in. So now it is just Adam. You want another hint? No, I'm going to lock it in. All right. You're going to lock in? I'm locking in. I will go ahead and read the last two for the viewers, or last three, I'm sorry, for our viewers. His first S tier win was in 2020 with Oath Gaming. <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> he started his PUBG career in Sway Esports. And our last hint is his real name is Noah G. Oh my. <laughs> oh! <laughs> so with this, let's see what our players have locked in. Carrick, you have locked in. Carrick, TMZ. <laughs> Sharpshot, you have locked in. Sharpshot 4K. <laughs> and There's Adam, no you way. have locked in I'm Tiggleton. Sorry. So nobody gets any points for this round. <laughs> so with this, that means that our total points for the end of this, with no points coming up in round three, is going to be Adam, our winner at 12 points. Sharp, the 11 in second place. And Carrick with eight in third place. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for coming and hanging out and playing PUBG Quiz with us. Really, really appreciate it. I hope you guys had fun. GG, that was fun. Então o trabalho é mim, velho. Só vem, velho. Tô indo. Os caras tão vindo atrás de mim. Eles vão vir bater em nós, tá? Tá, então vamos postar no lugar, velho. Sim. Eu acho que eu vi na casa esquerda. Ok. Limpimos a casa. A minha tá arriba nosso, a minha tá arriba nosso, ok? Ok, ok. Limpiamos. Quero uma neia, logo? No, fue mía. Voy. Ok, vamos. Vamos para arriba. Está ahí en la calera. Ahí, 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 ahí. Sí, 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 así, así. Buenísimo, chicos. Reseten. Tranquilidad. Sí, voy a la otra. Va a chocar para hacer paso. ¿Ves cómo se quiere entrar a segunda da? No, ¿no? Morre, morre. ¿Y ahí? No, no, no. No, no, no. No, no, no. Muy ruim lá. No tiene como entrar. No se quebra la puerta y entra, ¿no? Não. Tá vendo. Cara, me dá nada um, velho. No cor eu não consigo finalizar, não consigo finalizar. Tá, vou tentar. Linda porra. Não, 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 Okay. Hace tiempo, no creo yo. Me va a quedar otro, me va a quedar otro. Me estoy curando, me estoy curando. Coms, coms. Uh, nos viene Sonic. Los dejo pasar, Drag. Ok. Se fueron, se fueron, se fueron. Sí, se está al lado mío, está abajo, abajo en la habitación grande. Me creció otro equipo. Que lo llegas. Están todos ahí, Sitan. Welcome back into PAS3. The final map is coming right up. And you know what I learned in that break, Cami? That if I'm ever confused and don't know the answer for a quiz question, just write your own name. Why oh, not yeah. give it a go? Yeah, gotta have confidence. Listen, if you aren't gonna put yourself first, what's even the point? So, uh, yeah, who who was uh, who was the last president of the United States? Gibson Cast. There we go. Good chance. Yep. There's good chance Listen. I could be right. It's more than zero. I'm never the answer for a question unless it's who died first in the ranked stack. That's pretty much what it is. But Kami, one more map to go. We're jumping into this one. And uh, what about this for a flight path? Quite east. Uh, quite east. However, I will say this is the worst plane path we've had so far. Oh, maybe that means the circle will be better. Don't, don't, even, don't even say that just yet. This could be so much worse than what we had. The first time it does That's though true. can we mean we'll have some alt drops because you know a lot of these teams like to drop right. george gatka etc they have to change up their plans and this is where sometimes we'll see more early game fights we already have two teams on salznavka which is more than usual 
at this point, even though like back in the day, back, 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 back in the day, the loot there was really valuable. At this point, now that like rotations are more important, punishing bridge camps are a bigger thing. It's rare to see anyone go to Salznovka as like their main loot drop unless they absolutely have to. But again, with the plane path as bad as this one is, two teams there sort of identify that. SSG going for a split drop as well, with Pixel going towards Stalber alongside Cowboy and Page and right. Roth going a bit further north. They'll secure some of those esports uh, vehicles. They'll get themselves a good position. But the zone is about to shift in three, two, one, and uh, you okay. know what? Bam. That's that's pretty good. I nailed it. This is a that's... normal circle for once. I mean, the Miramar ones were like okay, but I, th I think and Vikendi is... always, and you can't have any like. On normal circles on Vikendi. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's. I think for Vikendi, we're still getting there. We're still trying to work everything out with this one. Old Guard, though, 10th place. Wait, 20... wait, wait. First, though, first, though, before we talk about oh. Old Guard, though, we do oh. have one final question that we asked our pro players what their goals are this tournament. Well, our goals in this tournament, um, as every, everyone's goals, I think, it's um, to get a spot on land and represent Brazil. And my team and my own goal for this tournament is to qualify to the Lance. That's the only goal. Yeah, our goal this tournament as a team is obviously to win since it's our first online event, surprisingly with Kickstart. I mean, we've only played PGC with them and then there was a long off season after. So uh, personally, we all want to, I want to win, everyone wants to win. I think realistically with pain and stuff, like top three would be um, a decent finish, but yeah, it's not what we're aiming for. What a surprise that all the players' goal is to qualify for PGS. That's um, right. That's a real surprise. <laughs> Didn't see that answer coming. But was that an OG Furia jersey I saw on Kill Demo as well? By the way, it's uh, it's, it's clean. Oh, I actually I wasn't paying attention, so. I was listening. I was putting all my focus on, on my ears. But, I mean, obviously when the camera is in front of them, they're going to say, my goal is to win. That's what you want. But you know that for different teams. They subconsciously or probably even consciously, they know the real expectations. And even though winning would be nice, like Falcons, Sonics, SDK, they know that winning is very much on the board and it's all up to them. Other teams like uh, Rats, 55, Future, for them it's more about, like, can we really put up a fight? Winning would be absolutely amazing if it can happen, but they would be absolutely delusional if they thought that they had a huge chance of winning up against a, a lobby like this. Yeah. On a very, oh, we'll talk about that later. Page gets one, but he's going to get traded back by Vox. The, you've got Adam way off in the distance, but remember, SSG did have a wide split, and they are going to lose Page off the back of it. So SSG... A day one to forget for them as they'll lose one early, but maybe they can make something happen at oh the end God. of this one. This is... Wait, I, I was so focused on just talking about that interview that... I, I'm sorry, I have to actually re rewind the map because it looks like gas cans just got weapons and sent it onto Paige, and it seemed to have worked. It seemed to have caught them off guard. I mean, that was a, a what, Tommy gun that we saw in play? Yep. They saw the opportunity for a quick kill point, and they took it. It's actually a pretty clever play, but yeah. what what I was going to bring up just before that, Cammy, was right. uh, we, we've spoken to players, right? On the video, they're going to say, we expect to qualify, that's our goal. But as you pointed out, when the camera's not rolling, they'll be like, you know what? We're happy to be here. Getting to this is, in essence, our equivalent of qualifying for PGS because there's so much talent there. So a lot of these players are just going to enjoy the weekend. And you know what? Sometimes losing that bit of pressure could get you up into the positions where you yeah. know you, you get a bit of prize money, you get some PGC points for later on in the year. Right. Yeah, exactly. And honestly, even though you know that you're not quote unquote supposed to be winning an event like this, you still do want to tell yourselves and your team, like, listen, this is what we can do in order to make that happen. Now, will they be expecting it? I don't know so much. But regardless, they're going to be going for it. No one is sitting here saying, like, ah, well, we had a good time. Like, they're they're competitive players. That's why they're here to begin with. We're the only ones that can sit here and say that we had a good time, right? It's as simple as that, as we get to watch these players, best players in the Americas, go head to head. 55 currently sitting in seventh spot, 24 points for them. That win really helped them with climbing the table because what that 
They got 14 points. They were sitting on 10 before that one. So they've shot up the, rock, the leaderboard. Falcons on 71, though. Like, we all... I think everyone was in agreement that Falcons are 99 to 100% sure to qualify through to, to PGS. And I think most people would even say they're in with a chance of winning. But 71 points after five maps, like... That is just fantastic form, especially in a lobby as strong as this one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Now, I think mathematically it is possible for them to not even be in, like, top eight at this point. But this puts them so far ahead. The stress it has got to have washed off their backs. But, they're, I mean, they're still going to be playing. They're still going to be focused. They're still going to make sure that they hit, hit those top positions and probably try and maintain first place. They're not that amateur. Like, they're not amateurs at all. They're not going to be giving any opening mentally. But the lack of stress alone could, as you said earlier, even for teams that don't expect to be winning, that does that could potentially make them perform even better. Yeah, and I think that SSG are a team that are under a lot of pressure. But let's turn our attention to Sam Crow. He's got Grant Landis in his sights. And, well, maybe his sights were a little bit off as he fires those bullets. A little bit, uh, a little bit off their target. Grant will be fine. And that will feed so much information. Chun and Gats beginning to wrap around the side. Grant Landis. Grant is doing a great job of just keeping the attention of the rest of Future, allowing the rest of Rats to get in a position where they could take advantage of Future. Frogman now. A player that's pulled out some really good moments for Future, but coming in, pushing in from the low ground, rats with multiple angles, Grant Lantis there on the higher spot. But they're pulling away. Uh, too many angles, too wide, too spread. They don't want to give anything up. It's way too early to commit for to a hold here. And if anything, they actually might potentially have to go through Future in order to get to the zone, depending on where it shifts. They are further away from the center than Future are, so really just managing their position, managing their spacing, and Phase one and most of phase two, most of the time is all about preparing your rotations less than actually confirming kills and getting in fights. Yeah, you're, you're spot on with that because you can't really win a game in phase one, but you can certainly lose it if you make the wrong decision, oh, right. you push to the wrong position. But most of these players, they have a game plan. They kind of plotted out what they wanted to do the second that circle popped in. I expect it to be like this, you know, one player dead after eight, nine minutes, everyone getting a bit of a position. But gas cans, 39 points. They've really been hit or miss this tonight so far. They got the win on the very first game of the night, and they've just kind of been ticking away, picking up a few points here and there for the rest of the night. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's how to make an entrance, I suppose. <laughs> listen, listen, good luck. Good luck hitting that. So if anyone was in that compound ready to take some shots, they would have just given their position away. Now, gas cans, that was full calculated. Honestly, I love that we got his POV of that as well because right. all you see is sky, grass, sky, grass. Yep, that was what, what I um, meant to... Listen, I, I cannot claim to have come up with this, but I think it's amazing. On a, uh, on a broadcast, someone was someone's vehicle started rolling down a hill and someone in chat just said oh yes they pulled the anti-headshot maneuver <laughs> <laughs> I, so that's all i can think about whenever i see vehicles do that i'm like yeah yeah good luck hitting this see when f stuff like that happens though chat is the funny like i love it i absolutely adore it some of the stuff they come up with is genius oh, God, we'll to... uh oh gats will get one is he going to get some more on the back of that one Seifu falls as well. Gats is standing his ground. And he'll get at least one of those kills confirmed. The rest of Mercy are already long gone. But that's brilliant from Gats. Two more kills for them. What about Rat start today? They've gone kind of under the radar, but they're picking up points every single game. And it's not a fantastic day one, but it's certainly the type of day one that you need if you want to give yourself a chance going into the rest of the weekend. Yeah, I mean, the real challenge is trying to make sure that they can then extend that further, that mid-game action further into the late game and try and get multiple opportunities to confirm the first place, confirm the chicken dinner. But with a shift like this, maybe we can start seeing that. They already have a couple of kills. They're in a nice central position. Hard shift towards the east. Good for SSG. Great for future, but they might start to get pressured by spam. Sonics are currently rotating in just next to Bestia. Legacy lying in wait, waiting for a couple of the teams to be coming in from the west. It is still phase two. So I imagine teams like the Sonics will be taking this one a bit slowly. They don't need to rush for 
anything just yet unless they are absolutely sure that they have the trajectory down. Bestia are sending it forward. Lunar Galaxy are sending it into the zone. And then there's, I think both teams might be sending it directly into Rat's territory. Yeah, and we've already seen what Rats did to Mercy a little bit earlier. Nateo from Pichao looking to add to his damage total of the night as Falcons make their way past. 55 are on the way there as well as Flood's vehicle starts. Oh, big headshot landed there under the rotating Falcons, but another shot will not be landed just yet. More damage taken, but I think they'll play in and around those prison walls. For now, Falcons make... Last time we saw Falcons here, it didn't go too well for Flood. Let's uh, let's hope that Flood manages to secure a position inside of prison this time. Nah, they're good. They're here first. But yeah, Bestia running directly into Luna Galaxy. They're north of Rats. Bestia did lose a player on the rotate. Silzen has gone down. Sharpshot's taking a little bit of damage. But hey, three up. Worst things can happen to you. And the Pippa running out in the open is making me very, very nervous. Very, very nervous. He's, he's all good. Like, who's, who are Luna Galaxy? Like, like they're not, <laughs> they don't even know he's there. But Pipa could cause a problem. Fixing spotted out by Pipa. Kraken's a little bit closer. He's maybe the one you gotta worry about. He switches to the DMR and Fixing spotted him. Pipa falls. And that is the player who was running out in the open spotted. And here comes utility from Kraken. But Sharp Shot is still in a position. Kraken takes a ton of damage, but he gets Sharp Shot in return. And well, for Bastia, you said that being down to three is not the worst thing to happen. What about being down to one? Pretty bad. Pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I don't, um, I think my deep analytical knowledge of this game tells me, hmm, yep, bad. Bad, yeah. bad. Not great, not great, not great. It's and also, <laughs> Mime's here. <laughs> He's going to hear it too. He hears DraftKing pushing inside. Nade's getting prepared. And Nathan's going to push back from the stairs as Falcons will look to clear the solo player. DraftKing gets his 1v1. He needs, to put, he needs to win this fight really quickly. If you don't win this fight quickly, the rest of Falcons will push. DraftKing knows the door's open, cuts it open, but DraftKing falls. Bestia are eliminated. And you know what? Your statistics were right. Playing with one player is not as effective as playing with four. Future here, they heard that fight, trying to pick up maybe an opportunity or two, but... The trading blows the Snakers, pushes Sam away, makes them think twice about committing to that fight. The only problem for Falcons is that getting out of prison if this thing hard shifts towards the west, but its current position in the zone gives it a good chance of staying inside, and I think they have their vehicle safe. One of them to get knocked should be a easy enough revive. Flood is getting a couple of flashbacks as you say, to the last time he was in prison, but hey, look at that. Pretty, pretty hard shift, medium, medium to hard, southeast. Great for Luna Galaxy, again, great for Rats, pretty good for AKA, but AKA have been in good positions in the mid-game multiple times before. R rough success on trying to convert that into a top four podium position. No time like the present, though, to turn that around, as they've got the south pretty much all to themselves, but as you can see, Mercy are rotating in. RBN will catch out H-Win as they make their way into the circle. Sonics in second place, but down to three for the rest of the night. Future will lose one to Yakuz as well as Pichao get a point on the board for themselves. And engine is caught. They have found a spot in the hill they want to play on. Sneak Attack actually gets the opening knock on that one. That's a big crash on the south. I'm just keeping an eye on the kill feed to what's going on. But look at Kickstart spotted out by the spoon, who will take his head off. I, I get why Sonics would want to just stick in this position and try and go for fights, but the problem is there are so many teams around this area, it is so open, which is good opportunities for the fights, and I think they can even get the revive on to kickstart. And terrazoka has gone down, Tickleton's trying to apply that pressure, but it's Rats to the north that are the real big threat. The spoon has been knocked, though, and I don't know if that's going to get revived, because Rats are so widespread from each other, perhaps trying to look for too many opportunities, and that's going to get uh, executed upon, going to get punished by the teams around them. Yeah, and you can just see the remains of that fight between Mercy as well and the picture in picture. Sonic get kickstart back on his feet. He's fully rezzed as, uh, yeah, mine bullets. I love mine bullets. Sam Crow has been knocked as Pichao will fall back just a little bit. Get some cover in Teo looking up as uh, we see another fight happening between STK and Gas Cans in the kill feed as well. That's happening on the edge of Lepovka. Alo had the P90. But he has fallen, but gas cans have a tough rotate to make their way to the circle. I think Sparkin's just going to get Alo into this car and drive on out of there. Probably, especially with the blue applying the pressure that it is. Luke 12, a little bit of a solo angle. 
I mean, a lot of bit of a solo, solo angle, actually. But what I mean is that it's not a full committed of one looking for an opportunity. But as long as the vehicle is within reach, should be able to get out of that. Kurt in a similar position. The only problem is they don't have anyone inside the zone. They don't have an inside man to help them shepherd in without a risk of there being a team waiting. Yeah, I think Kurt's going to stay along the coast as well. Gas cans waiting inside the blue as long as they can. Look, 12 going for a flank as well as Aylo will now get brought back to his feet and well now they do that Shepard but here comes Sonics pushing further towards the edge of prison Falcons yes they're central inside the zone but I agree with what you said earlier it's a very difficult move for them if they have to leave prison yeah particularly when you look at the teams that are surrounding them where's the next zone gonna go Sonics did overtake the territory that they stole from future that hides them from Rath not 55 pushing in from the north into Pichau Santa peeking out through the window. Lopez is going to fall at the hands of Brisa. A spammer providing cover here for Pichao. As 55 just want to get as many points on the board in this final game of the day. Two kills for them. They should get the res off as Psycho will get Lopez back on his feet. And Pichao have gone full defense here. You can see them tossing smokes on the door, making sure they can't get caught from up on top of the hill. But for Pichao... A 55 get within throwable distance here at all. It could be all but over for them. And that molly seals way too far. 55 have a lot of space, you're right. Because they got the revives and there's no more damaging utility coming out. They can just use this deathly to peek on over. I don't think Spam are going to have an angle with now the full push comes on through. They have their own grenades at the ready. But why? Because Answers gets the first knock on the clock. And now all you got to do is get this last two players it's psycho and slabby pushing onto the hill one player down on the edge santa will confirm out that kill yakuza got his kill confirmed as well as pichao moved to three here comes spam now as well slabby's in a ton of trouble the drive by kerak will find slabby and for 55 this has gone awfully for them on the crash reses for spam but the blue zone is closing yeah. in and closing in fast and that is going to be very problematic they still have a vehicle but they have no option but to clown car it once again to try and make it into the zone. Oh, no. And now Psycho evened it up. 1v1. And at this point, I mean, it's on the edge, but it is still in the zone. It's in the safe zone. So these two players don't have to fight. The real question is, how does Spam respond? They are pushing forward. Jabari went first. Briss has been left behind. And then the rest are all apl uh, applying pressure from different angles. Grenade misses, but there's, I'm sure there's more where that came from. There it is. Yeah, that's a better need. The player erupts into flame on the other side. Psycho should fall. Kerak with the need will do the damage. But do they know about Pichao still above? Gaberi inside the blue zone need. Yeah, mate, you got to get out of that because that's doing 10 damage a second. As Santa has to hold his own once more. As you can see, Sonics are just keeping their eye on this. They know for a fact that they'll be able to pick up the pieces of the teams that leave this gunfight at the end. And... Yeah, Gaberi with another need. Get, if he gets it through the window, does it go far enough? Um, no. No, it doesn't. Well, at least they know that there's a, a player there. It's quite... Depending on how successful of kill feed reading they'd have been, it's possible that they could have just gone assuming or at least hoping that that top spot was empty. More grenades still being applied. Not going to find here, but Sparkin gets the knock. Kurt's there with the rest of the pressure. And SDK are holding out the push from gas cans. And the Bizzler falls. Santa has got everybody from... Right, all Spam got to do is play the trade game. If you know the players up there, you can send two to three players up the stairs. And here's the first one. Gaberi will push. But he went by himself. You've just given up a player's life for nothing. You have to play the trade game there. Stone where it's thrown. They will get Santa. But they have just made a massive error in judgment. When you know there's a player there, when you're confident, you can't just send one player up by himself. Yeah, that's, that's an unforced error. And they get punished for it. I mean, they still have three up, and they got the rest of the player out. The circle, it doesn't shift too far away from them. But SDK, they've been managing their spacing pretty well so far. This part of Erangel is one of the hardest to fight around because it's a slope, but there is still, like, no cover. And so they can get high ground peak by teams like OG, teams like Luna Galaxy, gas cans applying pressure coming in from the Povka. Adam is the last one left of that squad. So should kill their surviving so far, but they need to get these knocks against OG in order to make their way into the zone safely. And, and that's if Luna Galaxy left them. Mm -hmm. Sparking with the angle up onto OG. I just want to say something. We had the minimap up for a second, and SSG have just moved to lock Falcons in prison. 
Like, do you see their position? They have pushed towards yeah. the north because they know Falcons have to come out. That is a purposeful decision from SSG to make sure that they can't get flanked and to ruin Falcons' map and pick up some points for themselves. The circle closing is going to force fights together. MG3 of Cowboy finds Adam. That's Gaskins eliminated in 11th place. Currently in 5th. It's possible that AKA or even Spam overtake them, but I'll say quite unlikely. Yeah. Yeah, I got to agree with you. It's, it's, it's too much of a gap with 10 teams left alive. They'll be pretty happy with their first day. They won't be ecstatic with it because they'll always feel like they left something out there. But if you're in fifth place going into day two, you're certainly in with a chance, particularly whenever there are three spots up for grabs for PGS. STK cleared enough space on the edge to make their way in, but they're now moving very close to SSG. Three men up for them, plus create weapons. So won't be necessarily the easiest players to deal with. But they're still very cautious about Falcons, right? They know they can play further up this ridge line, but they don't want to let Falcons out from inside prison. Yeah, I mean, there's really no way for Falcons to get out of prison at this point anyway, especially with the zone closing in and locking them out. Unless they have uh, jammer packs and have vehicles at the ready to just speed out of that towards the north and then immediately wrap towards the west. It's looking quite unlikely. This is a placement point play for the Falcons from the very beginning. Quite an early commitment to prison. I mean, look, they're at 72 points. Like, it's fine. <laughs> they're not getting, they're not going to be feeding points over to the opposition, I'll tell you that much. They are prepared to die in prison. And you never know. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first person to do also, that. wait a second. Do they have an e-pickup? Could you imagine? Oh, wow. They might actually have an e-pickup. That would be hilarious if they do. This zone might shift their way, too. You never know. As we get ready, Kickstart's got spam, and Kickstart's going to get RDS. There's another kill on the board for Sonics. They are on 47 points now. The zift, the zone shift, as you can see, did go away from prison quite, uh, quite a bit. Sonics, they got to be careful, though. Legacy to their south and spam to their north. And I think they're just going to reposition now and play as a three. Listen, this sort of close range team fighting is what Sonics are good at. I mean, spam as well and legacy too. No one's, no one's a sucker in this style of play. And it's about going fast and it's about landing your shots. Gizero trying to look for the high ground angle over that little bit of a dip that Sonics are surviving in. And that's one frag grenade. It's the only frag that Gizero has. No helmet either, so that puts him at even more risk as right. most DMRs would get you that instant knock now if he peaks for that little second too long. The only positive, I suppose, for Legacy is the amount of real estate they have for free behind them as we just take a little look at Falcons inside of prison. Snakers finds the knock onto Brissett from... Why have Spam gone into prison? Better prison than going into Sonics, I suppose? <laughs> You're going from Sonics to, to Falcons. Like, it's not really a fun I decision mean, to make. I mean, maybe they didn't know Falcons is in there. I don't, what do you want me to say? I, I don't know. I'm just... It's, it's late. <laughs> the Spoon from Rat, <laughs> who, by the way, all of the content he's been on so far has been golden. I'm, I'm loving seeing him on my camera as Rats have four up. Demo... We'll get that knock onto LIP. Kraken finds VHC as it's all kicking off here in the Asian zone. Luna Galaxy step up a Kraken. Taking a ton of damage from RB and 90 to be precise. As it's as everybody's doing damage. Look, there's so many gunfights getting off. Ten teams alive. Tiggleton spots out RBN. He was going for the crate. And Tiggleton will. He snaps the hand that was trying to trying to feed him by the crate. I mean, Sonics, look, they don't have to worry about multiple angles at this point. They can just flood over and pick up the damaged teams that are lying, bleeding out right in front of them. Luna Galaxy, Legacy should be... Uh, they're, they're not big threats right now because they have to get the revives. Rats do clean up. AKA, Spam are eliminated to the Falcons. Now Rats are continuing to push towards the East. They know OG and SDK are in the middle of a fight. Yeah, and if they clear all this out, they're going to do a huge uh, bit of good for their chances of winning this map. Legacy fall, we're on seven teams left. Every team that falls now is an extra point for everyone else in oh the lobby. Oh my god, lobby. wait a second. Sorry, I looked at the map. Falcons are out of prison. We'll see it in a second. And they go down to the blue because they're still, <laughs> still. Sorry, SDK, fight with OG. Shots are coming out. Five kills for SDK. Alo with the P90. Grenades are being thrown. Rats are waiting to pick up the pieces. But Kaiji the last one up of OG. Yeah, that prison break wasn't really the best one for them. And now OG under a world of pain. Gats confirms out the kill. Six teams left alive. STK up to five kills and 48 points now as they can definitely 
try to finish the day ahead of Sonics. Three points ahead of them with three players still alive. Six teams left and you feel like the win could be huge for all of these teams' chances. You feel like Luna Galaxy and SSG really need it though sitting in 12th and 15th place. How many, how many more points can they get? A few. Sonics now. <laughs> <laughs> Control of the West. Rats going to be looking to push down their angle, potentially. Rats have the pick of the litter. They can go, I mean, it's two choices, East or West, but still, they have the choice. Oftentimes, in Phase 7, you don't necessarily have the luxury of being able to make that decision. It depends on if they can get a knock one direction or not. They might be pushing themselves a little for, further towards the West, or at least trying to block out SDK because they are going to have the high ground angles over there. It really is, though, going to be on if another fight breaks out, then Rats could backfill that. It's still really impressive how Sonics have kept three up and pretty much clean on this edge of the circle. Kick gets the knock on Vinny as Luna Galaxy will lose the first. Vexen spotted out and he's going to get absolutely obliterated there by Shrimzy as Kickstart will now look to close the gap, close the distance. Luna Galaxy with two players up a little bit further away off the back of this one. But Sonics are doing such a good job of cleaning their edge. Luna Galaxy now sending it towards STK and SSG as players fall. Picture and picture show us that it's just an exercise in futility for Falcons as they hide and play for points. They're not getting out of this position, but SSG took a knock on the edge as well. They could wait out those placement points until like third or even maybe not second, but maybe even third or fourth because of the position of the zone. They don't have any agency over whether that happens or not, as everyone else is gonna have to fight it out to see who gets to that point. Tickleton with a knock on the tune. The spoon also gone down to SDK. Smoke's in play for Rats to try and survive with the remaining members of Luna Galaxy throwing utility in Sonic's direction to try and stop that wave of chaos coming their way. And let's not rule out Luna Galaxy. They got Kraken back on his feet. Vinny's right. up as well. And they've got level three gear. I see the Groza. Rats are eliminated in sixth place as Grant will fall to the blue. STK now wrapping closer and closer to SSG. You've got, I believe that's Pixel playing close to the, the rocks. And then Roth and Cowboy are focused on what's happening with STK. Luna Galaxy are the filling in a sandwich I wouldn't want to be in either. Sonic's on one side. SSG on the other, but Sonics don't have the utility to flush out Luna Galaxy because of all the fighting they've been doing. Roth will catch Kurt on the edge of the circle, and now all of a sudden Sparking's got a lot of work to do for STK. Stun comes out, it pulls SSG away, but they are still able to confirm the kill before that happens. Frag grenade at the ready, it looks like a good direction. But the MG, the weapon you sung the praises off, is just too strong, I guess is what the kids would say. Haven and Vinny now on the edge, and still Falcons have just about enough of the zone to hide inside of. You assume that those points will go to the blue, not to one of the teams that are left alive. 3v3, v2, v2, and boy, do SSG need this Shrimzy. Pushing closer and closer Wait. to Vinny now. Catches himself one, and Luna Galaxy are eliminated. Great rush over by the Sonics, but I realize that Mime might actually have an angle on this. Unable to the third party, but Mime is looking to deal some extra damage. Maybe the Falcons get a kill or two before they go out. But like I said, Falcons third place, and they might even get second depending on how fast this fight breaks out. A good grenade by Rob takes Trimsy out. It's all down to Kickstart and Tiggleton. Yeah, this is excellent from SSG. Five kills on the board, and they know that Sonics are in this position. They know that Falcons are below them. They just want to make sure that nobody has wrapped... I <gasps> Pixel, no, Pixel, step forward, go forward! Mime's gonna get caught out, Cowboy gets the knock with the MG3, and Falcons now, they may just lose Mime. That should be another point to SSG, but look at this, Tiggleton is going to get Shrimzy back on his feet, and Kick will get the knock onto Pixel as these two teams trade blow for blow. You can take the mime out of Sonics, but you can't take the Sonics out of the mime. He comes in and does give a little bit accidental of a saving grace to Sonics there. Allowing the revive to come on in, and now they can push the pressure, push the positioning up against SSG. Cowboy still with the MG3. You cannot count it out. The it's young bolts in the chamber, ready to let him fly. The young gunner here for SSG. Best is broken. Level 2 helmet to work with. Tiggleton's got the Groza though. And Sonics can taste blood in the water. 
They're taking the high ground now. Shrimps is moving. Cowboy gives away his position, but saw SSG back up to three. Sneakers can't survive too long. Falcons go out in third place. But now it's a three versus three. No worry of third party at all. <laughs> Pan goes out, doesn't find a connection, but you gotta try something when you're out of utility. He thought it was a Panzerfaust, not a Pan. <laughs> he tried to throw that one off in the distance. A reload attempt is Roth. Wraps all the way around to the smoke, but he has a line of sight on the Shrimzy. But the line of sight goes both ways. Oh! Roth gets a double. Big boy Roth, winner, winner, chicken dinner. SSG, 19 points. And boy, oh boy, did they need that. Your PAS, yeah. reigning PAS champions, finally coming to life on the final map of day one. And they control that they held that very, very well. They had control over access to the ending point of this entire game. Sonics was a team that needed to put the pressure and come into their position, but SSG, did, they did not overcook it. They didn't overpeak it. They didn't get over aggressive and assume that an advantageous position means an automatic win position. They just let Sonic slowly push into their spot, wait for the blue to push them in and take those kills at the end. But still a really good game from the Sonics to get to that point to begin with all those fights back to back to back good point grab for them what a brilliant performance a couple of teams that didn't need points actually picking up a ton there as well but that is that from me and cami we're going to throw it back to the desk to take you through the day's action PlayStation Gaming finally blasting off, picking up some points as we are going to be reviewing everything that just happened in game number six, Godspeed. Yeah, I was a little worried at the end, but Roth with that big double gets it done. Meanwhile, all the other teams struggling to get within this circle. The prison circle often leaves quite a quite a lot to be desired as far as playable space, especially if you're trying to approach this spam was kind of one of the victims. But even early on, Falcons found themselves victims as they lost blood early in this game, Mike. No, they really did. I mean, they. it's been a while since I've seen a four-man send to prison uh, on the low <laughs> side, but uh, that's what Falcons decided to go with this time, and it ended up getting them into third place, so uh, we can't really complain too much. But SSG doing a great job over on the eastern side of the circle. Uh, STK once again, boys. STK, yep. late game, and, uh, and actually just kind of fragging as well, so good stuff from them, Godspeed. I think it's been the most consistent. We were talking about it here just before this this game ended. It's been one of the most consistent days as far as reaching the top four uh, in a while for STK. God, I'm glad we got the I'm glad we got the point of view of Roth on that nasty P that yeah. that two piece there. I was with the casters trying to figure out, okay, why are they like backpedaling into it? It was just a perfect funnel trap, and Space Station Gaming going to walk away with 19 points because of it. Sonic's going to pick up 14. STK continuing that just trend of good games. Gonna walk away with 10. Rats also picking up nine inside of this one. Falcons with eight, Luna Galaxy, Spam, and Pachow also picking up four. So that makes our overall leaderboard at the end of day number one. Should be feeling pretty Look good like up at this. the top. Question oh. mark. <laughs> <laughs> hey. There we go. So it's gonna Dude, be Falcons you know at the top. You know what's crazy to me is that Falcons is at the top pretty comfortably by 20 points, right? Obviously that one big game had a lot to do with it. Mm -hmm. Yada, yada, yada. Sonics was in the top three in four games today, and yet they're still 20 points behind. Like that's that's how crazy the Falcons' day was. What a what a day one for them. The Sonics didn't have a great first couple of games though either. Well, fair. It wasn't it wasn't the uh, the fantastic start that <laughs> it we started to real rough. Let's just say. That. <laughs> but, again, but again, you know, four four finishes in the top three, you can't really complain. Like, what do you what do you nope. even say about that? Nope. Like. Sonic's do like Sonic doesn't always go fast. You gotta like press down and then like hit the button a couple of times and get him to charge up before he launches himself off. So maybe that's all that needed to happen today, right? The rings right, weren't speed. dropping. True, true. Right, um, but we're, no, we're gonna keep I'm, talking I'm, about I'm, the Sonics. <laughs> let's just go ahead, Poro. Do your deep dive on the Sonics. Look, get, get me off yeah, the bed. Yeah, just just uh, get it over with, okay? Look, hey, I, it was not my fault, but I did. Sonics for the last game of the day. I wanted to watch them and, uh, and keep Sounds close like eyes. So they get they get the Pachinki drop. They uh, obviously keeping that one for the time being, although they've switched it up on other maps. But uh, the circle cuts off to the east, so they do a slow push over Potato 2-2 two, two split, pull up on Death Road. Very just standard stuff for Sonics, right? Pulling up to places where they've been able to scout. They can see it's free. They can scout their next move. This is where it got to be a little bit dicey, though, whenever they were trying to make that next move, that pull, that push, that 
put them in this position just off to the west of prison. They end up losing H win for it. But then once they got here, it was looking really dicey at first, but Shrimzy with the God nade right on top of uh, future. And that grenade opened up so much space for them. And you can see from them, they were from there, they were able to kind of keep track of everything downhill, everything off to the north. They had a little bit of a scare with Legacy right here. You can see kind of popping up over the edge, but nothing uh, overly concerning because Legacy, for whatever reason, decided not to push down into it. So Sonic's, for the most part, this got to keep this wide open spot on the west for free. Uh, they end up finishing off spam once they get up here. Uh, and once Legacy decided to wrap into uh, a little bit more towards the center, Sonic's just perfectly timed backfill, come in here, third party the fight, clean it up, and now they own the entire west. Once again, they end up catching Luna Galaxy slipping just a little bit. As you see Fake Zen getting spotted out there, so they open up a spot on that cliff side to play with from that point on. Grenades and uh, a good eyesight there by Shrimp. Spot out as a Kraken up at the top and then right through and clean up Luna Galaxy. And then it came down to this, boys. SSG yeah. versus Sonics. They pushed the high ground. You were questioning about SSG, why they gave that high ground up. But it was so Roth could get this nasty, nasty all double. Planned. Uh, just all planned. <laughs> all planned, all according to Kakaiku. Uh, but no, I mean, they, Did it, you just make a joke? Shut your mouth. Uh, it's it unfortunate totally for Sonics did. that they both happened to peak the rock at the exact same time. It's probably the easiest double kill Ross ever gotten. I don't even know if he had to target swap or if it just the bullets just happened to hit both of them. So uh, really well played by Sonic uh, SSG at the end, but good stuff from Sonics all the way through. Yeah, I mean, that that entire game, as Cameron said, I mean, that was not a free game. Circle kept pulling away as they're on the west side. The circle kept pulling east, and they got in fight after fight, recovering very well. Again, a, a impressive shots coming out from all three members left. Again, they lost win early, but that was a fight for every inch of space that Sonics took, and, and they almost won that game. Yeah, yeah I mean... That, oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, uh, it's very, very interesting, right? Because usually we see like a high ground advance and trying to push into it being the death kneel on it. I would, I love the mindset of like flipping that back around and saying, no, making the assault up is going to reveal you over the smokes. It was just, it's just a good read on the situation. And again, terrain play, we talk about it so much. That's going to be the key factor for your victories. And just played around the smokes really well. But I mean, yeah. I, I also got to say, I mean, the fact that Sonics were able to hold that Western side of the prison with only three players for in as the long open. as they did in the open uh, was was very surprising. So uh, kudos to them. But in the end, SSG getting the better of them in this last game. Well, we've been talking a lot about what's going to or could have happened inside of different games. Let's go ahead and talk to somebody that was inside those games right now, mm. as I believe we've got ourselves a Rello that is going to be oh. coming in here. Oh, got down. God, he's for you. so What's attractive. Oh, oh sorry. Oh, my start. God. Okay. 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 <laughs> okay. So many questions. I What's up, brother? To start. You start. What were the comms like on what we have now dubbed the Falcon Nest? on Vikendi, where you guys were just hanging up there. Was it just like, were you guys laughing? What, what was going on with that? Um, We were fairly serious. It was a fun game for sure. We just sat out there and farmed, but um, it was a gamble, that's for sure. We all called it the Powerball after the game. But uh, for the most part, we were serious <laughs> and uh, you know, making sure that we were identifying our threats and whatnot and playing the game. Gotcha, Godspeed, you're up next. You got one I know you want. Um, I'm actually going to give it to Poro. He's been dying to ask you something, and then I'll oh, ask yeah. my question. No, no, 100%. So, like, look, man, you're, you're an IGL. You've been IGL forever. You're a very serious guy. You take the game very seriously. What, <laughs> when y'all went up there, what was the most that you were expecting to accomplish? <laughs> <laughs> like, I know you weren't thinking 21 kills and a win and getting the every single circle magnet right on top of you. But what, like, was so, it just like, let's scout out and then move or what? I had plans. Like, Mime and I, we were thinking about plans of what we could do on, you know, hard zones. But realistically, it was the gamble that we were taking. Um, we knew we didn't have any, like, priority into that zone. And we found an e-pickup. And it really is a gamble. Like, we go up there, and if we get all zones, we're farming. Just like we did. I mean, Snakers had... 1700 damage i think that's enough damage for 17 kills so i mean we had plans in play which i won't i won't say where they were kind of clowny no, no, if, yeah, the, yeah. if the zones sure, went away sure. from us they were kind of clowny we would have <laughs> we would have to do some dumb <laughs> stuff but i mean regardless we got the gamble so it was fun 
The only thing yeah, I heard was... in that was, I'm not going to tell you my plans for the next time we do it. So <laughs> go on, Godspeed. I'm... No, that was that was a sick game. Um, obviously, so now Mime has slotted into your team really, really well. You guys are doing um, mm -hmm. fantastic. But um, I just want to know, like, general overarching for the year, like, has anything changed as far as, like, how you guys are prepping without giving too much away, or is it kind of business as usual? Honestly, it's business as usual. Um, scrims are very, very different from real official matches. Like, we've learned that every time we play. Um, so it's really it's straightforward, you know, same stuff in scrims, but, I mean, the game is entirely different. So, like, everything is much more serious in real matches. So we are now in the seventh anniversary of PUBG. Uh, wh what's just like a very memorable moment for you that like sticks out through your history inside of PUBG? It can be anything you want. Dude, that's actually a, that's actually a hard question. You know, it, it's more like a personal thing. I feel like just growing up, dude, like PUBG has been such a huge part of my life. There has been so many different memorable moments. I guess the peak would be probably Dubai when we had a huge performance at PGC and made a lot of money that felt really good but overall <laughs> just growing up man I mean Godspeed can attest to this I was you know just this chubby 18 year old <sighs> that had no life experience coming into MPL and just growing up and growing as a person and a player and doing what I love is it's it's been an honor it's been a lot of fun and and I will say dude it's it's yeah, I remember you when you're, I will say though, your attitude has always been good. Like even when you were young, you were on Endemic, I, I remember MPL. Um, yeah, watching you and you know some of the other kids grow up and actually become like very good players and then just, just good people. Honestly, it's been, um, it's probably been my favorite moment. So it's, yeah, it's been dope, man. I'm, I'm really happy to see you here. I'm really happy to see you and your teammates here, as well as like, you know, the Sonics, SDK, all the guys. It's probably been my biggest memory and, and my favorite thing is just meeting lifelong friends. I mean. Shit, I remember meeting Ibiza in 2017 at Gamescom, so it's still good to see him doing. Obviously, the, the Bulls were nuts today. Uh, in, <laughs> so, gotta, it's been seven years we've given our life to this game, man, but um, right? I'm glad it's still going. Well, I just want to say man, thank you family. so much, Rello, for taking some time, spending some mm -hmm. time with us. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to get you back on the interview to ask some more uh, interesting questions about the play as it moves forward, but you guys are trending in the right direction, rocking at the top of the leaderboard. Keep it up, man, and we'll be watching. I cannot wait to see how this all goes down. Yes, sir. Sounds good. Thank you, guys. All right, Poro, it's your turn. <laughs> favorite memory. Uh, or, I guess, what, I what favorite. What's a memorable moment in the last you do like a meeting me. moment and make people cry me. like Godspeed did? I know. <laughs> it's, no. it's only fair. I got to give you a chance now, right? No, my, so my favorite moment, very first time I sit down and play this game with my friends, uh, I'm sitting in the, we're, we're driving across Erangel and I'm sitting in the passenger seat of a U.S. and my buddy's like, hey, is there friendly fire in this game? And he pans <laughs> me in the back of the head and knocks me out of the U.S. in waves. Uh, so that that was one of the first memories I have of PUBG, uh, just playing with the boys. But like, I mean, everybody's got a million memories like that, right? Just the the silly, like, I, I don't rem I honestly, I can't tell you my first chicken dinner, how that felt, but I remember all the times just laughing about just the dumbest stuff, like whatever stupid stuff I got into with the boys. So have you uh, gotten a chicken dinner? Yeah, I, I feel like I may have gotten one or two because of you and uh, just getting carried. But, uh, you know, it, the, the, in the end, you know, that they still count. Godspeed. Thank you. It's it's hey, the friends that you I make along the way. We want to do a one time. <laughs> one time, I think that we want to do it. I think we did. I think we snaked our way to something there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it was whenever we were deciding to not <laughs> shoot our guns that whole round and see how long we could snake. Oh, but, man. I used um, to love pacifist runs. Dude, they're so fun, so fun. Um, I, I don't know, like, uh, I guess I should answer as well. We're, I'm gonna have to answer this like three times since I'm hosting the whole weekend, I think. Yeah. Um, so now, and now I've given Godspeed and you a chance. I'm gonna have to figure out, I'm gonna have to let everybody else. Well, actually it's just us again tomorrow, so. Yeah, it's just just the boys. Um, oh, I, got, I, I can know. come up with more memories, man. I, I don't like, do there's MPL and all the time at the MPL and then specifically like after the games that I love so much, like hanging out with all the players. The hotel lobby. The hotel Ooh. lobby man, Ooh. I, I love lit. it so much. It's based it like if I if I I'm I'm one of those weird ones that face it. The smash room, dude. Do you know about King the smash, smash, smash room? right here? That's all I'm saying. Oh, King of Smash oh, and PUBG. You can ask okay, anyone. Have to close this out. Otherwise, God, he's just gonna go on smash more present. For the longest that's all I'm time, saying. Guys. That's all I'm saying. I, just that, that's gonna be the end of it, guys. Do not forget, we are going to be back for another two days of action. And on top of that, we've got the PEC that's going down right before us. So make sure you check out all of the good good that's going to be going on. We will see you guys back tomorrow. Till then, keep on playing that PUBG.
or Panther.